Welcome to my ranch, ranch, no advice on finance Spin the wheel and take a chance, get an NFT and a little education The system got under tow, that knowledge is flotation You wanna learn? Well, you came to the right place You pump an AMC, might get slapped in the face Get your due diligence, know who the villain is Don't be a sheep when the shepherd's carnivorous So come learn, laugh, and maybe you win big And listen up, y'all, the wheel is not rigged Everybody get a chance in the live chat Kyoto spin wheel, you win just like that Retail fight pack and this retail winning Y'all just wait, man Man, this is just the beginning All fellow simians GME group singing the truth We just chilling Infinity pool swimming So welcome to my ranch ranch A lot of knowledge but no advice on finance Don't even need pants You can tune in naked like Kenny the Mayo Man Internet's most hated Don't wanna lose your money Then it's time for you to listen If you're ignorant Invest in AMC and superposition The stream about ready They told us to don't dance I do what I want Welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch Welcome to my ranch 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 ranch
The whole world's crumbling. But I'm not. Let me tell you guys something. My phone's on loud. Shit. I just woke up. Nah, I've been up all morning. Come on now. All right, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to my rants. Rants, plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. I know you guys want to pay attention to about three or four stocks today. So what did I do? I'm going to go do the homework for you. No, nah, I don't pay attention to the criminal investor too much. But I'm here. Let me get this. Hold up. Yeah. All right, y'all. Let's get it. I can, I can stop all the music now. We're good. I'm here. I'm alive. But I will tell you guys this. I'm going to go ahead and break down a couple of stocks for you guys. I want to just say good morning. Good morning to everyone, guys, and welcome back. And let's go ahead and look at it really quick. I just want to make sure I have everything up. Yeah, we're good now. Okay. So, obviously, I want to talk to you guys about the three stocks in mind. That would be Bed Bath & Beyond, GameStop, and AMC for all the right reasons. Let's go ahead and get it on the table first. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. It's another video. Right now, I'm going to ask you, why should you be investing into HYMC and it being... Oh, my God. If I had to hear that shit again last night, don't worry, I'll play it in a little bit. I just want to say welcome back to Hamburger. Hey, Hamburger, the fact that you're here right now, that means that you're subscribed to the channel and you have alerts on. So let me just thank you for, you know, supporting me and what I got going on. Let's give a special shout out to all the apes out there. I hope you guys are collecting your pennies. I hope you're rubbing them together because, oh, my God, you're going to be in trouble. You know what's crazy? This is like the craziest thing for me. I wake up and I literally know I'm going to go live. And there's going to be a thousand something people watching today. And what am I going to say? I'm going to say things that make sense. There's one thing. Things that are factual. Yes. Go ahead and fact check them. And then third is this. No hyperbole. No bullshit. I'm not going to be like, hey, guys, we're going to the moon. Look at this rocket. Here's the gamma ramp. Oh, my God. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I'm going to hit you with logical shit where you're going to be like, wow, okay. Maybe that does make sense. The gamma ramp I see is what? For GameStop? Maybe. But even then, even then. If you're not getting out of your call contracts for, you know, next week and the week after, that's on you. That's on, But I'm telling you, I saw people selling shares this week and and putting it out there to the public. I sold shares to go buy call contract weeklies. You're buying weeklies and, and next week too? No way. No way am I going to touch this shit. And I'll tell you why. Well, one, let's go ahead and go for it. Kai's mileage. Uh, Kai's mileage. I'm so sorry. Uh, my, my favorite Uber driver. This dude... He is about to be homeless. His wife's about to leave him. For, hey, this is not speculation. He told me these words himself. If you guys don't know, he's been on this channel a long time. Okay? And I'm telling you guys right now, this dude is going to be buried. Because you know what is happening at Bed Bath & Beyond? Do you have any idea? Anybody? I want you to evaluate how much volume Bed Bath & Beyond has done over the last three trading days. The last four trading days. We're talking about... Almost 600 million, 700 million shares traded back and forth. That is 10 times their float. 10 times, 15 times their float. Whatever you want it to be. I don't even care. No, they're 80 million shares, 800 million. They're way up there. My point is it's just too much. And what is it really? Closing out shorts, taking profits? It could be because they are on the verge of extinction. Let me tell you guys something. Uh, I'm going to go right up here. And don't worry, it's on the screen. Uh, let's get here because I got, yeah, I got it. Here's Bed Bath & Beyond right here. They have 123 million shares traded today. That's already one and a half times their float, basically. I know, guys. I'm just ballparking numbers. But let's get to here. Here's the document. Guys, if you guys don't know what happened on the 10th, all right, that was, what, three days ago when this volume started going crazy? These are people closing out shorts and or willing to ride them off. There are some people willing to ride them off all the way to bankruptcy, and they're going to get rich, too. But if people are starting to pour into this stock, they reported a loss of 33%, 32% on uh, comparable sales, 33% on overall net sales. Now, 33% is not that bad if you were closing stores, right? So I had to ask myself, is this like a GameStop shortage? You know, people come up to me and they go, oh, GameStop only sells $6 billion worth of stuff. And I go, yeah, I know. Well, that's down from their all-time highs of $9 million. But then I go, yeah, 
But back then they had 6,200 stores and now they have 4,500 stores. Like it, the, the weight has to equal at some point. You have to find that equilibrium and, and cost of doing business and profit. And, and when you look at AMC, or I'm so sorry, <laughs> when you look at Bed Bath & Beyond, it's even worse than you think. And I have it all here. It's right here. So Bed Bath & Beyond has a net gross profit of $278 million last, last year, the same month. They had 668. I'm factoring everything. Inflation. I'm factoring in CPI data. I'm factoring in stores, foot traffic, just everything you can think of. It cost almost $700 million to do business. Guess what it cost this year? Almost $600 million. So you mean to tell me you lost $400 million worth of gross profit and your SG&A only came down $100 million. You're not doing it right. You don't have enough. You don't have the best um, operators in the world. I showed you what GameStop is. GameStop has an increase on gross profit. Okay, I promise you this. They do. You'll find this out really soon. And they have a decrease on SGNA. That's the difference. But when you look at Bed Bath and Beyond, they're falling to pieces. And the part that really hurts, and the part that no one really looks at, is the impairments. Remember what I told you about impairment charges? Just in general, impairments could be a lot of different things. But in this case. You know the stock price is well below their goodwill. There's no way you can buy the whole company of Bed Bath & Beyond for $300 million. It's not even possible. But their market cap is somewhere around there. So these guys are they, they are beyond. Okay? Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Beyond worth saving. There is no way you can save this company from bankruptcy. It is that bad. It's really going to happen. But... It's still more profitable than goddamn AMC. I don't care how you cut this. Look at this shit. You look at it every which way. It is a better run company than AMC. And so that should tell you something. What I'm never going to buy. Holy hell, guys. I'm telling you, stay the hell away. And hey, don't take financial advice from me. I respect you as a person, despite any differences in our investment strategies or understanding of the market mechanics. You know, hamburger, look, 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 look. I ate two hot dogs last night, bro. And no, actually three. I had one for lunch. I had two for dinner. And the legitimate hot dogs, street hot dogs. Bro, don't try to like, don't try to make this sexual, okay? And um, I didn't eat them the long way like you do. I didn't eat a banana without without chewing. Um, but I hear you, hamburger. I do. I respect me as, you know, I wake up every day just like you. I put them on just like you. The only difference is I know how to read a balance sheet. And I don't think you do. That's my difference there. So investment-wise, there is no such thing as investment strategies here. These stocks are closing positions and or showing profits at the current moment. But this is what you do in a pump and dump scenario. So the only thing that has fundamentals behind it is GameStop. There's no way. I'm talking about zero debt, cash on hand, great business model, great investors, killer for the economy. Like everybody wants. Gaming's always increasing. And movies, dying industry. Everyone's out of it. People have been gutting that industry since 1998. Since 1998, these guys do not operate at a profit. Okay, They operate at a loss. That's AMC. They have pumped and dumped the hell out of that company. I just saw the dumbest shit ever. And, and I'm going to explain all that too because I have all these damn videos I got to show you guys. But somebody was saying, oh, movies are back. The, movies, the industry is coming back in 2023. Who wrote that? Who made that video right now? I just saw it was the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Guys, movies are not coming back. Okay, more movies might be released, but no one's going to be making money off of it. But I'll show you. I can't be negative. Oh, can I have a positive uh, connotation? Like, I was like, okay, hold on. All right, guys, check this out. Hi, guys. I'm, I'm really excited about Mission Impossible 42. And this one, Tom Cruise propels from a wheelchair, and he's not going to touch the Depends any longer. I mean, this is the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. How people keep trying to tell me that Hollywood is making better movies or they have movies coming. How many sequels can we watch, bros? I'm I'm waiting for a good movie to roll out. Like, I would go watch Goodfellas. I would watch Shawshank Redemption. I would watch Strangers. That damn scary movie was good. I think horror movies are the only things that can really get you going in the, in the music, in the movie industry. Because at least they, like, have new ideas sometimes. But everyone else, bullshit. Marantz, help me out. What can I help you out with? Marantz, you're hard to read. Do you still have positions in AMC? Eric Johns, uh, I sold my positions in AMC uh, two years ago. In 2021, I sold them. 
I sold them and I did it live on the chat right here. And I made a video and I told everybody, hey, I just sold um, and I think you should too. And yeah, uh, $49, $40, even I think one share at 55 I don't know exactly. But in the 40s, I sold. Now I was okay with it and I felt good with it. Got them at $8. People were here for it. So uh, that's just the way it goes down. I'm not hard to read, Eric Johns. Remember, I don't trust you. You have two first names. I'll never trust a guy with two first names. Never have, never will. So uh, let's go ahead and look at some stuff that we missed. Oh, by the way, just fact-checking for myself, you know I was wrong when I said they've owned it for the last 13 months, when I said Antera has owned AMC for the last 13 uh, quarters. I apologize. Um, I was wrong. I got fact-checked, and somebody came out here and, and said, Morantz, you don't have the file. I said, you're right. I was wrong because it's actually 15 fucking quarters, okay? Because I went back and I said, hold on, let me go check 2020. And yeah, I went back and the filing date is 6.30. So yeah, they were there too. And I go to the 13, uh, the 13F here that I went fucking, you guys, why do I do this shit? Why do I get in here and go find out all this shit? Why? Because you know what? There's people out here who are dying to make people look stupid, right? They're like, oh, I can prove him wrong. There's the puts, there's the calls. Yeah, and it's back there all the way to 2020, all right? June of 2020, that quarter from March to June, all right, three months span, April, May, June, and that quarter, so we can go from April. You want to go three? I'm telling you three years. You guys just fucking keep trying me, bros. But there's that one. Oh, you want to see the other document, the one that no one looks at? Here's another one. This one's going to be filed. Uh, filing date is November, but it's actually 930 on the, port, on the reporting date. Go ahead and open it up for you. And what does it say? AMC Holdings, the first thing there. And yeah, I know, guys. I know. I'm going to be here all week. Don't worry about it. Oh, Marantz, but what are you showing me? Who is this? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's a small group called Antura. Antura Capital LP. Uh, my my face might be hiding it. Look at this shit. You ready? Boom. Antura Capital right there at the bottom. I know. But Marantz, you, you, you were wrong. Was I? You fuck boys. These guys, man. Just don't worry. I do fact check myself. I don't say shit. Well, you know what's crazy, guys? Like the whole integrity part of this world. Why the hell would anyone make a video, put it online forever, and purposely give out the wrong info? Why would that happen? I mean, I've seen it happen with AMC YouTubers, <laughs> but have I ever? Would I ever? If I read something, if I look at it, I report it. That's it. Fucking clowns. Oh, my God. All right. Back to the shit I was reading. Guys, I, I have this is my homepage. The Edgar's system is my homepage on my damn computer. So I don't know what you guys do with yours, but that's what I do with mine. Bed Bath Beyond, what a dying company it is. It's bad. They cannot save it, guys. I wish we could. I wish we'd have a different conversation. But you and you know what, guys? They have bet they have like debt and they have assets. But the problem is with them. Is that it's not even it's not even as bad as AMC, like it's not. But it's that bad that they're gonna file for bankruptcy. They have no choice, guys. Nobody wants to be in it. And the impairment charges are starting to pile up. Impairments are at a hundred million dollars already. It's gonna get worse. At one time, GameStop had impairment charges of a billion dollars. AMC has had it of a billion dollars. Trust me on this one, and or don't, or don't. These guys are pumping it up to pull it from you. They're just pumping it up into an options week. They'll do what they do. No one here is scared of Bed Bath & Beyond. No one's nervous of that company making a turnaround. It's not possible. And I'm sorry for the guys that are in it. If you're looking for a pop, this might be your last pop. As far as AMC goes, we're about to go talk about that. Let me close out these windows. Um, no, we're still talking about Bed Bath & Beyond because I still got to deal with this shit. This player right here. What's up, player? How you doing? Goodness gracious. Let me go read the chat before I push play on this cat. All right. So let me, I just want to catch up in the chat and make sure I'm here. Uh, let's see. Is Kais Malej here? Kais Malej. Martinez Ramps. Let's go. Thank you guys so much. Buy the dip always. I'm just not buying anything this week, guys. I'm not buying anything this week. I told you guys the, the veterinarian cost me a grip. I'm still trying to make it through the week. Once I'm done there, then we'll talk about seeing if I can buy a share or two. And that means at 20 bucks, I can spend 20 bucks. If that, it's going to be a rough, it's going to be a rough one to start of the year. But you know what? We might have a better year at the end of it. It's already starting out rough. Lost my little man, Maxi. Maxi was a cool ass cat. And um, now, you know, Hercules and Binks, got to separate those two. 
ready to take over the whole house. We'll see how it goes. Good morning, my brother from another mother. Yes, Thomas Lopez. I hope that's us. I really appreciate it. Kai's mileage, what's he doing? Is he still outside the, the bed, bath, and beyond telling the employees, your job is safe? It's okay. It's okay. They're like, who the fuck is this guy? Ryan Cohen, uh, Ryan Cohen is going to save you. No, he's not. Hey, y'all, welcome back. It's another video. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Happy, oh, good Friday, fellas. Yes, there you go. I appreciate everybody. I see everybody's name here. I don't say hi to everybody. Only, it's not because I don't want to read our names. I don't want to be like, have you ever seen Mass and Lorian's live stream? This is Mass on live stream. Hey, I'm on Esther. Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, welcome back. Frankie Big Lips. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Hey, Donko. Hey, welcome back. Oh, man. Yeah, Sh uh, Challenger. Welcome back. Derek J. I see you. Wendy. Hey, hi. Hi, everybody. Hot news. They do that for like 30 minutes. And then I'm like, what the fucker, bro? Just taking roll? Get out of here. Tell me something. Uh, you know, AMC. And there's there's some uh, good reverse splits in the history of the of, 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 uh, stock market. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drug addicts, dude. I can't believe they put these people on TV or on YouTube. They, they allow anything on YouTube, apparently. Um, Honda Game. Honda Game I like. Hi, Honda Game. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Um, I'm, I'm pushing for Honda Game. I really am. A lot of people. Like Bed Bath & Beyond. Like right here with Derek J. Derek J. says this. I want to see Bed Bath & Beyond moon. I have no shares in the play at all. You know, a lot of people want to see things moon. But guys, not everything's a short squeeze. Not everything is a, is a moonshot. When you see shit start moving and you're thinking, oh, it's going, guys, we have potential. Let me just be real with you right now. You have a potential for a gamma ramp on multiple stocks this week to next week. You really do with the way they're moving. The problem with me is I'm a skeptic. I've been here from day one. I have seen the charts move and move and move. I was right there with you guys. I was there on my phone with the Robin Hood app, all nice colors, looking at the green like this. Just every minute of the fucking day in January, February, March, and April. That was me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 347. Oh, my God. Like, I was like that. I was, dude, I was like you. And then guess what happened? Fucking life happened. I said, no way. No way. It's, it's like when you see shit going down and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. What the hell is, what? I think I'm just too... I don't know. Cynical? I don't know. I'm logical, dude. I'm looking at it, I'm just saying there's no way. Everyone's running this way. I'm going to turn around and look at what are they running from. I want to know first. I'm not, I just don't run with the crowd. It just doesn't work like that for me. So I want to know what the hell they were running from, and they weren't. They were running towards the fucking buzzsaw that is AMC. Here we go. A uh, special shout out to Rick Williams and ADJ Core. Um, people been here for a while. PJ Dub, haven't seen you in a while. Am I in the right place? Comments says, I got five on a reason. I got one. Bum, bum. Bro, all those songs, if you even knew, they're not, it's not like his theme song, bro. Okay. All the songs I play on the channel, whenever like we start, there's a whole list. There's a, there's a whole list of songs that YouTube gives you that you can play on your channels. So they don't demonetize you. They don't block you in certain countries and they don't ban you. That's what the songs are that we play. So there's a whole list that YouTube gives you. So they gave me a list, and I found this artist I liked, and I was like, okay, let me hear what he has to say. So he had some good music. And I was like, all right, he's got some good music. All right. I like him. All right. So when I start listening to him, I go down the whole library. And you know what's crazy? I bet you Common Sense Investor... Somebody charged him to make his little outros in his intro clip with the animals attacking and all that shit. They probably charged him on Fiverr, and then they, all they did was play this song behind it. That's it. I hope he didn't pay for it, dude. I do it for free. Coming up from the heathens, I got. I got reasons. I got it for free, bro. Yeah, it's not me. I got all the damn songs here. You can do all the Beethoven, all the Bach, all the Chopin. They All of it's free. There's like 30,000 songs you can play on YouTube. They're like, can you play one of these songs instead of playing the Eagles? Because, <laughs> you know, I played the Eagles the other day and they blocked my whole damn live stream. But whatever. Uh, back to what I was saying. Yeah, we want it. We want Kai. We don't want it to blow for Kai's. I don't give a shit, bro. Kai's Malaysia is going to drive all the way over here and say, Hammer hey, Rants, Bed Bath Beyond. I don't care about him. Uh, dragon fruit flavor 
what is that? A sign of fire. I have no idea. I just buy it. It's it's a drink. My wife goes shopping at Costco often. I never shop. I never shop. So I never know where my wife shops. If she's shopping at Sam's, she has Sam's Club. She has Costco. She goes to, you know, um, a Walmart here and there, I think, like a neighborhood Walmart. Um, but I don't shop. Guys, the last thing I need to do is be in a store spending money. It'll never happen. Never happen. Never. I'm never going to go to the register. There's nothing I can do. And when my wife tries to go to the register, I'm pulling shit out the basket. Nope, that's five shares of GameStop. That's two shares of GameStop. No, I don't need that either. No, that's how I am when I shop. I swear, that's why she won't take me. Yeah, the song is fire. Eric Sullivan, stop the nonsense. It's really not. We're going to go over another video. We have two more videos to talk about. Three more videos. The Wes Christensen video that everyone's talking about right now. Um, and then we also have, uh, what's the next one? Oh, this one right here with the with, uh, old knucklehead. What's his name right here? I can't remember his name. Keenan Grace. And then uh, one that Kyoto put in the Discord that I was just like, Kyoto, you're a son of a bitch for putting it in there, but I'll explain it. Um, Brian Reck. GameStop squeezed two years ago. How long are you going to grift for the people? DFV left too because it's over. Brian Reck. How long are you going to grift the people for? Um, what do I ask the people for? Hmm, Brian. Hey, Brian, let me ask you something. What would you be doing right now if I wasn't live? Jacking off? Because you sure as hell wouldn't be watching, what, stock talk, anything, no entertainment whatsoever? You rethink your whole life, bro. I know I'm not the classic one that you stroke to, but it's cool. You're here, and I'm still going to be here. I'm going to be here 10 years later with or without GameStop. Okay? You'll figure it out. Common sense investor is no longer common. No, he's been a criminal for a long time, bro. Kai's mileage um, to become the world's first trillionaire. Let's go. Uber plus GME merger and Lyft. Don't ever forget Lyft. What's wrong with you guys? I got my ass out of Bed Bath & Beyond. Good job, Hot, this year. Hopefully you took some profits there. I'm here. Thanks for the Discord alert. You're welcome, Chad. I do my best. If you guys are not in the Discord, understand. It's in the description of the video. The Discord is completely free. Now, I'm not Common Sense Investor with my 21 free spots still trying to go. 21 paid spots open, whatever they say. Uh, these guys are all charging you for this shit. Tony DeNero's Discord, AMC Bigums, Boss Blunts. Everybody charges you for their shit, and I'll never charge you for anything because I, I don't need it. You want to talk about grifting? Bro, I don't know what to tell you. I give away more money than I could ever ask you for. So uh, shout out to um, this lady I met. I, I handed off cans. I rolled up to this desert spot, right? And in the middle of the desert, there's a guy on a mattress just chilling. And then all these dudes up against the wall doing drugs and shit. You know, they're doing all the things. I go to, like, the roughest parts of town. And there's this one lady in the middle of the street. She's laying out all her shit, a homeless lady. And she got a shopping cart. And she's laying out all her shit everywhere. And I just rolled up on her in the truck. And I go, hey, how long have you been out here? She's like, I don't know, a couple of years. I'm like, hey, if I give you something, are they going to beat you up for it? She's like, no, the guys will protect me. And I was like, really? Okay, we're about to find out. And I unloaded. I unloaded all the cans. Remember, I give away all my cans every quarter. So I gave her all the cans to recycle. Um, like maybe 60 bucks worth, whatever it was. She had trash bags full. And she's just like, uh. I go, hey, I hope they don't come beat you up. But, I, you know, I'm trying to bless you. And she's like, you know, I know what to do with them. And some one dude walks over. What's going on over here? I go, nothing. Get the hell away from me, bro. I'm giving this lady some cans. You got to do it. I just subscribed. Well, thank you, Hamburger Guru. Appreciate that, man. We're here every day. You know that. We do our best. I am live today, guys. I will have numerous update videos upload today. Okay? I have no idea what I'm going to record today, but I will get some videos up online because I got to go over a couple of topics that I know I'm going to read this afternoon because I'm waiting for the results of everything that happened this week. And then we'll talk about it from there. Other than that, Saturday, tomorrow, I'm going to be at a party. It's my niece's 18th birthday. I got shit to do. We're going to celebrate. Um, DJ, food, clubbing. You know how we do it, baby. Ooh, some of you guys know. If you guys have my TikTok, then you guys know. But, um, oh, yeah, that's about it. You out of touch, dude. Out of touch, Brian Wreck? I think I'm most in touch. I have the most. Well, I don't want to say the most because there's dudes out there that have helped me out so much. Like Linda Real, Badass Trader. Pepper with salt. Those are the three that come to mind when I think about my AMC uh, deep dive that I've been doing. Uh, I actually pulled myself out of it today. I was doing, I was looking up every filing for, for AMC for a long time. And I just said, get me the hell out of here because it's just too much bullshit. You know, Common Sense Investor showed a video yesterday. 
yeah, you see, when a when Citadel bought in, the price went up. They weren't trying to kill uh fucking AMC. I was like, what are you talking about? Yes, they bought in. They didn't want the price to go down. They want the price to go up like everybody would. And they did that. They bought in, 0.72 bought in, and they pumped that stock for two years before they appointed Adam Aaron, and Adam Aaron dropped the shit like a bad habit. So it really happened that way, and it's unfortunate. CIS, uh, CSI is DRS in his HYMC shares because it's a long-term play for him. Um, yeah, I heard about that, Hamburger Guru. That might be the worst decision in the history of investing. If you're DRSing HYMC shares, even Dr. Diane Garrett is saying, what the fuck's he doing? <laughs> I mean, nobody, nobody. There's not one dollar to be made there. They outsource all their drilling. You know why they have zero workplace accidents? <laughs> because there's no work being done. All right. So they probably won't do anything there till about 2027. And by that time, common sense investor will probably be like 180. And, you know, one tooth left. Um, yeah, it's just not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. He's lying to you, by the way. Um, I don't think he's doing any of the above. I don't think. No way. And it, DRS in what? One share a week? They're fucking 60 cents, bro. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. He should have bought the whole company by now. Oh, no way. No way. And I read, I saw the video where he said that AMC and Ape and GME. No, my play is he's, he doesn't even own GameStop. Like, that's the craziest shit. You know, anybody who, who believes in market manipulation, okay, who believes in fairness for the markets and you don't own GameStop, I can't talk to you. If you own GameStop and don't have a GameStop wallet, I can't talk to you. Uh, things like that. So, no, I don't believe any of it. And thank you for respecting me as a person, Hamburger. Um, I respect you too. I respect your outfit, that black and white, um, you know, jail suit that you wear. And I love McDonald's. I really do. But thank you so much, man. I grew up with you as a kid. Is a short squeeze possible for Bed Bath & Beyond, just like in GameStop in 2021? Chris F., first I will tell you, um, no. Okay. Um, the amount of volume that's being traded back and forth right now dwarfs any amount of volume that GameStop had back then, you know, for that squeeze that you saw. Uh, the movement that you see on this stock, the reason why it's not moving is because it's not worth anything. It's not worth a single thing. And if people that are short on Bed Bath & Beyond, they're short for a reason because they're going to win. They're going to win from within. There's no way private equity doesn't take over that company. It's on the verge of bankruptcy every morning. Every morning they wake up, it's uh, we're bankrupt. Now, I don't know if they have dip financing yet, but they're going to have to find it. And then when they start handing out shit, people are going to find out the, the portions of this company that are worth money, like the Bye Bye Baby portion. And you might get it for pennies on the dollar. So if, you, if you're in that company, I don't know how you are. Other than you believe something that somebody told you, but nothing fundamentally showed me on a balance sheet that I would want to touch it. No, you can't, man. You can't invest in the companies that carry over more debt than their market cap and additionally have a bad business strategy. Like, you just can't do it. There's so many things that you can talk about. Like, I didn't realize how bad AMC was until about two weeks ago, a week ago. And I already knew it was bad. I already talked about it never recovering. It's the worst thing ever. This week, me really diving deep into the fundamentals and the, and the balance sheets from the last 25 years, I was like, holy shit. I was blown away, guys. Blown away. And you guys know that. And I, and I give you the info here. And that's been a... You know what? Somebody wrote something in one of the comments. They said, you know, Marantz, AMC is the company to hedge GameStop and hedge any short play, really. But they have numerous companies like that. So you have to get through all of their companies, let them all falter before they're really going to return this short. Okay. Well, guess what? I have a great company that I'm invested in that has a hell of a long, that has a hell of a balance sheet, that has a hell of a leadership, and we're just going to put our focus somewhere else. So when people say, am I in GameStop for a, for a squeeze? No, I'm not in it for a squeeze. I'm in it for the fundamentals of it. You guys know this. But do I believe that it could be bigger than that? Absolutely, I do. But I don't push it onto people. I don't push out Moas. I don't push out cheerleading. I don't push out, hey, this is what it is. Oh, my God. I did for a while, and then I said to myself, that's not fair. That's not fair for me to put a return date and a time and expectation onto people. It's not fair because my expectations have shifted mainly because of fundamentals, because I saw the bigger picture, because I saw the retail footprint, and I said, oh, wait a minute. Let me go 
let me go do what I do for a living. Let me put it on this on this balance sheet or on this, uh, you know, they put out a proxy statement that really shows where they're headed, what they want you to vote on and why. And I was like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense for me. Oh, it makes more sense. It makes more sense. And then it just started talking to me. So the manipulation of the stock market is absolutely real, okay? I want people to know that. It is absolutely real. But it's not just the stock market. It would be like saying the manipulation of Vegas betting is real, right? Watch this. You go to Vegas, you put money on a, on a game. You're going to bet some money. You can manipulate points. You can manipulate the, the book that you go to and you, you know, and you make the bets. They can buy it down. They can buy I mean, oh, so many bets are on this side. They adjust their points for it. That's like the stock market. The only difference is... These motherfuckers are fixing the game. They put players in the game. They put they put people in the stands to pay to watch it and concessions. They make money there. But then additionally, they get paid because the refs are making the calls on their end. And it has the, the parallels are so identical. But one thing is illegal to do, and the other one is not. Right? It's illegal to fix sports betting and do that whole realm because it's heavily regulated. The other world is not. That's the difference. So I mean, that's the best thing I can. That's the best analogy I can give you guys. If you guys know what the hell we're looking at, why so much Bed Bath and Beyond volume? Because I think it's about to go bankrupt, and I think certain people are nickel and diming it right now. I think they know what it is. Uh, bed, bald, bankrupt, beyond. Yeah, Morantz, you've been slaying dragons. I respect it. Boss Blunts is a scam artist, by the way. Yeah, he's he's the absolute worst. He's scum. Like Bed Boss Blunts. Is the worst person like okay? I'll give you an example. AMC Biggums, he's just he's just he only knows his his info, and he's he's ignorant. Like he's illiterate, basically, in almost a way. Um, he has not put in the homework it takes. These guys are making thou and I told this to Almo the other night. We were talking about it. These guys are making thousands of dollars a month putting out information on YouTube. What they do is they don't give a fuck about what they're actually saying because it's just about getting that view and bringing in that money. Oh, it's only $32,000. It's only $33,000. It's only $3,000 a month. That's nothing. That's a part-time job. And I'm just like looking at them like, that's everything. That's everything because not only are you getting paid that much money, how many people are losing that much money? How many people are losing even more money by you giving them false hope and the false information? But somebody like Blunt's, Who's just sitting there fucking milking it? Oh my God. Milk. Show me. Show me the career that I might be missing. Show me where you're the best trader in the world and you're sitting on stacks of cash because I'm going to show you a guy who just sold $4,000 worth of shares to go, go to a different position. Bro, I don't need to sell shit. We can go get four grand right now and go put it into something if we had to. Don't have to sell shit. That makes zero sense. Like it's the, the shit doesn't add up. That's my point. If you're sitting on stacks of cash, your setup for YouTube is going to be a lot different. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a better camera, better mic, and you're not going to have. You're going to have your own studio somewhere. You're sitting on stacks of cash. Have you seen me, Kevin? That guy has money. His look at his show, Matthew Chorus. He has money. Go look at his show. Like everything has elevated and evolved over time, YouTube wise. That's what I'm telling you. They don't. AMC Biggums won't even show you his, his dirty ass house, wherever the room he's in. I don't know. He's still doing videos in, I don't know, Garnett jerseys. Like it's not, it's not something for me, but I know, I know what you guys are talking about. Somebody who paper hands that way, somebody who just goes in there and tries to manipulate people. And then, I, I'm obligated to tell you, you're not obligated to tell me you're fucking, why are you obligated to tell me? Because you're giving out financial advice and you're selling on the back of it. You're pushing a stock one way and then you're selling on the back of it. That's the only reason why you'd be able to liable to tell. I don't have to tell you guys shit that I do because I don't tell you to do shit. There's a big difference here, guys. Huge difference. It's kind of like the Adam Aaron. We're going to put this to a vote deal. Why? Why do you have ape going to a vote for conversion unless you wanted to convert? If you never wanted to convert. Then you wouldn't have it up for a vote. So why is there even a button there for a no vote? Why? It's bullshit. It's all bullshit when you really put it in, just in the frame of your mind. 
when aren't she going to buy more Bed Bath and Beyond? Oh, bye bye baby. When is I don't even know if he is. He has he has Teddy, bro, and Teddy sells the same items, and Teddy's a little bit better. You'll see. We're cheering for Gomez and Kalai. I don't know who the good. I don't know who that is, and I don't know who Kais Malaj. Yeah, we can. Ryan Cohen's bored. Only been on there one month before the quarter ended. Yes, that is true. Um, I'm hard to read. Okay. We have been bamboozled. Uh, you've been lied to. Absolutely. <laughs> Whole Bed Bath & Beyond, bros. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just invested two more K in a Bed Bath & Beyond right now. That is so terrible, guys. So terrible. Let me show you something. Do you want to know the PSYOP they're doing on Bed Bath & Beyond? It's right here. His name? Keenan Grace. Keenan, I've been watching you forever, bro. I know exactly what you're about to say. Let's, is it ready to go? I want to make sure we're ready. Oh, now we're ready. Ready to go. Let's go. Your Apple. He's talking about your Microsoft. He's talking about your, your Googles, your Amazons, the top largest companies that exist, right? He's saying that, long story short, you can expect them to come down even further, and this isn't the end. Now, is he a fortune teller? No. So what do we want to do? This is someone who makes money off of YouTube. Okay. Great microphone. It's it's not one of these um, little plug-in microphones, right? Whatever the HDMI cable, whatever the crappy ones I have. He's got a great setup. He's looking better every day. This is somebody who's making half a million dollars off of YouTube. Okay. And uh, your boy, Boss Blunts, and Mr. I'm a Millionaire. Okay. Well, your, your setup don't look like it. We want to say, okay. Are the companies that we're investing in making money or are they just a hot play that we can make some money with fast and then let it go, a.k.a. take profit on? Now, Apple, I'm holding. Microsoft, I'm holding. Amazon, Apple, I'm not telling you to buy, hold, or sell them, but I'm holding on to those. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other stocks that are running up like crazy that, you know what, if I was to play it, I would get in, get up, and get out of the play. Now, what do I have in my family? Well, presenting... Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond is up 49%. Let me know in the comments. Did you make money on Bed Bath & Beyond on this run? Me, personally, I did not make any money on this because I can't be in every single hot play. It's impossible. There will always be another play. So since that's the case, I urge you to ask yourself, and I don't urge you to buy, hold, or sell Bed Bath & Beyond. What I want you to do is say, hey, if I made money here, is it time for me to take profit? Let's say that you bought this thing at, I don't know, $2 or $3 or whatever, and you ran up all the way to where we are now. Is it time to take some money off of this and leave the house's money in the game? And what I mean by that is imagine that you were, <laughs> and this is where the idea even comes from, playing with house money. If you were to go and take on a bet at Vegas and you were to bring $100 and then you were to make another $100 on a bet, now you got $200. At a certain point, you got to ask yourself, hmm, should I take my original investment, my original 100 out the game and then play with the house's money? Or should I take maybe 150 out and then play with the house's money after I took some profits? Only $50 left in that. It could go either way. I'm still up $50 from my original investment. I want you to start to think of these kind of trades like this. Not everything is an investment. Something. We'll stop right there. All right, guys. And I'm supposed to read all your shit, right? Like all the comments. But I'm going to miss some of these comments today only because if you want to write them again, write them again. From the all in pod, King Griffin, he knows 100% of the rule. Get in the cabinet. Watch the clip. It's short. Okay. In the Discord, hold on. I just got a message. Let's see what we got. Remember, guys, Discord's free. I don't see it. Am I tripping? Oh, all in podcasts. Right here. Hmm. Huh. Hold on. Right here. We'll go watch this right now. But by the way, about Keenan and talking about it's a trade, getting in and out. Um, guys, try not to take financial advice from these guys, okay? Um From FFL pool on Discord. I am swamped with messages, but it's okay. But let's look at this video really quick. I have not vetted this video. I haven't seen it. Let's go check it out. That's I heard what's going a, on. I heard a great rumor 
this is total gossip mongering. Oh, here we go. Uh, that, you know, one of Ken Griffin's best out is to get DeSantis elected so that he can become Treasury Secretary. I mean, Ken Griffin would get that if he wanted it. And then he would be able to divest all of Citadel tax free. So he would mark the market like $30 billion, which is a genius way to go out. Now, then it occurred to me, oh, my God, that is me and Sachs's path, too, <laughs> with a lot less money, but the same path. <laughs> Wait, why would it be tax free? When you get appointed to those branch, th those senior posts, you're allowed to either stick it in a blind trust or you can sell with no capital gains. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, because they want you, they want you to divest. They want you anything that can, Yes, anything that yeah. presents a conflict, they want you to divest. And so oh, the argument shit. is, if you have, if you're forced to divest it to enter a government, you shouldn't be forcibly. Wait, if I on become it. mayor of San Francisco or Austin, no, 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 federal, federal government. Oh, wait, 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 like like Secretary of Transportation, Jake Hall, you can do that. Oh, I'm qualified for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I take the bus. I got an electric bike. To answer Freeberg's point, I think Citadel Securities. There's a lot of folks that would buy that because that's just a securities trading business. And then Citadel, the hedge fund, probably something like a big bulge bracket bank or Blackstone. Probably huh. Blackstone, in fact, because now Blackstone can plug it into a trillion dollar asset machine. It's a, I think there would be Ooh. buyers out the door. This is a, this is an incredible grift. Now I know why Sachs. It's and... not a grift at all, but it's, a, it's an incredible- Oh, come on, man. A cabinet position for no cap gains? Well, that's not a grift. That's like, those are the loss. They force you to sell everything. Feels yeah, and, then you, and then you do public service. I think you're, I think you're misusing the word to continue to genuflect to the left leaning. No, I'm not genuflecting. I think you're being a little defensive because you see this as a bad or video. you're dumb. Pick one. I'm, I'm not stupid, <laughs> man. I don't know if what I see it. You take a cabinet uh, position. Sex, would you, you take don't a pick cabinet position? Would you be second to other... My God. My God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That is ridiculous. Good. Hey, thank you so much for that. That's a good clip. Um, who sent that to me again? Buckle up. Buckle up, my boy. God. So, that's the golden parachute. That's the diamond parachute. That's the name of the video. Diamond parachute. Oh, my God. Ken Griffin's diamond parachute. Man, movies are coming back. You'll see once the streaming industry collapses. Maybe not YouTube streaming, but you'll see Martinez. <laughs> no, Marantz. No, I won't. I won't see it. You'll see it. We just had the two biggest movies of all time remade and brought out. Avatar and Black Panther. And what did they do? They brought you the lowest quarter four totals since 1998. Get your shit out of here. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Such a conflict of interest. It's not. It's it's not that Thomas Wood. Look, man, if you could buy a position, if you could buy it, it's yours. And he has billions of dollars, and he has billions of dollars at risk to lose. You would pay taxes on something like the only way you're worth anything is if you become liquid, right? So like that's why I tell you, like people would get on Elon Musk all the time. He sold Tesla shares, and I'm like, yeah, he wants money. Like, he's tired of living off of credit cards. He has to sell shares. Um, there's no way around that. Some insiders, right, will sell shares because that's their salary. But all insiders sell, that's different, right? That's a run on your bank. That's a run on your company. But if you're the inventor of something, you're going to want to get paid for it, i.e. Vlad. Vlad Tenev, right, whatever his damn name is from Robin Hood. He invented Robin Hood. He built it from the ground up. They went public. He cashed out. He's worth a billion dollars now. The company's trash. It's shit. Nobody trusts it. He has his name still on it, but he was able to sell it to the public, and he cashed out on his invest on his invention. Uh, the same thing with with Elon to finally do what he's doing. But no, the, Ken Griffin built Citadel. He built exactly what you have here, and his payment for order flow. You know his uh, his his castle that he built. Shit, the branding of that is worth everything. People would buy it for like they said billions and billions of dollars. And there's no joke. So, uh, Trigger, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm around, man. I've been around. You guys know that. Any thoughts on PRTY? Is that going to be um, the party center, whatever the shit is? You know, I, you know I don't look up tickers because I don't talk about stuff I don't know about. 
Um, Mr. Fox, I'll start talking about things unless I study them. People used to ask me for advice back in the day, like a year ago, two years ago. They would ask me like, um, hey, I bought the, oh, my boy Josh Brown. I bought these call contracts. And every time he would tell me he bought something, I was always 100% correct. And I would tell him, no, it's going to go down. It's not ever going to get there. But it was really easy to read because I'm like, these guys are buying shit and not reading. And I know that's what Boss Lunch is doing. I know that's what these other guys, like buying call contracts that you're not going to exercise. If you didn't have enough dry powder to go buy 4,000 shares or whatever you bought, you had to sell 1,000 shares, 2,000 shares to get cash to go buy a, a, a different position. That tells me you have no capital to go ahead and exercise that position. So what does it matter? You assume those are going to go up, right? So um, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. If I walked in here, guys, tomorrow, and I said, hey, guys, um, I sold my GameStop shares, 100 of them, because I needed to get uh, you know some money to get a position on something else. Or even when I said I sold 1,000, which I would never do. Like 1,000? They're off limits. There's no way. So I only have five shares, by the way. I started out with five. Everybody knows the story. I had five shares, and um, the stock split came, and it gave me 20. <laughs> I love the guys who say, this guy doesn't even own shares. And people in the Discord are like, uh, <laughs> uh, I think these guys own shares, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. Exactly, Dr. Evil. Yeah, they're playing Connect 4. With struts and ladders pieces, uh, y'all yelling checkmate. It's it's bad, bro. My boy Josh Brown is here. <laughs> oh, Josh, I didn't mean to do that, man. I didn't even know you were here, dude. Yeah, I, you know what? A lot of you lurkers out there, a lot of you guys, I don't ever, you guys don't type in the chat anymore because you guys are busy working and then you guys just have me in the background. And occasionally you guys will pick up your phone and type in a, a, a word or two. I get it. I, get, I really do. Like, I really think High Rider's always here. I know Pep's always here. Like the guys who don't, they don't type all the time, but they're always here. So uh, shout out to everybody, man. You know how it goes. Suppression is real. No notifications. Robert O'Leary, but I'm here now. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here all day. Like seriously, guys, we're going to hang out all day. It's only been one hour. And it's been one hour. And I still haven't even given you the gist of what I want to say. Um, the, well, here's the gist of this knucklehead right here. When you look at Keenan Grace, Keenan, my man. Um, no, we're not going to go ahead and get in and out of bed, Beth Beyond, because you start telling us to start taking profits, jump in right now while it's running high, bro. It's already up a hundred percent in my mind, right? Like it was $2 and some change and now it's right here and it shouldn't go anywhere beyond here. It shouldn't go, you know, 10, 15, 20. It's not in my mind. Um, because I saw the financials, I saw it and it doesn't make sense. None of these clowns ever execute their BS contracts. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad, Stex. It doesn't even cross their mind to. They would cash out on those contracts, and they're cashing out on retail investors. And to sell the underlying asset, like I told you before, to sell the underlying asset, to go buy a contract of something else and to jump into something else makes absolutely zero sense. It means one of two things. One, you don't believe in your company. We don't believe in AMC Fundamentals um, at, at all. Neither does Boss Points because that's why he sold his shares. Um, two, it means that you're just, your greed's running through your, like, why couldn't you just sit there and hold your position? What is it that you needed for this week? Oh, he bought weeklies. He bought, like, I don't even know that he was trying to explain it to people. Like you couldn't, you can't explain that to me, dude. You just can't. And the fact that you couldn't sit on your hands. I told you peps here. There you go. It, it's killing me. Marantz, what is your opinion on Lou versus Wall Street? Was he involved on the other side or working for the hedgies? Uh, Sergio, in my opinion, yes. A guy like Lou has zero reason to be here. Zero reason. I don't even think he owns positions, period. Um, but we started YouTube. Think about this, okay? I want you to think about this. He and I started YouTube a month apart. He was a month before me, maybe four weeks before me. Um, my channel went one direction. His channel went a different direction. Tony De Niro. His channel went one direction. My channel went a different direction. And we all started the same time frame. I started two days before Tony De Niro. The guy's channel is five times bigger than mine. Is he better than me? Absolutely not. Does he do the homework we do? Absolutely not. But I started talking bad about AMC. All those guys talked positive. Lou, every video was, hey, yo, hey, bust the run. Hey, man, check it out. I got the mustard on my shirt. I was, I was talking to my people on the street, 
Bro, I don't care if you're talking to homeless people. He's trying to tell you he's talking to fucking Wall Street people. I was at lunchtime, and uh, the guy's not, he, do you know why he doesn't show you his legs, right? He's got that ankle brace, the monitor. He can't leave, he can't leave that apartment building he's stuck on. He used to go for walks outside and do videos there, and they're like, <laughs> no, none of this shit. Hey, go fuck your mother. Like, I don't understand how that is appealing with intellect to anyone. On the counter side, I don't understand smoking weed and hotboxing your house and, and we're in the think tank. I don't understand that either. I don't understand, um, hey, y'all, welcome back. It's another video. I don't understand, hey, hey, guys, I'm the, and me and Master Lorian in the late night, late, late night, Ooh. and another AMC day on the bottom. Mess, you like the bottom? No, I don't, I don't understand all the characters that are in this shit. There are certain people that I respect that when they make content, I, I get it. And I'm like, okay, that's real. Because I know. I know because I stand in front of a camera all day and I have to talk about this stuff too. And when I talk about it and I, and I do the homework, it's not just one person. It's not just me and my thoughts. It's like I'm getting information from all from everybody. And then I'm digesting it. And then I'm like, okay, how am I going to put it out to you? There's no way, guys. There's no way that Lou for Lou for versus Wall Street is not an industry plant, as in to say he he might not even know he's in the pocket of the industry, but he does because he never speaks um, he never speaks in generality. Like he's I'm, I'm the opposite. He's always generalizing things. Like I'll give you an example. I come out and I say Citadel point seventy two, enter a capital. I name them right, and he'll be like this. Do 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 fuck boys do do. The, you know, the, the the devil? Yeah, so the devil, he they just bought in. They bought in, and guess what? They're not leaving. They're not leaving because the big guy is gonna, not going to let them. And then they're going to go ahead, and then it's all gonna, the sun's going to rise, and then that's when the, that's when the hammer hits. It literally talks like that, and it made no sense. I didn't know if he was talking about a baseball player hitting the fucking ball in a batting cage or if he's talking about King Griffin holding the hedge over AMC with Antero Capital buying in and Adam Aaron letting him do it. Like, I didn't know what he was talking about. I never do. But this goes, oh, oh, oh. and everybody watches him. And is everybody watching? No, they're pushing out fucking bots to this kid. And he put, he put out five videos a day. Think about this, guys. The business of YouTube. This guy will put out 10 videos, five videos a day, 30 to 50,000 views each. Each. Guys, I'm telling you right now. That is an easy $500 a video times the five, $2,500 to $3,000, $4,000 a day minimum. This guy's making $80,000, $50,000, $100,000 a month when he was putting out all his shit during the hay run of it. Trust me, dude was making crazy money. Why would you be making that kind of money unless they want you to see him? A guy like me, O'Leary can't even get the fucking <laughs> the tweet. O'Leary can't even get the alert and he has the bell on. I'm telling you. And I don't speak in generalities. I go out pinpoint it. Bro, this is like a church for me. <laughs> I'm having an experience right now. <laughs> Edward Cronko, I don't know what experience you're having. Other than to tell you that I've been here for a long time. And I keep speaking the same way. And, um, and I'm never going to stop. So when somebody asks me right now, what are you going to do? Are you done grifting? Bitch. My time is worth more than the grift you think I'm getting. I'm just going to put that out there right now. And um, maybe maybe there's truth to it. Maybe maybe people will finally open up their eyes. And if they don't, then they don't. Then I'm still rolling with the same 30 dudes that you know I started with. That's it. We just got a little bit more people now. We're all right. It's not about the number, man. It's about the information. So your, in, your interpretations of Lou was spot on. Um, yeah. Lou is a certified clown. I mean, yeah, but it's different, guys. It's like, how can you do that and, and just get a get it going? Ten videos a day. Yeah, damn, whatever it was. For entertainment purposes only. He never says any of that because he never speaks real. Yeah, she running. RSI is hot. Oh, I don't know what's running. I didn't even see it. Let's go check. Man, baby. Woo! Go, go. I'm No, I'm not cheering this shit on, bro. I'm just watching it. I'm happy. I'm excited. I, I can't. I, you guys can't get me, you know, 
too fired up. But hey, AMC, they run the same. I mean, I got to hear this shit every day. Um, fucking $5. Get that shit out of here, man. The GameStop still 20 something dollars and you're still five. I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, it's going to get worse. All right, are we done with Keenan? No, Keenan, I'm not going to day trade this shit. I could play re- play on the rest of your shit, but I want to watch this one. Because this is something I want to talk about. This is courtesy of the Common Sense Investor. He's playing another video of somebody else, but I couldn't find the other video because I wasn't going to go look for it. Common Sense Investor, give him, I'm giving him a shout out. He did great on this, um, on finding a little piece that he found. Um, I'm happy for him. Rico on a hiatus. Oh, Rico's never coming back. Okay. Yes, uh, you can Google his federal court filings. Yeah. Lou paid his entire 80K restitution off. Yep. Uh, all of it, bro. It's ridiculous. You're, I'm already telling you guys what's happened. It's hard to understand the level of psyops. No whiskey. I can go deeper. I can go deeper. First, let's give a shout out to Amy Schwartz. Amy Schwartz is going to talk about January 27th and 28th. Uh, Donahue, uh, obviously AMC Marine, and you guys know Mikey the Marine. We've had him on the channel before in an interview. Uh, Donahue was here yesterday, and shout out to him for making a respectful video for me. He said, you know what? I respect Morantz. He gave an intelligent answer, as in we can agree to disagree, right? So and that's just on the merit of me going in on CSI. Who cares? I'm, I'm a comedy show. I'm having fun. And I, you know, I do this witty stuff. You know, I'm I'm ranting. I'm rants, rants. I rant off the top of my head about anything that comes to me. People give me videos, they send me stuff, and I react. That's the show. So, um, but we know that. But there's a little bit of humor, a lot of intellect, and a whole lot of truth. No financial advice. Um, but when you look at it, those guys are going to be meeting up in D.C. outside the SEC building. I don't know where they're going to be. I don't know exactly what's going down. Uh, but on the 27th and 28th. And it is a go. So if you guys ever want to get involved in that, go protest. Let them know you, you're you here. And go hear it. Uh, go hang out with the Marine and go see his channel. And he has all the information, the websites. Listen, I'm not against you guys doing something, you know, that you believe in. But for me personally, I fight it from here. I fight it from right here in my living room. Um, I'm not in my living room. Um, I'm in a corner of a room that I can do the best I can do. But my wife is... Um, my wife would never let me fly out that far to go meet up with a couple of dudes. Because they wouldn't believe it. Are you kidding? Have you ever, let me, hold on. We're not going to talk about the stock for a minute. I want to ask you guys a question because this just crossed my mind. Would you guys, who, who's lady here would ever believe that like, hey, baby, I'm going to go fly across to D.C. to go hang out with some dudes. I'll be back. Uh, well, how long are you going to be gone? Two days, 27, 28. We're going to be at the SEC building. We're going to do protests. I even make a video. Yeah, I'm going to need, I'm going to need you to just, um, yeah, you're full of shit. Like, it would never happen. And my wife loves me. She trusts me. Like, ain't nobody, ain't you ever been married? <laughs> you, If you walk outside, your wife, where, where were you going? Nah, baby, I was watering the grass. I took the dog for a walk. What you mean where I'm going? Nah, maybe it's just me. It's just me. Nah, my wife doesn't trip like that. But I'm always working, man. I, I wish I could go out there with those guys, but I can't. Um, I wish I could do a lot, but I can't. So uh, I was at the bank yesterday. Sounds like Lil Princess might be grabbing blank shares soon. Well, good. Well, good. You do what you got to do. Morantz is the Charleston White of the stock market. <laughs> I'm the Charleston White of the stock market. I like that. I actually like that dude. That dude's funny as shit. And he's, and he's, he, he, he doesn't look smart. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because he's as a visual. I'm just saying when you hear him talk, he's so real. <clears throat> I respect it. That's all I'm saying. So... I know that dude, Marine, he ducks me like he's in water. Uh, Dave, is sure. He was on the show, bro. What do you want me to tell you? He, the kid's all right. He just he's, he wants to ride AMC down to zero. I don't agree with that. I've tried to help out the best I could. Had to pause for a moment. Wait, what? Clown Bunt sold his shares? Uh, uh, buckle up. Yeah, you're on delay right now. But, yeah, he he sold the other day, he, and he admitted it. And then he went and bought ape shares. <laughs> oh, man. You know. These fucking guys, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta say yes now, cause I bought them. <laughs> they fucking, they're the worst. <laughs> they're the worst. It's the battle of five hundred one today. I apologize, guys. All right, so here's the here's the, the the story. This is the the little clip we're gonna watch. You guys enjoy the clip. Let's see what's going down. All right, everyone. Hey, uh, just wanted to do a quick video. You're gonna want to see this. 
I'm putting the clip in. Just uh, hold on a second. You guys can watch it. But uh, basically, Wes Christian, who is the uh, attorney known for going after short sellers, best in the world, what GTII put their warrant money towards uh, securing him. Um, CRTD has also got him. Uh, finger motion. I mean, it is, there's good stuff. So, uh, but anyways, he came out today and just um, put a, a boom out there. I, I think there's a clip from an interview that's gonna be fully released tomorrow. I can't wait to watch it. But I wanted to get it out to you guys because um, I know most of you probably uh, won't see this otherwise. So um, let's roll the clip real quick. We are gonna watch it in a minute. That's the West um, Wes Christensen clip. Uh, but before we do that, I just got the best idea of the day. Um, the best idea of the day was not the whole Robert. I know you want to go play with the lot lizards. But hold on, baby. I'm going to go play. I'm going to go protest at the local trap uh, truck stop. I'll be right back. No, not Trey's mom. Um, but Eric Hoffman has the best idea of the day, guys. Go to Pornhub and write on the bottom in the comments of every video. And listen, you're not there to watch it. Okay. You're just there to comment. And you come and tell the SEC about all the manipulation happening in the stock market. But if your girl catches you, you're just going to tell her, you know, hey, my bad, baby. I was putting comments down here because these fools watch these videos. Just, that's the homework for the day, guys. So I want to see all of you, and there'll be 1,500 of you that watch this damn thing. I don't care if you're male or female. I want to see you guys on Pornhub making comments. If I don't see you guys writing, Marantz, Rants sent me here, um, then I don't know what to tell you. I need a, I need a sponsor. No, I don't. I don't. I told I told uh, Alma, I said, hey, the only sponsor I'm taking on this channel, because I know we got GameStop, but we're too rough. We're too real for that. Um, and I don't need those other affiliates. I said, I'm just going to do man, uh, Dude Wipes and um, Manscaped.com. So if you want to go ahead and clean up your, your little area down there, good luck, gentlemen. Manscaped. I'm doing free commercials here. Uh, but yeah, I need everybody on Pornhub today. I want you guys on there making making comments on the videos. Uh, if you have to do it on mute, you can do it on mute. So I don't want you to scare your neighbors or anyone in your office. But uh, I'm giving you financial advice right now. SEC will find it. Marine, I'm with you. Donahue, I'm with you. The day that you guys are there, 27th and 28th, you guys are in the SEC buildings down there protesting. I will be on Pornhub making comments and telling them, get your ass and look out the window. They're out there. That little guy, the little hairy guy right there with the pigs and the cows, that little guy's there. And they got the bald guy. Big ball guy, yeah, Donnie. He's from Brooklyn, bro. He's out there. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna write it. I know I will. All right. And then if you tell, if it's if you're female, and you're watching the show. There's a lot of videos you can post on because I don't know. I don't look up the Pornhub that way, but I got you. So I wish you the best of luck. My hubby will be like, "What are you learning on the Morant's Ranch show?" Um, you're learning skills, Wendy. What the hell? That's the that's the advice. I, man, I remember I told my wife this is back before we got married. She was like, "What's that on the computer?" I said, "No, baby, I'm doing research. I'm seeing what we could do." <laughs> no, I'm, guys, I'm joking, man. I tell you, it's crazy. It's crazy out here. I'm just having fun. This is part of the show. Can we have fun? Or we got to be serious the whole time. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here's the Wes Christensen interview. Now, if you guys don't know who Wes Christensen is, he is a lawyer. He does fight the shorts. He is not extremely successful. He is not well-regarded. None of that bullshit they're trying to paint you with. Let me tell you what he is. He's a certified grifter to me. All right? Only reason why I tell you this is because he was partnered up with Trade Trades, and they did a GoFundMe, and they, they were trying to raise $150 million to go sue people, 100000 I don't care what they were doing. It's ridiculous. All these guys trying to get in front of something and then give you the false hope that it's going to boom or it's going to go because we are going to hold them to the fire. Do you know how much time will be lost in litigation across the board? Oh, have you not seen the wheels of justice and how slow they roll? But yes, it's going to be this month or this year or this week that you, Wes Christensen, you figured it out. Man, I'm choking over here because he has the name Christensen and I still think he's the devil. But hey, people believe in him. People believe this is really going to happen right now. And I'm just telling you, if it does, then great. But I wouldn't buy it. And I wouldn't go invest for it like they're trying to get you to do right now. Thank you, Roger, for having me. Uh, we, we can never bring too much light to what's going on in this illegal space. The playing field's changed in our favor for us, and I'll tell you why. By the time you count the uh, what I'm told is 10 million Reddit, Wall Street bets, you know, apes worldwide, by the time you count... You and your company and the other companies now that are 
finally deciding to do due diligence on their company. And, and I think the worm is turning, not just in your company over time, but in, in this whole space, because there's more attention by very, very large groups of people. And ultimately, this is about a revolution against the system. That's what it's about. Yeah, and you're gonna, like- you're gonna see, Roger, you're gonna see, and I can't get into specifics, but you're gonna see in the next month, in addition to whatever action we are gonna talk about with your company, you're gonna see the mother load of all uh, uh, you know, shares that have been issued that uh, you know, don't exist uh, come to the forefront. Uh, it, it, is gonna, it is gonna pale GameStop, it is gonna pale AMC, it's going to pale any of it because of, of how they uh, the, the action that they've taken. So I can't talk say which company, but I can tell you there's more coming. And, and so your shareholders need to pay attention because ultimately this could be a turning point for all of us. Now that's some awesome news. Now that's some awesome news. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Let me tell you guys something, okay? An interview like that doesn't get out to the public unless they want it to. Information like that doesn't get out to the public unless they want them to. This Saul Goodman, what the hell, what's his name? The 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 lawyer? <laughs> Better call Better call Saul. This fucking lawyer, this ambulance chaser here, I don't believe in one bit. If you were a lawyer, okay, and you had all the answers on how to fight these guys, and you're just adamant that you can prove and you can do and you can, why are you doing GoFundMes? Why aren't you working pro bono? Why aren't you finding someone to, to fund you directly? Why has no one supported you? Aren't people tired of getting shorted? Aren't people tired of getting their companies torn apart? Oh, then they hire you, and then what do you do? How long have you been practicing law? I'm just asking. I want to know if you're successful at anything. Because pumping interviews is all I've seen you do. Getting in front of the apes is all I've seen you do. You just talked about 10 million people on Reddit. Do you even know Wall Street Bets and Reddit? What the fuck's going on over there? We're not there anymore. Everybody left. Nobody cares about AMC, but yeah, here you are talking about it and then grouping it with GameStop. This is going to be bigger than that. How? How is anything going to be bigger than GameStop? I'll wait. I'm going to fucking sit here and wait because I saw the whole stock market get shut down. So you go ahead and you tell me, where are they going to shut down next? No, I can't. I can't buy into this this month, later this month. I can't, guys. No way. I, I'm just going to have you guys be cautious. I'm just going to have you be cautious because the problem is this. Everyone in this fucking YouTube space clings to hope and desires and dreams of hitting a fucking moonshot because that's the way they've conditioned you to feel. Now, here comes the despair. Here comes the letdown. Here comes the recession. Here comes the meltdown. Oh, it's fucking coming. And you know what? As we're all sitting there saying to each other, we need all this to fail so that we can explode. Yes, even I say that. All this needs to sell off. The the spy needs to come down to 3,100. We need to see a real recession. We need to grind this shit out. We need to see 2 million people laid off. We need to see the interest rates go up even higher. All that shit people are going to tell you they need to see happen in order for this to really happen, in order for shorts to really feel pressure. You know what the shorts are doing? The shorts are fucking laughing the whole time because they've been saving money for 13 years in this distress cycle that they've been waiting on. Private equity was sitting there with a trillion dollars, two trillion dollars on the bench, on the sideline, waiting for shit to fall down. That's why when macroeconomics really exist and you understand them from point A to point B, I don't understand everything, but I understand enough. I understand employment. I understand how they spend And then I also understand how hedge funds, distressed credit hedge funds, prey on the weak. And they're using them. AMC has been weak for 25 years. 
And I'm, I'm talking about the verge of extinction for 25 years, and they keep it alive. They just keep pumping shit into it and pumping back out. If it's the biggest pump and dump story in the history of my lifetime. Then I go look at something like GameStop that had profits the whole time. GameStop has had profits 2004 to 2018. GameStop was untouchable. Untouchable. Outpaced the S&P 500 every year. Killed the markets. Then they got attacked. And then they got attacked and attacked and attacked. Well, because you were in a in a cycle of console cycles. You were in a cycle of Fortnite. That was that effect. The Amazon effect for retail. Yeah. How'd, that, how'd Amazon do? It put everybody out. The number one selling game right now in the world. Okay. All you fuck boys out there that want to talk shit about GameStop, the number one selling game, and look at this, well, I'll never get that sponsor that we were talking about. I go, I go, I go too hard. Sorry. I apologize, guys. All of you non-intelligent investors that say GameStop's not a great investment, the number one selling game across all platforms is Hogwarts. It's the Hogwarts game. It's the damn Harry Potter game that's coming out next month. That is quarter one for GameStop. It comes out in February, guys. It is already sold out everywhere. You go put a reserve on it if you want to. Good luck. It's every. It's gone, that game. Everybody wants it. Number one game on Steam, pre-sales. Number one game everywhere you're looking. Harry fucking Potter. How much money do you think they're about to make at GameStop first quarter? I'll let you guess. I already know. I already know because I do the homework. I go to GameStop and I ask these questions. I ask gamers these questions. I hang out in Reddit subreddits for gamers, for this, for that. How do I know this? Because I'm not just invested in a fucking stock. And you shouldn't be either. You shouldn't just go buy Bed Bath & Beyond because it has movement. You shouldn't just go buy uh, Milan because somebody told you oh, this is going to run. Oh, this is short. This is this. All this shit they give you guys, man. Stop doing it that way. Ask yourself, what do you use when you wake up? When you wake up, do you go brush your teeth? I hope you do. Common sense investor, do you go brush your tooth? If you go brush your tooth, bro, then you should be putting money into Procter & Gamble. I'm serious. Procter & Gamble has all the products. They hold the whole, the whole damn catalog. And they have partnerships with all the major retailers. That's the shit you should be buying. But instead, you're going to say, I'm buying HYMC. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Marantz, have you played Carverse yet? No, I have not. I can't get it to work still. No, I haven't played it. I, You know what, guys? I'm going to tell you something. This is not be, me being bitter at all. Okay? I'm not being bitter. I'm being so real in the moment. You guys know I got banned off of Twitter. When I got banned off of Twitter, I found out who really supported me and who doesn't. Remember that I was being used on Twitter as a as a mouthpiece for the NFT marketplace and the creators of Layer 2, period. I'm talking about Loop Ring, Loop Exchange, Loop Creators, all the NFT creators. Two. Two NFT creators spoke up on my behalf and had my back in the community. Nobody else. I'm not hurt. It's okay. That's all it cost me to find out who you guys were. <laughs> I can't blame them. But no, I don't need to go play Carvers. I don't support who they are. There's a lot of things I don't support. You guys can. Just because I don't doesn't mean you don't have to. You can believe in 100%. I got a guy in here named Derek J who's got no better things to do all day but to come over here and hang out with us. But I guarantee you Derek J loves AMC, loves movies, and he wants that company to be successful. We don't agree on that. This is it. We can all agree to disagree. It's okay. We're adults. Or at least some of us are. So no, you will not get that from me. Yes, as in singular. Yes. Jesus Christ loves you, Morant. Be happy. Don't be mad. It's bad for the blood pressure. I have great blood pressure. Um, this is just the way I talk. This is the way I communicate. I'm never mad. I, am, I have a smile right now. I mean, I'm just like it's on me. I'm never mad. You guys, you guys ever see me mad? Never. 
you see me frustrated, you see me sad, but you'll never see me mad. And I'll say you'll never see me mad is because the amount of rage it takes. Like I, I, I'll give it to you this way. Somebody could really upset me or annoy me and I just get quiet. I just get silent. I don't. Hey, motherfucker, I'll fuck you up, bro. Bring it over here. None of that. That's why I don't talk about these guys. When Phil for real tries to call me out in the middle of the street, <laughs> I'm a street thug. Okay, Phil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whew. No. They're not tough. Um, to Tanya said, what did Tanya say? A 91 cent dividend. Tanya, what are we talking about? I want to read it. Where you at? It's coming. Yeah, we're getting a dividend real soon. You know, I saw a video where somebody made fun of me the whole way through. What was it? Was it Scott Allen? Because <laughs> I talked about dividends. He said, dividends don't come from free cash flow. I'm like, yeah, I, I realize that. But do you realize what I mean by when we say we have free cash flow? That means that we're actually making a profit of some kind and you will get there. You will get to the net positive. You will get the earnings per share in the positive direction. But the whole dividend thing. So I started thinking bigger picture last night. As I'm sitting there, I'm on the phone with Dalmo. And I was just like, bro, I think I got it. So I'm Ryan Cohen. Okay. I'm the master. <laughs> Guys, clip this part because I need to so I can make a different video of this. Um, I'm Ryan Cohen. Oh, she's talking about PNG. Oh, my bad. Thank you, Tanya. And a 91 cent dividend. Thank you. Yes. Hey, I'm just trying to teach people this shit. But, you know, what do I know? I got suspended because I went after some shitheads. You got suspended, Pep? <laughs> you got suspended on Twitter. Oh. There we go. There we go. Hey, Pepper. Cheers, brother. Vitamin water. Hold on. Let me let me try and put my more in there. This is my cheers to Pep. Early morning vitamin water. Um, he got suspended for 12 hours. Uh, Pepper, you're half the man. I really am. And um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I got suspended. I got permaban, baby. I heard, um, what's his name got permaban too? Um, scavenger. And I got, and he, then he says the reason why I got permaban, he's named some stupid reason. I like, that's probably not why, but. Mm. Sure, brother. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind, but the line by West, I can't give any specifics because there are none. Making crap up like Lou. Correct. The people that disagree with Morantz, do they ever come up with a debate excuse, with a debatable excuse that's even close to Morantz's facts or is it always delusion yeah I'm permanent on Twitter for trolling Adam Aaron and calling him out for a year yeah I've been doing that too Pepperwood Salt is graduating there we go only got banned on Napster damn I'm old uh Gizmo 3D I don't know how that happens bro stop downloading bang 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 bros is that what it was I can't remember <laughs> I'll tell you right now stop downloading that shit um I want to watch the rest of this because this is hilarious. You guys ready? Um, there, that's some good news. Now watch this good news. You already watch this shit. And I pulled up the chart for GTII, and I had a note here that said, Global Tech Industries Group, Inc. retains Christian Levine Law Firm, Law Group, to investigate possible naked short selling. Once they did that, they ran up 341.55%, mm. okay, in the last... 12 days. You don't when say. That, once they hired West Christian. Then, as you can see what happened, it fell back. Mm -hmm. All right? But you always have this pullback yeah, right here, people. Yeah, the Fibonacci retracement. You always should look for when the run-up happens, it pulls back, and then let's see what happens. It consolidated instead of going back up, and then it fell on back down. All right? Which is all right. They said in a month they're going to have some information for one in of these month. companies. Look at BBBY. Now, I'm going to be honest about BBBY. I was in the Discord, and they were all hollering and cheering a couple days ago about BBBY. I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to FOMO in for y'all because I just had some spare uh, dry powder, and I jumped in BBBY just because. These guys always just, I just jumped in because. I made, I caught the run. I took my, 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 I took my. You didn't have any profits, bro. Stop the bullshit. 30% profit. He said, I really did that, what, a long time ago? But this guy, he got in, he went in because Discord told him to. That's the shit I'm talking about. This is fucking crazy, man.
I don't know how you know everybody are. else was talking about it and I said fuck it I'll jump in I made 35% profit sold I'm only married to one stock and once I sold that for 35% profit I took that profit and I bought more ape <laughs> now I'm not married to ape I'm married to Highcroft because high <laughs> Oh, he's married to, oh my God. Like you could pick any stock, right? There's like 6,800 stocks. I don't even know how many there are. I'm just telling you, you could pick any one. <laughs> That's the one. Croft is my future. All right. I'm putting everything. I'm putting everything. I'm married to Highcroft. Because Highcroft is my future, all right. I'm putting everything. I will be DRS in my uh, Highcroft shares so that we don't have none of this fuckery going on in the future with Highcroft. Hold on, we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna stop right there. That's just too funny for me, dude. I'm sorry, I'm fucking dying. Um, oh man, well, how does that guy have a channel? <laughs> Fuck, dude. Highcroft. Highcroft. 70 cents man um it's not even about what it costs right it's about this shit right here um highcroft mining is now currently over the 50 day ema approaching the 200 day but the 500 day holy fuck you're never gonna get there bro i'm sorry but the last two years of this stock has been that atrocious um there's nothing you can do here, guys. I've tried to help people for so long. I can finally get rid of that one, even though I drove it right the first time. These are what they call pump and dumps. Pump, dump, pump, dump, pump, dump, dump all the way down, pump it back up, dump it down. Remember, good news comes out, and it just dumps down, and it's just diminishing returns the whole way. It never gets back to where it was. So it's gonna go there. So probably this probably be the peak right now. He's got to go back down like a goddamn. You think it's gonna go up? Why? Wow, that's crazy, dude. Uh, the volume's at one million shares, which is essentially a half a percent of the total float. The float's about two hundred million shares. Understand that Highcroft has the ability and needs the ability um, to dilute up to one point four billion shares. They don't have the volume. To sell it to the public at that price. They don't have the volume to sell it at all. Because no one's buying it. No one wants to buy. Remember. You retail people buying one or two shares. Not going to make or break that stock. Um, it's not going to help it. So he's absolutely batshit crazy. And there's no way. There's no way. But the battle of 501 is really happening guys. I'm very excited for this stock. I need it to happen. Come on baby. It's, it's Friday. And we need 501. 501 jeans. That's about it. Seven dollars a profit, boom, paid. I can smell the cigarette smell through the screen from that guy, bro. That guy, hey, he's married to Highcroft, um, aka his cousin, Anthony. Why? It's worse than that. It's worse than that. If you guys don't know the truth about CSI, I found it out yesterday, and somebody came and told me this shit. They had all the info, and I don't smear it like that. But this shit is crazy. I just, I, you know, I feel like giving you guys the info. I can't, I can't just sit on this. And this is too good. It's too juicy. Um, juicy. He said juicy. What did they say? And I say this too. He shacked up with uh, one of his subscribers. So one of the girls he's dating has her own YouTube channel. I have not gone to see it yet. But apparently he's dating this girl. Um, or she did. Oh, they did date for a month. Hmm. And his dad's in better shape than him. He's telling everybody he owns a, a donut shop, but he doesn't. Okay, yeah, he did say that. I heard that in one of the videos. Um, nothing's real. He's been arrested plenty of times. Uh, let's see. He was. He keeps saying that he was selling synthetic pot, or yeah, selling synthetic pot at a convenience store. I don't know what the hell that means. He's a drug dealer. They say that they got him. He pled guilty to armed robbery. Um, just I'm just ballparking this shit. But I gotta go see this girl's YouTube channel. Hold on, guys. I'm doing some investigating here. I'm not I'm not here to attack the man. I just want to see if this story checks out that somebody told me. 
It's called her. The YouTube channel is called. Hold on, I'm looking at my other. Hold on, this is getting good for me. The Queen. Okay. <laughs> oh, Queen. I'm sorry. I just want to know what this, what type of guy this girl's pulling. That's her. Queen of Swords and Fire. Is that her? This old lady. Bro, she's way better looking than I thought. <laughs> there ain't no way. That's that's her. Oh my god, bro. This guy got a girl with, with hair that has color. Or is this her? <laughs> Shit, man. It might, I don't know who it is. <laughs> I don't know who it is, man. Somebody needs to tell me. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who it is. But somebody made a video. Yeah, I don't know which one it is. And they say her name is Queen of Swords. So I'm trying to find out which one it is. If it's this one, I'd be like, all right, bro, you all right. She's a little lady. But that's five years ago. I don't think it's her. And I don't. I know it's not this girl. There ain't no damn way. Um, so it's got to be this one right here. <laughs> it's got to be, bro. Hey, what's up? Nah. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I don't even want to look into this shit. I can't investigate you. He's a million. I mean, this guy's an investor, bro. Calm down. He's a common sense investor. I like this video. I'm going to make a video on this. Um, thank you so much. We still got to go over one more video. God damn, bros. Oh, man. That's just too much for me, guys. Stop, hey, stop sending me that shit. <laughs> Whoever sent me that shit, stop sending me the video. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I do. I want to know. I don't know. What does this say? To the haters, y'all really going to tell me what Adam Aaron tweeted about not being involved? Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Damn, bro. Them teeth? Holy shit. Open and browse it. Let me see this. Let me see this shit. Bro, this this is bad. That, hey, Morant, you can't make fun of people's personal appearance. I'm not. I'm saying I want to help them. Bubby, I want to help you. Just leave him right there. I just want to talk to you guys. Let's see what you... Man. God damn, bro. Fuck. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face, bro. If I tried... If we played the staring game, I would fucking lose. Hold on. We're going to try it right now. All right. Let me look at this, dude. All right. Ready? Go. Not I tried. Holy shit. Mm. 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 Just leave him right there. <laughs> not yet. I'm sorry, guys. I know. I know. It's not, it's not very, it's unbecoming of me. I'm so sorry. No, I'm not. Do you know what these guys do to me? Martinez rants. Talk all that shit. And you don't think I'm gonna sit here and laugh at you? I'll laugh at you. Every damn day of the week. Oh, hold on. I'm reading something. <coughs> oh, okay. I see you. I, I just got the messages. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, did. Oh, thank you for letting me know. See, my people let me, they're sending me comments right now. They're letting me know who's here and who's not. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you're right, but I'll leave it alone. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to um, make too much fun of people. I'm not like that. I mean, I am, but I'm not. <laughs> you guys got to know, man. These dudes tried me. These dudes tried me. Good job, Stax. Jen, eh? That's HYMC. I just can't get over it. How you going to tell me that that's the play? Do you know who owns HYMC? Huh? Yeah. Get out of here. All right, back to it. Back to the stock. Back to the channel. I apologize. Hey, guys, I got way off base there. I apologize. Reel me back in sometimes. I need to be reeled back in sometimes. And thank you for the individuals who are sending me my DMs. <laughs> Man, I got I to gotta close out the... Yeah, close that out. Oh, oh. That's like watching, like, porn in front of your mom. You can't... I can't put them up on there. What's going on, Scotty? How we doing, man? On the mountain today. Ah, oh, it sucks, man. Only important people here. We try. I got tears in my eyes, bro. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Shit. Shit, bro. My bad.
My bad. Hold on. Hey, from now on, when you hear this shit and it's called winning, I, I don't want to ever. I don't want you guys to get that visual. Creeping up from the heathens Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing Take me for granted and you know I'm leaving Alright, you know I'm leaving, check this out This is from The Street, thestreet.com This might be the worst thing I've seen in my life It's called, Is GameStop Ripe for a Buyout? A few years ago, GameStop was... Uh, a potential takeover target. Yes, they were. At current levels, could this video game retailer still be an attractive candidate to, for a buyout? No. I'm going to say no. But I'm going to let them do what they do. It is no surprise that speculative assets such as growth stocks, cryptocurrencies, and meme stocks have encountered rough seas this year. Just looking at simple year-to-date performances, the losses have been stark. If you see, they put GameStop, AMC, and Bed Bath & Beyond all in the same line. Hmm. And this is some produced bullshit, but I'll listen. Our current macro scenario is quite different from that of 2021 and for the worse. This year, the economy started to show signs of weakness with high inflation and rising interest rates taking a toll on equities, especially of highly leveraged companies. In an environment of uncertainty, and with recession risks ahead, many investors have preferred to play it safe rather than bet on companies that have been unprofitable so far. For much of 2020 and 2021, short sellers got seriously burned betting against speculative assets, including some of the most iconic meme stocks. However, in bear market years, short sellers can rack up impressive gains. They have certainly done so in 2022. As of early December, market bears have registered stellar profits on some of the most popularly short sold stocks. Tesla's short sellers made about $11.6 billion in mark to market profits. AMC short sellers pocketed about $1.7 billion. Bed Bath & Beyond short sellers took about $150 million. Of note to meme stock enthusiasts is... Oh, wait, you didn't say GameStop short sellers. Why didn't you say GameStop short sellers? What did they lose? Oh, did they lose? Are they still in the play? Are they out of the play? I don't understand the full purpose of this article. That GameStop, though still down significantly year to date, has outperformed many of the other speculative assets. Short sellers have come out ahead, but they have not made the killing that they thought that they would. Thank you. About $1.4 billion in short positions were placed this year, but these positions generated only $82 million in profit. That is, every $1 shorted against GameStop has netted short sellers on average only six cents. I rest my case. I rest my case. Let me tell you guys something. They can make no money on GameStop. Short sellers are not fucking with us. They can't get out of where they're at. You want to have that Moas talk? We'll have it any time of day of the week. Right now, let's have it. You guys want to know what I believe? Somebody said Morantz doesn't believe in Moas. Fuck you. Okay? I believe in a lot of things. Do I need to call it the Moas? No. I do believe this. I think that no one in their right mind would walk over to GameStop and try to, one, pump it and dump it because it's a fucking time bomb. They don't get to do it anymore. They figured that out in March of 2021 everybody keeps looking at january and i only look at march i look at march because for everyone that tells me they move the same explain it explain why gamestop took all the way up to 347 and came shooting back down to 166 and then back up to i'm sorry 171 and then back to 266 to end the day that was all in one day and one day we're all looking at our fucking phone and the stock goes 347 all the way down to 171 in 15 minutes. 
then back up to 266, you would flip your fucking shit. You would lose your mind. For all you AMC guys that got here late, for all you Bed Bath & Beyond chasers, all you Mulan, all you GTII bullshit, BBIG, I don't give a fuck what you guys look at. I was there. And when I saw that happen, I said, holy shit. No AMC. There was no AMC talk. There was no fucking Jackson Hunter over here. Oh my God, look at what we're doing. AMC didn't do shit that day. That day, in my opinion, that day, they tested the market. They wanted to find out what kind of volatility you might have if we start closing. And they found out it's a fucking rocket. They And who is they? The short sellers who can't make a fucking dime on my stock. They cut it midday. They fucking chopped it with everything they had. Brought it down to 171 and we bought it back up. We ended green that day. You want to talk about volatility? You just want to talk about halts? You just want to talk about real shit? Little funky ass three cents, little 80 cents today, five dollars in the past three days. Fuck you. I saw the fucking rocket. And they halted it. And one month later, one month later, and I tell you, you guys go fucking Google it. You guys go look at it. One month later, Adam Aaron starts tweeting to Trey. Adam Aaron is out here doing the full press parade. And every YouTuber grifter is out here getting views like you've never seen. Every monster. Hundreds of thousands of dollars thrown at these kids. They're putting fake tits in front of you. Ass cheeks. Trey, Matt. You can't do it to GameStop. You can't, guys. There is not a buyout coming either. There is no private equity that can afford what the fuck we are. Six billion in sales. Great assets, great structure. The brand itself is worth more than that. Do you think Ryan Cohen's going to put his hard work in front of what? A couple of billion bucks? This article, when it came out, just so you guys are fully aware, this was written and they were up for sale when the value of their company was down to $1.4 billion. That was the stock price getting you there. Would you ever buy GameStop for $1.4 billion? Not if you wanted to. You, they would never sell it to you. Adam Aaron. Adam Aaron. Fuck. Ryan Cohen's position in GameStop was once worth over, I believe, almost $2 billion the other day. Maybe even three at any time, obviously. But I'm saying, like, it's he's already has a billion in it. We own it. We know it's worth more than that. This is why you'll never get it from us. Because we know the truth. Do they move the same? Ever since after that day. That's why you fuckers don't listen, man. Take this shit off the fucking screen. Go here. And I will go ahead and compare the two. So if you ever want to know the story of a man named Brady, Tom Brady, this is, listen to me, guys. Just listen, okay? People tell you they move the same. They're in the same basket. They're a swap. No, it's a hedge. And this is what tells me it's a fucking hedge. Okay? Look at the chart. All of the volume on GameStop. And I'm not talking about the price here. I'm talking about volume, the very bottom of this chart, okay? These big green bars down at the bottom. Do you see them? The green, green, green bars, green and red down at the bottom. You see those bars down there? Those bars are big as fuck, okay? All of them, every single date, up until that 10th of what it was. The 10th of March. Listen. Look at the volume the rest of the time. 
Whenever you have real volume on this stock, you will have real movement. They have never given you that volume again. Never. You want crazy volume. And I, as I zoom in, it goes up, but it's still not as big as these ones over here. You'll never have this volume on the stock because they can't close it out. Look at the look at the little volume bars compared to what this is over here. It's not the same. And the blue line that you see right now, let's get rid of these indicators so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. The blue line is AMC. Do you understand now why I say what I say? Do you guys get it? If GameStop goes up, then AMC has to go up. Yes, it's the hedge to it. What happens when AMC bankrupts? What happens when AMC is not there to be that peg? Because it's going to come off the peg. It's been separating slowly the whole time frame. AMC was overbought over here in the blue. Do you see it here where it's too high? It was over. It pumped. That's their actual fucking pump. $72. Now it sells off. Look at how tight we're together. AMC and GameStop is so tight the whole time. The, re the way it got apart from each other here, okay, this is a time frame, a window here, of where GameStop insiders were buying shares. We were buying shares all the way up until March right here at this point. We were buying shares. We're exercising. We're doing everything we can. Come on over. Look at how tight we are. And look at how apart we're getting. We're spreading apart. At one point, we were touching. We were touching. We were intertwined on those pumps. Now we're how far apart? We spread apart right here. Gone. Gone. From here to here, we are so far gone. You have that gap. The gap got bigger. The gap got bigger. The gap's getting bigger. This gap between the two the two stocks is going to be even bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm sorry to tell it to you. But look at how big the gap was before. Look at how big the gap was before you ever became the hedge. When someone can explain, when someone can tell me this time frame right here, then I'll talk to you. Then I'll hear you out. But you can't. You can't. This was them scrambling to find out, finding the peg, setting up the media blitz that they did, doing the manipulation they did, and they did it all in this window. And I'll never come off of that because it's absolutely true. So enjoy your enjoy your hold, guys. You guys are in a good fucking stock. I'm sorry. You guys are in the best one ever. This is going to be the best run in the history of the world. And I can say shit like that. And I don't care. Oh, generalities. How can you say that? You don't even know. I do know. I'll tell you what else I know. I know that I'm right there with you. That I would never sell one share to go buy fucking contracts. Never sell one share unless I was broke and I was dead. One way I'm ever going to sell shares. My kids ransom money. Maybe not even then. And I love my kids. Let me tell you guys. Hey, dudes. You guys are all watching these videos right now. I know. I died. Hey, let me tell you. I'm going to give a message to my kids right now. I never. I don't do this too often. Um, Lexus, Abby, Troy, Callie, and Aiden. My crew. Listen to me, guys. I know I died. And so you went back and you want to watch all the videos and watch all the live streams so you can hear your dad talk again. I'm telling you guys right now, do not sell my shares. They're still there in a the trust. They're still yours. Do not sell them. This company's amazing. And if Ryan Cohen's not there anymore, I get that. Or if the stock has gone down, I get that. But I won't, don't worry, I'm not here to lose money either. But guys, be great. If I die anytime soon, the year right now is 2023. If I die any time within the next five years, do not sell those shares. I love you guys. There you go. That's the message. All right. Back to you guys. Sorry. I had to do that for my crew. 
Uh, I've been lurking so long here with Morantz. My wife thinks I'm cheating on her. Uh, I'm <laughs> with you. Just kidding, man. It's, yeah, you know what? Um, you want to know that's crazy. Uh, I'm going to tell you some. Hold on. Somebody's sending some stupid messages. Is that it? We can read them. I don't mind. Um, let me just go ahead and go up. I'm going to scroll all the way up. Let me just go here. Yes, you can Google his federal court uh, file, filings. Oh, we're still talking about that shit, Mr. 80K. Um, really quick. The um, What are we talking about right now? I just lost my train of thought. Fuck me. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Almo. Every night for a decade, I would drive home from work, and I'd be on my phone. Well, I used to walk home from work, but I'd drive home from work now, and um, I would get on my phone, talk to my wife on my drive home every night for like a decade up until recently. <laughs> now I talk to Almo on my way home, and my wife is right there waiting for me when I get to the door. And she has dinner, you know, and she's, hey, babe, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good. I'm with Alma. I'm chill. We're chilling. We're talking. She's like, so y'all dating? I was like, no, that's my right-hand man. That's my pots and pans. He, you know, he's, he's there. And she goes, no, it's okay. I remember when you used to call me. So last night, I did the opposite. I called my wife the whole time. Like, yeah, baby, okay, no, I'm on my way to work. I'm on my way, I'm on my way home from work. I just let you know I'm going to drive safe. And she's like, you're just hanging up with me to call Alma, huh? I said, no, nah, mama, no, nah, I'm going to drive slow. No, um, yeah, it was great, man. You know, we all have the same issues. I want to hang out with you. You guys want to hang out with me? All right, let's do it. Rico's going to be on a hiatus. Shout out to my brother, Rico. He has a great thing going right now on TikTok. Um, he is talking sports. He's talking college football, the transfer portal. So if you're into college football and prep sports, he's following the players from, you know, from day one all the way through till they get drafted. But uh, he, he's really, really smart about that stuff. Like we, we grew up, you know, studying sports and athletes. So um, I just choose not to talk about it too much here because we all know Cowboys going to win the Super Bowl, play on Monday night, going to put put Tom Brady into retirement. Finally, he's ready to lose against the Cowboys, I hope. Damn it. Just waiting for Uncle Bruce now. What about Uncle Bruce? Guys, guys. Oh. Bye. Why? Why? Bye. Oh. Jen, come rub my feet. No, we're going to go on a cruise. A cruise. Send me four hundred dollars. I want to tell you how great your portfolio is. <laughs> what four hundred dollars to review my portfolio, Uncle Bruce? Can you do that for me? Can you give me some advice? Hold my rents. Um, I a hundred percent gang stop. <laughs> I don't know about this one. No, <laughs> no, I would would buy a clock. I sell them. I want some classic review dark. <laughs> is that what you guys want? Oh man, okay. Um. Hi guys, this is Review Dark. I just want to tell you that uh, you know, I was wrong. I was wrong about AMC. I always said it was gonna be worth about, you know, a couple thousand bucks a share. But, you know, I've been wrong about a lot of things. Every time I look in the mirror and I stare at my junk, it's never as big as I thought it was. And you know, that's what my girl told me. So I dropped her, I left her, and I married a midget. And she thinks it's huge. Thank you. Oh, oh. there you go. Let's go, Cowboys. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Who else? I mean, that was back in the day. I used to do that shit, man. I, guys, I used to come on here back in the day and just do impressions the whole fucking two hours. Oh, my God. Lap on, lap off. Ah, er, I'm a pirate. <laughs> if you don't know, I got a hole in my heart. <laughs> Get to formation. Profile soldier. Anyone else uh, saving dry powder for the AMC puts after this? Um, well, if it's going to happen, right? I... You know, I don't buy puts. I don't buy any options whatsoever. I just, I look at it, and I and I always, hmm, that's about it. But Amy Schwartz, thank you. You're welcome. That protest is gross as F. Uh, the protest outside, yeah, I won't be with those guys. I can't hang out with dudes that I don't, I don't see myself rolling with. And I don't see myself rolling with those dudes. I only hang out with one type of dude, complete alpha males. I'm sorry, if you're a beta male, you can't be around me. It's not going to ever work. Um, I'm too dominant. When I walk into a room, you'll feel it. And it's just always been that way my whole life. That's why when I hang out with my boys, like I got a buddy named Matt, and I got a, I got my brother, and my, my brother-in-law, Jay, we're all the same way. We walk in, oh, what's up? It's like no one gets overly excited for anyone. Like when we're in a room, somebody walks in the room, we're not like, oh, man, it's my boy, what's up? We're not like, it's more like, oh, that motherfucker showed up? All right, what's up, man? What you doing? 
all right. And it would just we're too hardcore for each other. And I couldn't be those guys be like this. Marines, oh my God, you joined us on the. Oh, we made sandwiches, and yes, we have a little bit of sparkling cider. And we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold up the boards. We made these these poster boards, and it says, "Give us our money. We want it now." Eight seven seven dash now. Eight seven seven. I don't know what the fuck he's saying, bro. And I don't care. But I wish him the best. Dear no. Pornhub is my is my thing. I'm telling you, we're going to Pornhub. Um, yeah, okay, so I already got past all that part. Manscaped, uh, you know Almo. I'm going to be up in there. We're going to be up in there glossy and smooth. <laughs> no, Black Rifle Coffee might be a good sponsor. I agree, Dr. Evil, and I'm down with it. You know that. Um, damn, I got to get called away from my desk. Gizmo, stop getting called away, bro. All we got to do is buy and hold. DRS, DME, no dumb protests are needed. Uh, I don't know about this whole DRS GME stuff, but um, definitely buy and hold, I guess. I mean, all I got to do is just keep buying what I want to buy. Choke on that, punk. West really hasn't done much for uh, for the talk. All he does is talk and uh, get his FaceTime on TV and docs. Yeah, RP, I believe that too. All the buzzwords. No shit, man. It was bad. It's about MMTLP. Oh, I'll pass on that. We're going to the moon? Sure. Thank you. This guy is probably paid by the hedge funds. Whiskey, he probably is. Um, I don't trust anybody, bro. The only person I trust is the real DMT. Well, that's true. I do trust the real DMT. I do. It has nothing to do with AMC. That fool made me a free song, and I'll never, I'll never get over it. He basically telling us to buy, and he is the lawyer fighting for us. Yeah, John, it's crazy, man. Came from OAS, stay for a lifetime of dividends. Eric Hoffman, it's going to be great. You know, it's crazy. So you buy something. You put money into it, right? It has value. I don't care if you buy gold coins, silver coins, diamonds, or if you buy stock. I buy, I buy a company, and I put money into it. I don't know where in people's mind they think they lost money or they think they've lost an asset. You just gained an asset. You actually have that. It's yours. So if you were to pass away and your kids get it, just I'm just giving you an example. Like for me, my kids get my shares. I, I hand them a, a stack of wealth. What they want to do with it is on them. I am still have a stack. I haven't lost anything because it's still mine. And I don't agree to the price that they have right now. So I'm just going to hang out and watch the company do what it does. And the company's great. All these people in these random stocks are so blind. The leadership team in GameStop is all you need to know. Correct. Morant is complete. He's the realest effing dude I've ever met. Well, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. It says here, Morant is the best looking man on YouTube. Wow. Who wrote that? I wonder. Bed Bath & Beyond must be over the target. Bombs away. Yeah. Marantz, you ever seen the movie Wall Street Conspiracy? That's where we first learned about West Craven. I have never seen it. And um, I don't I don't know about it, but uh, I guess I can watch it. Um, send me a DM. I'm in Discord. Join the Discord. It's free. It's there. No, sweet baby. No. Marantz, have you played Carverse? I will not play it. I don't support um, certain things right now. But I have an NFT wallet, and I support GameStop. I do. Hogwarts Legacy looking sweet. I agree. Even my sister was looking at the Harry Potter game, and she doesn't even play games. Yeah, man. I heard that. Just wait. Just wait till that hits the bottom line. Yeah, it's all right. You keep going after the shitheads peppered, and even if you got suspended, whatever, you can build another one. Trust me. I don't even care anymore. I let it, I let it go. I let it go. Let it go. L2 creators not only in GME Marketplace are pretty clicky. Yeah, I agree. No, not peppered. My Twitter, uh, my Twitter time is really cut down now. Yeah, once I left, I, I just shut it down. Phil for real is a wannabe gangster. Uh, I don't know what he is. He's the cousin that gets invited, and then they're like, "Yeah, that's my stinky cousin Phil. Don't mind him. He smells his fingers from time to time." Peppered, I'm not surprised Adam Aaron hasn't put a restraint order on you because of your memes. There we go. Um. Doo -doo -doo -doo. When are you talking about PNG? Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. I'm a little bit behind. Me too. I'm trying to catch up in the chat right now. It wasn't nice about it. Yeah, there we go. That's why. Yeah, sure. Feels like more people are getting banned after Elon took over. I've been me I've been hearing a lot more of it too. I grabbed like four whole shares. Bro, this guy, I put money in to bed bed to me on, run that up. No, you didn't. HYMC is super low budget for shields. Yeah, it's bad, man. It's just bad. 
I'm skipping through a lot of the chat because I'm trying to catch up to you guys. So I apologize. If you're writing in the chat right now, um, you know what's up. The the Queen of Swords sounds like she gets around. Yeah, if you got a lot of knights at the round table, baby. That's the only thing I can do it. Stop. <laughs> Yo, if you saw this dude, you would be looking at it too. 20% of AMC is debt. I know what I know what it said. Oh, check your phone. Oh, my wife. Oh my god. Okay, let me see. Sorry. Mama. What did, what did she say? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. I just got a text. Good thing my wife said, um, check your phone. Hey, my coworker. Take it. Bro, you guys got to let me know when wifey's in the chat talking. You guys over here let me down and shit. Okay, there we go. I'm getting messages. I apologize, guys. Let me um let me call let me call up this dude real quick. I'm gonna get him on the channel. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Let me get him on. I'm trying to get Richard on the show, guys. I'm trying to get him right now. He said he's ready to go. I sent him a message, another one. He just he just texted me. So we'll get him going right now. I'll figure it out. Let me see. Oh, he called me back. Okay. Well, shit. Oh, he called me. Damn it, I missed that call? Shit. Let me... Damn it. I missed I missed Ape Father's call. Man, I'm pissed off now. No one's in there. Shit. I'm gonna text him one time and call me back. Sorry guys, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get Richard on the show, guys. Oh, then that and my damn my show came up on my phone. That's crazy. Let's see. Everything else is loud, right? You know, I I don't have my phone. I have my phone on mute when I'm live streaming, so it's my bad, bro. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the chat. Let's see if, if Richard comes back. I see Rubens on Discord. I see Kyoto, myself, Linda, real. We're doing our best. All right, so back to it. Maybe she should uh, she should super chat. Rance, check your phone. I just saw it. My bad, bro. Um, you know, thank you guys. So, man, my phone's moving now. I'm like, fuck. Moaz, somebody's got to pay. Sure, Heather. That March drop was wild. Yes, feel the chill. I bought at bulk prices that day. Yeah, Abe. Um, I bought it. I was everywhere, bro. I was everywhere. I had a limit sell of 300. I was buying at 309 because I thought it was going to go. Uh, I thought it was going, but Almo got me beat. Yeah, Almo bought it in way higher than that. Roaring Kitty's tweets seemed to help my resolve after that. Uh, through that, he made it comical. Well, sure. It halted and dropped uh, about more. Yeah, it did drop about more. AMC was always a distraction. Yes, it always has been. 
340. Preach. 4 billion at one point. I just joined. Is Bed Bath Beyond actually worth buying? To me, no. I would never buy it. Um, it's just not it's not what you think. So but I talked about it in the beginning of the show. So there you go. That two year delta of 310 downswing will be fire. We'll find out, man. You know, I don't actually just as usual, facts and fire. I'm a, yeah. You know, hey, guys, I don't usually go ahead and look for squeeze plays. I'm not looking for that. Um, you guys know this. My indicators are EMA and RSI for all for all things that I show. Um, and I don't really care to day trade or swing into things. It's not what I do. And... It's never going to be me. It'll never be me. But let's keep going. Not at this point. I'm still lurking. Been here every day, though. Thank you so much. Oh, here we go. G Money. G Money. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel. It's time to answer your questions, G Money. Uh, if you're still here, I don't know if you are, but you typed up enough bullshit that you actually got blocked for 300 seconds, which happens. It happens all the time. It's okay, though. Shit happens. <laughs> they blocked my man for saying he had a limit sell 300. That's funny. Why did Roy Ryan Cohen meet with Carl Icahn and took that picture? Uh, G Money, I don't know. Maybe they were having crumpets. Maybe they were sitting there having a croissant. Maybe they were sitting there just looking at new pictures of your girl. What do I know? I don't care. What's I got to do with... <laughs> First off, I don't care because I care about how GameStop as a company is run. And Matthew Furlong runs GameStop. So I'm just letting you know. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on over there. You tell us. I'm still lurking. Been here every day. Thank you, man. You all are the GameStop experts. I'm asking, what was this meeting about? G-Money, and I'm telling you what it was about. Your girl, she smells like onions. That's what the discussion was. They didn't want to talk about it any longer. They said she keeps coming by. She keeps hanging out in the office. Smells like fish and onions. Send her back to her man. That's what the convo was. At least that's what I heard. And I'm a GME expert, so it's got to be true. That's what it is. God damn, it smells like a whole batch of sauerkraut. Mmm. Car icon is GME worst nightmare. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. What meeting, G-Money? Popcorn is steady diluting the game. Stop his rocket testing. What's up, GME diehard? You know... It was a while back. There was a pick of GME, CEO, and Carl Icahn. Oh, this motherfucker. Uh, dude, you know what? G-Money, I think you're trolling me, bro. I think you're trolling me because you did that in caps. First off, Ryan Cohen is not the GameStop CEO. Like, have you guys figured this out yet? There's, there's pimps and players out here, and you're not one of them. God damn, bro. Ugh. Let me figure that out ASAP. Whenever I think of ASAP, I just think all stars and pimps. That's my new little gang. That's what we're going to be called in here. We're called GameStop uh, ASAP. That's our whole crew. That's my new crew for everybody here. We just adopted it two years in. We're the ASAP. We're the GameStop ASAP crew. All stars and pimps. What's up? Yeah, so stupid. I've been lurking so long here with you, Moran. and my wife. Yes, don't worry. We're good. HG made a second account. I don't know, man. <laughs> Nah, none of us were on that porch. I might have been. I don't give a F if GameStop runs up to 500 right now. I'm not selling. Ammo, I wouldn't sell. Um, my price point has come down because I keep increasing, right? My my um, The amount of shares I need and the price I need keeps coming down. Because the more shares I buy, the price keeps coming down. So right now, my my exit is at $1,700. Do you remember my exit was 8000 Does anybody remember that? Yeah, 1700 If it gets to 1700 guys, I won't. I don't have to be here. I just don't. I have so much, it doesn't matter. Don't be calling down death on yourself, man. And I know people, 1700 to 20 bucks. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. Don't you dare worry about me. And I'm realistic with my shit. <laughs> people, oh, that's not really, that's very realistic for me. But, you know, I think bigger than most of you. And I don't mind doing it. Rip on Moran's. Don't be calling down death upon you. No, I'm not. Well, maybe 10, 5K. Um, well, you're so stupid. Yeah, the hedge fund. I know. I just I just saw it. Sorry, man. But I'm looking for the ape father, bros. I'm looking for the ape father. Should I just call him? Let's see if his shit just rings. 
I'm just going to call him. Let's call him. Call him right now. See if he picks up. I'm starting to think you're not too technically savvy out here. This dude is ringing. Last night after the show, I, f I figured, I found out that um, Linda Rowe was in the chat with me. <laughs> I like, I didn't even know you were down there. Because I allow anybody, okay, can I make the announcement to you guys? He's not picking up. Um, I'm going to make the announcement to you guys. Anybody, don't forget to eat a bagel. Yeah. He's following them all. See you, baby. There we go. I'm going to say this right now. My New Year's resolution this year was to allow any AMC YouTuber, personality, I don't care, then come to this channel while I'm live and we can talk. The DMs are open. Discord is open. Our Discord is in the description of the video. You join Discord. You go down to the channel, and I'm in the channel right now. The channel is, if you go all the way, scroll all the way down, it's called Voices Channel. Callie Bear's there. So here we go. Callie Bear, how you doing, brother? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Picture perfect. The whole world can hear you. <laughs> how you doing, bro? I'm good. How are you? I'm outstanding. You know, I um I know that you're an avid YouTuber and you follow the stocks, you follow the game. So shout out to Cali Bro Bear. Um, but I want to ask you, man, what are you still holding? I got a lot. Of, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Oh no, I'm saying you still got AMC. I have AMC. I have GME. I got some other stuff. Yeah. How do you feel about the AMC? Hang on a second. I have to uh, mute one of your channels here. Hang on. Yeah, mute me. Mute me. All right, now I can hear you clear. You're good, brother. So how do you feel about your AMC investment? Uh, not too good right now. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, I'm saying, I'm being honest with you, man. I, like, I'm nervous for people. But after uncovering everything we've uncovered over the last two years, do you understand the bigger picture yet? Or are you, like, just hopeful that it can bounce? <laughs> No, I do. And, you know, I've been following this. I've been here for two years now. And I just want to, I have some theories. and I've been putting some videos out. Last thing I wanted to do was be another YouTuber. Right. <laughs> but um, it's just getting really frustrating hearing some of these grifters out there still pumping the stock when you can kind of clearly see what's going on now. Right. So would you agree? Now, I'm just curious because I want to see where you're at mentally. With you know, with the theories, um, would you agree that AMC is a hedge to GameStop? I don't know if it's a hedge. Um, you know, I agree with everything you said. The only thing I want to pull away from from what you're saying is the price action itself. So, if you look back when retail piled in, wh where were the shorts caught back in January of 2021? They were short in the stock. It was under three dollars. They had been piled into it since it was. You know 30 bucks at one point and they were just pounding the thing into the ground before the pandemic so you know when retail joined the joined the club back in january 2021 they had this thing under three bucks and that's when retail came in hot and heavy and that, that's where they got trapped and that's that that's the root of the problem right now with amc so what what's their goal if they're trapped at three you i want to get it back to three you think that they're trapped at three i mean i don't think anyone that's, that was there at three is here I think they've caught no, that plenty of times. I, I, no, I think they got caught off guard at three because the price got out of hand. And these guys don't want to lose money. It's kind of just like what you said with GameStop. You know, they, they can't make any money on it if, if it's over three dollars. So any anything they put into it above three dollars, they can't they can't get back right now. Right. But did you see the volume in June of 2021? I did. Yeah, I did. Only, and I think three billion so you, shares in two weeks. So if you think about how Wall Street, you know, thinks about things and it, everything seems to be like a 10x in their head when when retail was piling in the AMC and everyone was buying and buying and buying in the battle of 801 and this thing started creeping up when, when it was pushing 30 bucks. That's when AA started dumping shares heavy into the market like he diluted the flow from 100 million shares all the way up to 500 million shares. So. You know, he slowed that he slowed that whole run to 72 down quite a bit, and, but they were still over 30 bucks. So they had to short that thing back under 30. I feel like 30 is where they lost control. Okay. And 
Okay, so you're. What? I'm gonna help you out, Kelly. Um, I've been doing this a long time. Okay, and I don't mean to like put you on the spot or anything. It no, might just no, it's be, all good. It might be just misinformation, but the float of AMC was traditionally very small. It was. It was about a hundred million shares. Yeah, but I mean, even smaller than that. So, right in August, in September of 2020, the insiders, Adam Aaron and the crew, they agreed to go ahead and sell their company for two dollars a share to Mudrick. But they took their float from a hundred million to five hundred million right there. Right. Right. So they were already at five hundred million by the time it popped. He wasn't selling it there. They only sold off, I believe it was like nine million shares in June. So that's all they had left. They already had pumped the shit out of it come uh, April. And April was the big one all the way through. But I'm saying the whole time, January, February, March, they're already still pumping it onto retail. Um, but that's when they diluted their float. They didn't dilute the float during the run-up. Um, during the run-up, he, only, he only had 9 million shares left, somewhere in that range. It's like 9 to 30 in that range. Small amount where he pumped it onto people. But um, there's n the only thing that halts run-ups you know, is the actual pumpers that do it. Because if the theory is that everything is short and it's a short squeeze, then it should have never stopped running. Because everyone was buying at 40, 50, and 60. Everyone you see that you know that's still around watching the channels, um, they pumped it themselves. Nobody has billions of dollars of liquidity to go through and just let it churn without taking the profit. Nobody does. When it was happening, you were looking at a market cap of over $30 billion on a failed movie theater company. You know, But here's a problem. Here's like the catch-22. AMC couldn't cash in on that. They had no, they had no shares to cash in on. So right. it was it was shorts laughing, literally laughing, saying, look at these guys. They're fucking idiots. Everyone's coming in to save a movie theater that can't save itself because they have no shares to do it with. Right. They don't have which is why he, which is why he asked for more at that time. Yeah, well, he didn't. He he took it away because he realized he was about to have a fucking revolution on his hand or or a um, a mutiny. Right. Like he was about to lose his whole life if he were to do that. Because they already lied to people the previous three months. The minute Trey did an interview, the minute they started pushing it out in front of you with every other YouTuber, the whole world came running in. And I'm sitting there throwing my hands up saying, don't do it, guys. This is part of the trap. The trap was set. It was executed extremely well. And everyone perpetuates that with every video and every click and every, and every share they buy. But this has been going on since beginning of time, as we've uncovered. And... It's not going to stop. The more that they can dr drain more out of it. Remember, when you see things that you've never seen happen before, traditionally with companies, that's when you should really start questioning what's the investment or what's the purpose of the investment. A reverse stock split on a credible name like this makes zero sense other than the fact that they need to dilute more. They could have just voted right. for a reverse stock split. They could have just voted for a conversion. But instead, they give even the, the little fine line that says, I want to vote for the ability to dilute the float with, without any approval. That's also on there. There's nothing anybody can do because this company does not work for the shareholders. And it doesn't have to. It's in the bylaws. They, they don't give two shits about common A stock shareholders. And they never right, but, but let's let's simplify things for a minute. So he he comes on Trey show. He asked for more shares. We said no. Then he waited a while. He asked for more again. We said no. And he knows he's on the outside looking in now because he knows there's shorts that want to cover or close, and he has no shares to participate. So what does he do? He says he's not going to ask next time. And. You know, he, we wake up one morning and we find out he creates this ape dividend right when we're about to breach 30 bucks again, which I still firmly believe is the watermark uh, for shorts to get out. And what does ape accomplish? It, it brings the stock price back down to a safe zone where if they convert now, the, the stock's essentially three dollars across the board because you got a four. Let's call it a four point five billion dollar float. 
divided by 1.5 billion shares in the market now between Ape and AMC, that's $3 a share. So if they convert, they got their AMC at three bucks right where they want it. And now Adam Aaron has four billion other AMC shares sitting in reserves that he can flood the market with when these guys want to start closing. You they basically, he, yeah, yeah he, could dilute, he could dilute us to 81 cents a share if he dumped everything right now, which is probably why Ape saw 80 cents a share. Caliber, that's not true. You don't, what do you mean? I'm going to, I'm just my opinion, right? I don't want to, I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong. I'm just saying my opinion. It's not true because you don't have a buyer. Like, I think the whole world is getting this wrong when they say, well, he could sell the shares at this price. You could, but you don't have a buyer. You don't have a single person that wants to buy this company at fair market value. The value of the company is what, one and a half billion dollars now? Because you just sold 20% of it right. for 250 million? I get it. Like, but I'm saying, I'm saying theoretically, if he dumped off. Yeah, but I, if you, you got to throw theoretics out the window when you ask yourself, why can't companies just sell infinite amount of shares? Because at some point, people don't want to buy that shitty product. You, I don't care if you made HYMC shares a penny a piece. You're not going to find enough pennies in the world to make that company survive. The same thing for AMC. When the truth finally hits people in the mouth, when they really see the earnings report that comes out next, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the losses just get more and more and more, at some point, the liquidity is gone. So what do you do? You package it up. You, I mean, it's no different than what they did in the housing market, in the, in the housing crisis. They package up all these uh, mortgage-backed securities, and they put them in a different tranche, and they just put, like, you know, you painted lipstick on a pig. And you say, here, now this is what I'm going to sell you now. And, and then they bought the bonds. You, uh, what the hell are you going to sell me now? What could you sell me now? If you were going to dilute the float to $5 billion, no one's going to buy it. Just because you have the ability to do it doesn't mean someone's going to buy it. That's all I'm uh, saying. I, Ignorant people they, might buy it, but at some point, people wise up. <laughs> there's your answer right there. I mean, there's yeah, not Wall enough Street's not going to. There's not there's enough, enough, enough stupid people on the planet. Let me tell you there, something. I'm, I'm there's you enough clearly, stupid apes on the planet. There's 5 billion shares available to these guys, right? 5.5 and billion. And after the whole thing dilutes and whatever they can do. And I'm telling you right now, there's only 8 billion on this people on this planet, half of whom are of age, half of whom who are, have the intellect, half of whom have, have the ability, half of whom don't give a fuck, then what are you left with? I just keep cutting it down and down and down, and you're left with what? Ten shares a person on the planet? No way somebody's going to buy this shit. Let me ask you a serious question, though. Like, yes, honestly, if we know if they diluted the thing, the whole 5-5, five, five, that's 81 cents a share. If apes thought for one minute that they were going to get their squeeze they wanted, if all they had to do was buy another thousand shares of ape at 81 cents, they would fucking do it tomorrow. No, what the hell? you're crazy, man. You're crazy they would. Because there's, there's a factor in there that you're not factoring in. The debt. No, and they won't. Not the debt. You're not factoring in short sellers. Like the same thing that just happened for everyone. When I told the whole world, BlackRock sold. Okay. BlackRock sold 41% of the position. All the insiders sold all their shares. Everybody knows what's happening. Then you have at 1050, you have Antara come in and short sell their own bond. They fucking put the pressure on them. Hey, I mean, can you imagine? I'm I'm a guy, I loan you a hundred bucks. Okay, right. I'm gonna give you this example. I give you a hundred bucks. And you say, Good, I need a hundred bucks for gas money. Cause I know I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna go make money for you. I'm gonna pay you back. But I'm going to loan you 100 bucks. I go, okay, go ahead. And then I walk over to your car and I slash the fucking tires. <laughs> and I say, okay, now go to work and go make that money. And you're like, fuck, what? I can't. I can't. I, I got to get there. Okay, we'll fucking walk. All right, take your tools with you. And you can't do it, huh? You can't. And that's exactly what they did. They went and slashed their tires before they go to work. You can't do anything. So when you're telling me that you're going to be able to dilute and dilute and raise funds and raise, you can't do earnings to run a business. It's going to stop at some point, at some point no. where the rubber meets it, the road. And that's where I agree with you. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying they, apes, if apes thought it was going to help the situation, they would still buy the shares. It's not going to help is my point. Well, guess what? 
by that time, my channel will have a million viewers because I literally am going to keep talking this shit until I die because there's no way I'm going to let people do this shit. And I'm not going to let Adam Aaron get away with it and or Citadel or anyone else. And I might not be the biggest guy in the world right now. And I know people are looking at me laughing. Ah, only 5,000. Okay, but I'll still be here. Five years from now when AMC is still in bankruptcy court, still trying to figure out for dip financing or selling it off to the Chinese again, we'll figure it out and we'll still be here. But I promise you, Cali bro, I wish you the best of luck with your investment. But there is no way around this. I've seen oh, it I get it. Way. And I know you do, but it's just crazy. I think people are, honestly, I think I, think I need to have a crisis center because people don't know what to do. I but here, if you think... If, if you go back to my math, it totally explains why Antera got the deal they got. Because when you value the company at $4.5 billion and you fully dilute it out, in theory, let's say, that's $0.81 cents a share. But I'm not giving AMC $0.81 cents a share because they lose money. So where do I have to back it up to to feel comfortable in my investment? Probably two, two-thirds valuation, which do is $0.55 know, fucking cents, yeah, is why they what, paid um, do you know what AMC and their auditing firm uh, value their company at? Yeah, it's, it's under 4.5. It's like $4 billion, But I, I rounded it up for to keep it round numbers. So I, I no, came no, up no. with $2.66. Two, $2. The, the goodwill evaluation for this company is 2.4, 2 2.3292. Yeah, 2.3, 2.4 billion dollars. That's the goodwill impairment. So that's, good, that's based on current share price, though. No, 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 not current share price. It has nothing to do with the share price. It has to do with brand, assets, losses, everything. It's the balance sheet of itself. Like, what is this company worth? If somebody wanted to come buy it, come walk in and buy it, right? This is what it's worth. It's overvalued even now. But when you go below your goodwill value, you, you take on an impairment charge on the balance sheet because it's not fair to shareholders to be buying stock on a company that doesn't have an evaluation that's proper. Because if I deem it worth X, Y, and Z, and it's not, right? The fundamentals come out, you're you're penalized for that. And this, and this is the world of being a publicly traded company. So what's gonna happen, is that the ape father? No, okay, what's gonna happen is, this, com this stock is gonna come down to $1.25. It's gonna come down to two bucks again. It's gonna get all the way in the groove. And once it's there, and this is without the dilution, it already is diluted, it's done. There's nothing anyone can do because they took it from them. What I'm asking is, why wouldn't people see the bigger picture of GameStop? And when I say it's the hedge, I, I showed it to you from March. Remember that they were up against the wall in January. They were, they were stuck. They, they cut off the stock market, man. And then they went and put $4 billion into a no-name hedge fund like Melvin Capital. But who put the money in? The original investors, the founding father investors for AMC. So what the hell? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I go ahead and, and know what it is? They right. had AMC which is, in their pocket for a long time. Which is when I jumped into GameStop was last year when Adam Aaron started jump dumping shares because I wanted to hedge my AMC bet, but I didn't think GameStop was going to take this long either. Well, it's it's taking this long because people went and put money on AMC. I mean, and I see, I see that now. And I, if you go back to anybody that's seen me tweet or be on Yahoo Finance comment section or whatever, yeah, I was calling Adam Aaron out a year over a year ago, saying we bet on the wrong horse. And that's just a simple fact that I realize now. I mean, it's been confirmed. I always knew it, but I confirmed it with this ape shit. Well, I really I knew it before that, right? And I don't want to say like I knew first or whatever. What I'm saying is this, like. You guys, and now I'm saying you guys, right? You guys, you guys, all every AMC investor and or supporter that is in it for a squeeze doesn't realize that they're the opposite end of the table. And maybe they do now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone's finally coming to realization, but then they're stuck and they're like, fuck, I'm here. I'm stuck in it. So right. I'm just going to keep making the info videos and, and keep giving out the info. But if you understand the bigger play now, I mean, the golden parachute, the diamond parachute coming to to um, King Griffith. That's crazy. I know. Did you see it earlier, the video? Yes. Yeah. Well, I assume you're here all day, every day, bro. That's all I assume. No. Hey, Callie Bear, I appreciate you, sir. And I appreciate you on the channel always. 
Um, let me just give this uh, little presser to everyone. Anyone in the chat right now, the way this show works, this whole year, you will have this ability. When I go live, you can go live with me. The Discord is in the description of the video, completely free. We charge nothing here. There are no affiliate links. There is no merch. There are no super chats allowed. Everything you do is free. It's just information. If you go to the Discord and you join in on the chat channel, you can be on the show and talk to me directly, and we can interact if you have any questions or anything else. But I do want to thank you, Kelly Bear, for coming on up and being in the channel with me. I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate it, too. And I just wanted to add one last thing. Yes, sir. Like, I feel terrible for anybody that has a cost average over $9. I have a cost average of 11 and I think I have a way to whittle my way out, but uh, slowly I'm going to deleverage out of my AMC position. But the people that bought, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 70 dollars, I mean, they're, they're going to get stung hard. And I just feel terrible for those people. Well, well the, the word get stung hard is ridiculous. I mean, that's 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 not even being sensitive to what it is. One, you've been rused. You've been you've been robbed. There is you lost your life savings. People that put in at that price, that went all in, that, you know, they put in the boat because they were promised they were going to be rich tomorrow. Right? Uh, we're all going to hit the moon. We're going to get this yacht. And for every AMC YouTuber out there that says 500K, 100K, or even people like Matt and Trey who claim that they never said that, but in verse, they never told their crew that that's not a possibility. Like I was right. telling people, that's not a possibility. $100 is not a possibility. People think I'm crazy. No, no, I'm telling you right now, $15 is not a possibility for AMC, period. It'll never get there. So unless it does a reverse stock split, which I'm going to tell you, it'll never get to, a, you know, $100. It'll never get to $150. It just, it won't happen. So um, right. DRS, DME, yeah, I'll make the video after this video about the King Griffin diamond parachute. I will. But I'm going to be, I'm going to be long here today. I'm not going anywhere. Guys, when I tell you I'm live today, I'm live today. I'm not going anywhere. We're here. I might go eat lunch and still be live. Uh, we're going to be here for a while. And um, but yeah, I hear you, Kelly. Bear. Go ahead. The floor is yours, brother. Don't let me talk the whole time. Shit. Yeah, not not financial advice. I'll tell you guys what I'm doing. I go mean, ahead, I honestly. already told I already told you my cost average is 11 bucks. Okay. Uh, this this week there were call contracts. Uh, you could sell calls up to fifteen dollars. Like I sold, I sold cover calls on all my shares, and I'm fucking begging that my shares get called away. But it ain't gonna happen today, obviously. But I'm just gonna do that every week as long as I can get what I put into it back. I I'm happy. I just want out of this fucking play. I want to get away from Adam Aaron and his bullshit, and I want to start investing again. This has been the biggest waste of two years of my life. I just want my life back. You know, I'm going to tell you something, man. And I say this with all the respect in the world. You can't, you can't have that, that mindset. Um, you got to stay positive and know that you just paid the biggest tuition ever to learn the greatest life lesson. Oh, I did. And I, I do look at it that way. This That's is a, like, I, I couldn't have got a better education anywhere else, but you know, now it's just time to move on. Like, I can't, I can't <laughs> waste any more time with this investment. I just got to get away from it. Well, like, I know for you, for me, you know, I, um, I got a divorce at a very young age. I was a military guy, got married while I was in the army and it wasn't gonna work out. And, but it gave me a couple of things in life that actually made me realize for the better moving forward. Right. So when I turned 24 and I met my wife and we got married, I was like, okay, that was the lesson that I had to learn to get to where I'm at today. And I wouldn't be here. So a lot of people, they have to get the positives out of every situation and stay positive. So I, I know that people think I'm negative about their investment, about the AMC and APE and all that. It's just because the leadership and Adam Aaron and the way they manipulate people upsets me. So I make right. videos. Me too. And I make videos and I, and I come out here and I vent to you guys. But what it really is doing for me is it's helping me cope with the way I invest and the way I see the world financially. I'm telling you, I've never dug so deep into a company that I don't invest with, that I did previously with AMC, that taught me something. That taught me how to invest on every other company that I have, how to go back and double check everything I own, 
Like I literally go back and I go, okay, I own three stocks, right? I own GameStop, T. Rowe Price, and uh, Costco. I go and break them down religiously now. Every earning statement, everything they do, I want to know what's going on. Because I used to be the guy who would go, oh, you know what? Blue chip, Apple, I got it. Amazon, I got it. Oh, let me go get some Doge. Oh, that's running. Let me go grab that. Like I would be just the guy chasing my tail. And it wasn't fundamentally sound because I had to pick five stocks. And I, and I did that a while ago, over two years ago. But I mean, I, well, I buy things that I know and that I like. Like I bought Ford because I have two Fords. Things like that. But, and it had right. to run. But I, I just, I've learned to really read everything. Um, and I thought I did in the past. I thought I, you know, I'll give you the example. If you just go look at the balance sheet, is this my guy? Man, I'm going to get fucking announcements the whole time. I'm going to put on mute. Sorry, Ape Father, you probably missed out. I love you, brother. He'll call me. In another place. But I used to look, I used to look at balance sheets and just look at the totals. And then I'd come out of it and I'd go, oh, look, these guys have a net loss of 90. And I never really put my business side into it. So now that I do it the right way in my mind, I have a complete picture of the company. Like I understand the seasonality of companies, the the ebb and flow of traffic. And then I go, okay, now I get it. Now I get it because there's cycles out here. There's cycles for a lot of things. So when I talk about GameStop in detail, I talk about the cycles of the console, the cycles of new releases, the inventory cycles for quarter to quarter. I understand when where they're spending money and they're not because the way they budget, you know, uh, period to period. And that might not all be reflected on a balance sheet from one end to the next. So when I can explain it in my brain to what I'm looking at and it all makes sense to me, that's how I connect those retail dots and that's how I connect the fundamental dots. So fundamentally, I understand where GameStop's coming from. That's why I say the dividend's coming. Um, and here's why I think a dividend's going to come. Because I think deep down inside, a guy like Ryan Cohen, he um, he has this he has this fight in his head where he says, "I'm going to be the freedom fighter," or uh, "I'm a good guy." And how do you kill shorts? Well, one, you can have them close and force them to close. Uh, you can go ahead and do a stock split, and and spread it out just a little bit longer, right? It spreads out a little bit wider. But when you do a stock split, now you have 300 million shares of GameStop, and if they were short any. Great, it multiplies. But what happens now that I'm going to start giving out a dividend per share? If I give out a dividend per share, those shorts, amplified by the cost of borrow, amplified by the time that the amount of time they've been here, now inject fundamentals, inject a good run, inject a profit, inject an S&P 500 announcement. All of things that we're currently eligible for moving forward after. So... A dividend coming would then force shorts to deliver cash via in lieu of having the share themselves. It's going to kill some people, man. It's going to gut some people. And I think this is the ultimate thing that we could do, GameStop, if that's the avenue people want to play. Um, dividends is just not you making money. Me, I make money. I get a dividend. I make some money. No, dividends is the, hey, I'm about to fucking gut you you shorters, and watch it happen in real time. That's GameStop. So uh, it's not any other stock out there. It's not Bed Bath & Beyond, and it's not, um, obviously, it's not AMC. So that's where, that's where I'm coming from, and that's where I've been, and, and that's where I'm going to be. So uh, I just want you to know that's how I'm approaching it, and I'm looking at it. Oh, me too. And, hey, I just want to add, I want to address something in the chat because I'm sure. – some guy's busting my nuts because he's he says oh. yeah the contracts are only trading at a penny a contract to sell cover calls which is true right but okay. I, I don't give a fuck i just if i if i get my shares called away at 15 bucks i make a four dollar a share profit I, i'm in a profitable trade i just want my money back out of the out of the stock i have twenty six thousand shares i got 300k tied up in this thing I'm not destitute. My wife has a good job. We we make great money. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm going on a cruise in two weeks. Like I just want to get, I want to be done with this thing. And if I only make four dollars a share, so be it. Yeah, I was here for Moass originally. It's not going to happen now. I now I just need to get my money back out and put it to work somewhere else. 
So yeah, yeah I mean, pen, I, I a penny a contract a penny a contract that isn't sexy, but if I get four dollars a share back, call them away. Like I'm begging them to call my shares away at fifteen bucks right now. Yeah, well, you know those are the games I don't play. Those are the games I don't play. Um, I saw what Boss Blunts was doing, what Pi Fi does, where they encourage this. We got to make money every which way on top and the bottom. And for me, I just invest money and I don't worry about it. I think that's the that's why I have such a good, healthy um, conscience about everything because I put my money in at any price. I don't care where I buy them. You guys know I bought them at sixteen. I bought them at seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. The whole time frame. This whole last month I was buying, and I even show my buy orders every day on the Discord. So like when people say I don't own shares, that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. But as you go through it all, I don't care because I respect the fundamentals of business and I know what trend we're in. I know we're in the bear market. I know we're dealing with recession. And I'm like, I'm investing at the very bottom. Whoever is buying right now on any stock, I don't care what it is, 10 years from now, you're going to be like, I did it so good. Like I did so great. But some people can't hold that long. Some people can't wait that long. Five years from now, three years from now. And I know where you're coming from, Kat, because you've all been here for two years. And that's a lot of time to have capital tied up. But, you know, the outcome that you're looking for might not be coming. And so I, and I think you're I'm not counting. That. Yeah, I'm, I'm not counting on it. And at some point, I might just have to eat it. But, you know, in the meantime, you know, yeah, I'll take my three hundred dollars in premiums i collect on all my shares my 250 dollars i collect on all that and i'll i'll invest that in a call on something else or a put on something else and i'll slowly make money that way yeah so i forgot that when you're live on the computer you're louder than me on my mic so somebody just told oh, me that so i'm going to turn myself up so i keep forgetting oh, about that no you're good it's not you i can change your volume too but i can just raise mine we're good you're coming clear and it's good Awesome. I'd add long, it's not AMC, HYMC, or APS. Yes, 10 years, you'll be happy. Uh, yeah, sell your AMC and then start writing cash-covered puts on GameStop. Oh, guys, I don't give out this financial advice. These guys are absolutely crazy. Um, I'm just talking to Cali Bear because you know what, guys? I talk to a lot of AMC investors. I probably talk to more AMC investors than GameStop investors because AMC investors, well, one, you guys are left out in the cold. All of your YouTubers left. All the info that you need left because there's nothing to defend. There's no way that you can defend what's happened with the insiders, the leadership team, and the way they run their company. And then, of course, the shorts getting involved. You are now buying into a company that is primarily run by distressed credit hedge funds. I don't know how that's a good thing. Uh, the, by definition, it's not a good thing. So really tough for me to be here with you guys and, and see you struggle, see your pain. But... As my dad always told me, only the weak quit. That's why you keep just you just keep trucking, man. So yeah, uh, and it, and that's where I go back to what I said about the cost average thing. Like I'm just I'm mad right now. I'm not struggling because I know I'm going to get that money back eventually somewhere down the line. But there's people that are never going to recover from this, and that's what really pisses me off about the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, how can you? How can you recover? You spent a whole lifetime to make this kind of money. And then you got there and you're in your 50s and 60s. And, you know, because I, I felt like they were they weren't worried about the kids. You know, I think people see it the wrong way. Um, when they push out a person like terrible in front of you, they're just trying to get guys to stare at a, a you know, at a female. When they push somebody like trade trades at you, you feel like he's your little your son. Like, oh, that's my son right there. But he's so smart. He's, he's he knows the computer so well. I better listen to him. He's smarter than me. Like, that's how the older folks see it. I'm, I'm guaranteeing you that. They hate guys like me, guys that can play both spectrums. I understand the young kids, and I understand the older gentlemen because, why? Well, I'm well-versed, and I've been around the world. So a guy like me, you don't want me giving you the advice that they're not giving you, where I'm going to tell you, oh, what, what, do you mean? what do you mean? No, 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 no. I lived in 2008. I lost a home. I lost a car. I've lost my job. I've been laid off. I've been divorced. You know, I've gone, th I've gone with, through loss of life with family members. Kids haven't lived life yet. I had somebody tell me, I met a kid the other day, and she was like, I'm 23, and I want to write a book. And I was like, oh, okay, what do you want to write a book about? And she said, my life. She said, I've been through a lot in life, and I want to write a book, and I think it would be a good read. And I was like, 
don't you think you should live life first? <laughs> like, like it doesn't cross their mind to live longer than just what they see in front of them. And I'm not discouraging people from writing books or from like telling their story. Do that. But understand that you've been an adult in the United States for like two years. You've been, you know, you've been off uh, out of the home for maybe three years, four years. There's so much more to it because it's not just what's happening to you. It's about what's happening to people around you. And that's what's happening right now. The pandemic, the pandemic, in my mind, whatever. Yeah, but, 100%. Yeah, I'm with you. Then you're going to go ahead and look at all the macroeconomic issues around the world, the geopolitical issues. And you're going to tell me that your lonely life, the one you live, the one that your parents brought you up in your house is the story to tell. Tell me the story. But in addition, tell me what's around you. What are your surroundings and how does that have an effect on your said life? That's the truth of it all, because I know parents that leave their kids home alone because they work three jobs. They're working two jobs. And they can't have child care. They can't afford it. So the kid's home alone. And now the kid's telling me a sob story because he's seven years old and he doesn't understand how the world runs. He doesn't understand that mom and dad are out there trying to make a dime, trying to feed his ass and then trying to raise him. But by the time he's 17 and he's, he runs out the house and he's like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I'm not going to listen to you, bitch. And you're like, really? Kid, when you turn 40, you're going to turn around and look back at your own kids and be like, damn, guys, settle the fuck down. I'm trying to live this life and I'm trying to make it work. And all of the economic pressures that are pushing down on us here and elsewhere abroad, these are first world problems. These are not third world problems. So I tell people to just it's all relative in, in scale. But for me, I'm at the I'm at the greatest crossroad I've ever been in in life. I am approaching my money making years. Those are going to be from 40 to 60. I'm 40, yes. But from 40 to 60 are, you, are the years where you make the most money. And I felt those were the people that they were targeting for these trades. That's where I'm coming with it. I don't care. They're not looking for 20-somethings, guys. 20-somethings don't have any fucking money. You guys are all broke. If you're 20-something years old, I don't care. You might think you make money. You might think you're a baller. You might think, all oh, you don't have shit. You're 20-something years old. When you turn 40, you're going to realize, you know what? My first car is already paid off. I got finally got good credit again. Oh, my kids are grown and they're out of the house. Now I have this money. I have disposable income beyond belief. I'm going to go on a fucking cruise in two weeks. Those are the people that have dispensable income, myself included. What do I do? I take care of the fam left and right. And what do I want to do? I don't want to put money into things that people are trying to tell me they're going to get me so fucking rich. You got a guy over here smoking up hot box in his house. You're going to be so fucking rich. And the only people that are going to lose money are going to be the people that want to believe in the story and the fairy tale. Because guess what? They just grinded 40 years of their life. And they're saying to themselves, I'm at a midlife crisis and I don't know what else to put it into. Because you don't have the education. You don't have the experience in life. There's nothing you could do. You're trapped. You're trapped. And you're all trying to chase something? No. They pull at the heartstrings. And they got somebody for everybody. They got this girl named, yep. you know, um, May, May with the markets, right? Markets with May. You got Lou versus Wall Street. You've got fucking boss blunts and trade trades and Mac cores and everybody. Well, hey. And Ted, just... Teddy Zane. And yeah, they, I, I even said guy. that. I even said that a year ago. I said yeah. they, they, they played us like a fiddle. They have a, a grifter for every demographic in the community. Yep. Without a doubt. Because if you don't have that, then there you are. And here I am. You know, I'm a veteran. Yes. I'm, I'm a... Um, I'm of Hispanic descent, I'm half Puerto Rican, half Mexican. I come from California. I'm 100% American. And I'm 40 years old with five kids and a wife, and I've lived my life. I could die tomorrow, guys, and guess what? I'm okay. My family's okay. My family will be set for life if I died tomorrow. I'm okay. I did it right. Is it over? The story just got started. I can't write a fucking book. I can't go write a book about my life, although many people would want to read it and write it. They would be like, oh, just tell me your story. Let me see what's going on. This is interesting. Guess what? I still have a life to live. So for all you guys that are 20 or 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, and you got money on the fucking table and you're going to lose it, guess what? It's okay. It's okay. There is no suicide here. There is no, oh, my God, my wife's going to leave me. Oh, my family's never going to talk to me again. All the things that people are negative about on these plays because they lost money or they're losing money and they can't face themselves. You're joking. It's fucking money. Get up and go make more. Get over it. 
If you're 70 and you lost it all, guess what? You're almost out of here, bro. Don't worry about it. If you're 60 and you lost it all, guess what? You had a good 60-year run, and now it's going to be a rough 10 years. I get that. If you're 50, guess what? Go find a sugar mama. Go do something else with your life, or go ahead and make a YouTube channel like this Common Sense Investor. If you're 40, guess what? You still have half your life to roll. If you're 30, it's okay. If you're 30, it's okay. Nobody's going to fault you. You're dumb. You're 30. You'll get over it. We all make mistakes. It's time to grow up now. If you're 20, well, even better. If you're 20, hi, I'm your credit score. It's going to get better. Guys, this is life. What the fuck, man? I, I can't understand why people are crying about losing money on the stock market when all I can tell you is this. The part where I'm out here making videos is to tell you this. Educate yourself so that it doesn't happen again. So you're not a victim. So you can pass on that information to your family and your loved ones and your little guys. My kids will get becoming adults, all of them, real soon. I won't have anybody in the house anymore. And I pray that they watch these videos and they understand. My son does. I don't know about my daughters. They're, they're well off. They don't need to worry about it. They got dad. But everybody else, I'm just telling you guys, there's a lot out here to learn. Even if you think you know it all. I'm just a guy who, who talks about it. But you're going to teach yourself. I'm not going to teach you. You're going to teach yourself. So, sorry, Callie, bro. I'm over here. Um, I'm over here ranting. You know, I'm all good. What was the first time? I don't know what they said. I'm hot boxing. No, I would, I'm hot boxing the world. I have, I have a similar story as you. I mean, I, yeah. I was married at a young age. I got divorced uh, back after 08 and that whole mess lost mm -hmm. everything. And I spent the last 12, 15 years rebuilding my life to the point where, you know, I had a bunch of money in the bank. I got a cool job my wife makes great money we live in the bay area we enjoy life and uh you know ever since 08 i've lived my life i don't owe anybody a single penny my car's paid off i pay my credit card every month like i have no bills zero bills so all the money we make we keep and i've lived my life that way ever since 08 so that's why I say when I'm going to recover from this, I will. I mean, we're still going on our trip in two weeks. That's not going to yeah. change anything. We still buy our wine. We still do our thing. We like to go out to eat. Like, life, life's the same. Like, nothing's going to change for me. But there's people here that, you know, they're still hoping for this squeeze that's probably never going to happen unless something drastic happens in the market, which I still don't even think it would happen. And, never and they're gonna never going to recover. <laughs> They're never going to recover from it, either mentally or financially. <laughs> Look at Josh Brown. Oh, Josh Brown has a real question for me. And, they, and I agree. I agree. I think it's going to be the mental aspect of it if they can't recover from it. But then maybe they just weren't meant to be here. And Josh Brown, before I answer your question, I'm going to tell you guys like this. I've had somebody tell me, because this happened yesterday. Um, some lady, I was eating, and some lady walks up, and she walked to the restaurant, and she goes, um, Oh my God, I lost my ring. And she was talking about her wedding ring. She's like, well, I got to find my wedding ring. You guys got to help me. I lost it. My husband's going to kill me. And I was like, I've been a husband a long time, right? And I was like, I'm going to kill you. Your husband's going to kill you over a wedding ring? Like, what the hell? What the hell is that about? I don't care how much it costs. Like, it's just a ring. Right? And she's like, oh, it, it, it's, it's because he just bought it for me for Christmas, and I had lost my previous one, and I lost this one, and, it's, and I was like, oh, okay. She's like, I'm just going to buy another one. Uh, okay. Um, well, how about you go home, and you have a conversation with your husband, right? And you tell him, I lost, I lost this. I lost this money. I lost, you know, the, I lost the product, and um, that's what I did. Uh, have that conversation. Well, if he was smart and he spent a lot of money on a ring, he would have insured it for a loss. But like, but like, what I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, if they're willing to divorce you over the loss of money, then the marriage is never going to work. Right. I the only way I would divorce my wife, hey babe, hi, is if she deleted my YouTube channel. Then I would divorce. No, I'm joking. Guys. <laughs> I'm joking. No, she can't get me. Uh, no, it's. It, it's not possible, guys. Through rich or poor, through sickness and health, you know, the good times and bad times. And so those people that are out there scared to tell their spouses about them losing money in the stock market and, or, they, you know, this investment that they made and they failed, it's all right, man. It's all right. You guys, if, if she's not willing to stick with you through that, then she's not the one. 
if he's not willing to handle it the right way, he's not the one. Um, I'm just telling you, I speak, I speak from a very high point on this part. I, my wife was with me when I was making the most money I've ever made in my life in my twenties. I was making crazy money and she was with me. And one day from the next, I got laid off and I had nothing. I lost about $8,000 a month on income when I lost my job. I went from 10, an average of 10 to 15 in that range, all the way down to two. You know how drastic of a drop that is? It's life altering. And my wife looked at me and she said, oh, we're okay. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. She made me feel good about it. She actually made me feel good that night. And I'm not talking about physically either, bastard. I'm talking about she <laughs> literally, she sat down and she said, we're going to be all right. She, she had to, she fixed me that day. I was hurting. I was 27 years old, 28, 28, 27 in that range. And I was just like broken. What kind of man am I? And um, I know a lot of you guys are going through that right now with AMC. And I'm going to tell you. What yeah, kind of and, and, I'll, and I'll add to that. So my wife, my wife yeah. knows what kind of money I have tied up in the market right now. She knows I'm not happy about what's going on right now. But she doesn't give me any shit about it. She trusts me. She knows we're fine. Um, you know, I would never put us in harm's way. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's not going to change anything for us. That's what so, I'm yeah, you know, she's not calling. She's not. She's not yelling at me. I'm a dumbass, or you could have bought me a new car, or any of that kind of shit. Well, you know so I appreciate that? that. I'll tell you who taught me that. Um, I got a good friend. His name's Pepper with Salt, and Pepper was putting money in on AMC. <laughs> And I don't want to speak for him because I know he's always around. But, um, but we've did the interview. I don't know if you have you seen that interview, Kelly Bear. Which one? My my one that I did with Pepperwood Salt. Uh, oh, I'd have to look back. I don't remember him by name. Uh, bro, you would know. I'm just gonna tell you that you would know. Um, I just tell everybody right now. The interview was done in June of last year. So right no, I didn't see it then. Meeting. Yeah. So I think everyone should watch the interview. And he is a, a massive shareholder for GameStop. And we were talking. And he says, you know, Marantz, uh, you know, we're not going to go hungry. <laughs> He's like, we're still going to live. He's like, you know, so whatever your money, wherever it's at, like I'm paraphrasing basically, but wherever your money's at, like it's going gonna, it's gonna to either make you money or it's not. And you've already lived a good life. Like we're all here. Are we going to take this chance? Have we done the homework to take this chance? Have we have we really ran into it? Do we really understand it? Do we understand the markets? Do we understand where we're headed? And do you believe in something? Like, are you going to try, man? Has everything always come so easy? Like, at what point do you put risk out there? And you say, you know, I'm going to try. Is it going to ruin your life? No. It doesn't ruin the legacy or the life if you don't overextend what you are. So right. I, I agree so with him. So, hey, I just want to comment on DRS GME's chat. You know, he yeah. asked why I got into AMC in the first place. Yeah, the reason yeah, why. The, that's a good question. The reason why I got in is because I was in GME when, when the run up happened. I made some money on that. And I saw AMC as like, hey, this could be the next one. And I wish I had bought more GME initially because I would have made a lot more, obviously. But, you know, I thought AMC at what what was it three four bucks when it was starting to move? I was like, this is kind of a no brainer. So I I threw a bunch of money at it, and then as the price kept going up, I kept buying in, and that's how I got up to my average of eleven bucks. And you know, June twenty twenty one, you know, I'm I'm looking at a, a one and a half million dollar gain on my investment, and I'm thinking like, holy shit, if this thing keeps running, like I'm set. Like I thought I was going to make fifteen twenty million bucks on this thing. And if it, if, if it hit a thousand bucks and, you know, everybody was talking, oh, it's going to a thousand, it's going to a half a million. It's, you know, so I was bought into the hype Fuck, dude. and I could have sold then and been like ecstatic, but I didn't. And I held and I watched them pound it back down. And, you know, I almost got out at 30 uh, last March, right before tax time, because I thought, you know what, it's not. It's not what I had in my account, but it's still a healthy profit. But, you know, I just had that $1.5 million fucking stuck in my brain. that I wanted to get back to that number. And, you know, they gave us an out again 
early August when it was at 27, I should have took the out. My gut told me to, and I didn't. And I said, all right, I'm going to stick around and see what happens with this ape dividend. Because if this is the catalyst everybody said it was going to be, this could be it. And it's been a shit show ever since. And you know, now I'm kicking myself because, you know, even at the 27 bucks, I still had, you know, 800K after I, I was still going to make a half a million bucks almost after I netted out. And that right. would have been enough for me. That's more than enough, right? But let me ask you something. I'm going to ask you a different question. Who did you watch? I watch everybody. I, you know, and, it, and I've always had the mentality, like if I'm in a room, let's say I'm in a, in a room full of people and everybody has their own opinion. I want to hear everybody's opinion because I never profess to know everything. And so I might glean something from someone that I hadn't thought about in a certain way. So I always like to kind of gather all the information. But going back to what we were talking about earlier, I started to realize like all these guys were saying the same shit. It was just a different demographic. And it was like, you got the, the, the toothless wonder guy from down South. He's like a good old boy from down South. He appeals to them. You got the Teddy Zane who appeals to like the alpha male workout guys. You got Trey who appeals to like the millennial crowd. And they, they just seem to kind of fit a, a unique character in every demographic of investor that was in this play. And they all were saying the same shit, and they kept everybody on the hook. Yeah, yeah. So, man, I'm, I'm blown away because you're an intelligent guy, it sounds like, and and you just saw it coming. And I think, I think emotionally it did exactly what it wanted to do. Yeah. I saw it coming, and I, I knew better in my gut, but I, it was that it got me on FOMO the other way. You know, I had I saw the big money in my account at one point, and I thought, man, if I could just get back to that, I'll get the fuck out. But it, it's it's not even getting back to that. And I should have just took what I had. You know, the old one in the hand is better than two in the bush. I should have just took the money and ran. Even at twenty seven dollars, I was up huge. Yeah, one in the hand, two in the bush. Uh, are we still talking about? <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, hey, but check this out. I have something for you. Um, I know you tell me, you know, who you were watching. You said everybody. Um, have you ever felt like cheated or despised at any point? Like where you were like, God, I can't stand that guy because I know he's the one who lied to me. Uh, I'm trying to think back. I remember I used to watch Trey a lot because he was a, he was one of the early guys on it. So I kind of watched all the stuff he put out. And when he did that, hey, this is my last AMC video. Like. It, it didn't upset me like it upset other people, but it just kind of pissed me off because I knew at that point he had to have been taking some heat and he couldn't man up and take the heat. He just fucking bailed on everybody. Right. Hey, Ant Card, I know you're back and I always give you the shine like I do, like all the trolls that I step on. Um, you're okay, Ant Card. You're in a safe space. You're here. No one's trying to convince anyone to buy GameStop versus AMC. What I'm doing is I'm talking to AMC investors and letting them say their story. Let them get it out. I want to hear it. You ready for the next part, Ant Card? Because I know you're here every day. Hey, Cali Bear, when did you first watch my channel? So, <laughs> full transparency, because yeah. I'm an honest guy. And, like, the first time I watched some of your videos was a while back. And I, I my first impression was... You were what the what the AMC crowd called a quote unquote GME elitist. So, uh, but I am, but I am. I, and I was like, all right, this guy's just an AMC hater, and he's just saying shit because you know he doesn't like AMC or the management or whatever. But then I'm like, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, so let me watch more of his content. And the more I listen to you, the more I'm like, okay, this guy's a like minded individual. He seems like he's a smart guy. I'm seeing the things he's talking about. I can't really like argue with the points he's making. And now I come on your channel whenever I have time to come on your channel because it's, it's, it's fact. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. So be my new slogan, it's a fact. Yeah, so my, it's so my fact. first taste, yeah. you, my, my first taste to you was, I don't know if I like this guy and now, yeah. I think you're I think you're spot on and I and I think you're a good guy and I think you care about people. Um 
you know, Trey showed his true colors when he bailed. Lou showed his true colors when he bailed. All these guys are showing their true colors. And I even said Adam Aaron is going to show his true colors on Twitter about six months ago. I said his true colors would be revealed soon, and here we are. Oh, yeah, no, I, I mean, come on, man. It's one of those things, like, people, the first time, I think a lot of people, like, in the live chat here are frustrated because when people walk in and their first, you know, their first time meeting me, they're like, oh, my God. This is a shit talker. This is the guy who hates us. And then everyone here is like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. He's trying to help you. <laughs> and then at some point, my, the crew is like, well, fuck them. <laughs> Let them lose all their money. Like if they don't want to listen and I'm never going to be that guy. I'm never going to leave people down. I'm always going to put my hand up and help them. And uh, let them know hey. that Costa Brawl doesn't matter. <laughs> and hey, can I, can I, yeah, I was just going to say, can I address Ant Card in the chat? They oh, said, yeah, he's uh, ridiculous. Uh, he's ridiculous. Costa Borrow is 127. Okay, so let me ask you this, Ant Card. If you believe there are naked shorts in AMC, what the hell does Costa Borrow have to do with anything? They're not going to borrow shares if they're just going to sell you a naked share. Yeah, well, I got something else for that because I learned this one from Martin Scarelli when we were interviewing him, um, he taught me something. He really did. I tell people this all the time. He said, the reason why cost of borrow goes up is because the market makers know that they need to borrow that share. They need to borrow that share because they want to. They want to short it. So why wouldn't you increase the price? It's not that it's hard to borrow. It's just, you want to borrow it? We know you want to. We know you want to short it. Come get it. And they're going to they're gonna make money. It's grifting. It's price gouging on what is a necessity and what's a necessity. It's not a necessity as in the point that they need to short it to hold it down. No, they want to short it because it's really going out of business. So they, they increase the price. That's all it is. Marantz is the Rush Limbaugh of market shenanigans. You know, Gizmo, that's probably the best compliment I've had in a long time. Um, but thank you. I really appreciate that because I thought Rush was a stand-up guy. He was um, painted one way, but if you got to know him and you got to hear him every day, um, I grew up on Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity. Um, so you kind of know where I'm coming from on that that standpoint. But uh, just to know that, that you say that, that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Um, what we what what would Callie tell someone that's down big, ride it to zero or take the loss? So what I would tell somebody there yeah. is w what's going to make you feel better mentally. You want to ride it to zero and think you accomplished something against the system and that makes you feel good inside? Ride it to zero then. Me, that's not me. What I would do if I was, if, if my, all my eggs were in AMC, I would probably break some eggs and go try to make some money up somewhere else because I don't think you're going to make it back here. I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> Boss Blunt is Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the vision is here. Hey, vision. I mean, I know you're typing in all caps here. The best stock on the market is AMC. You know, vision. Um, I've seen you type up really negative comments about me on every video I post. You're belligerent. You're you're consistent, and I'm just going to tell you that holds no merit. What you just said, the best stock on the market is AMC. How? I mean, I'm just going to stand here and look at you. How? You have Costco. You have other companies, Home Depot, you have IBM, you have Microsoft, you have Apple, you have so many other relevant companies. Don't come at me with just making a blanket statement like that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but I mean, here, here's what I'll say to the whole chat. Anybody that's here still thinking there's a squeeze, the moment Adam Aaron created Ape, yes, he, already put the, he already put the ball in motion to prevent the squeeze. Um, they now have the ability to convert shares to AMC and they have four billion of them sitting in reserves that if shorts need shares to close and they don't want to pay us top dollar for them, they can go directly to Adam Aaron and fucking buy them. Pennies. They'll get them for pennies. And because I've already proved it. And who doesn't, it. whoever doesn't understand that is fucking delusional because that's what he's going to do. He's done it to us. What? How many times before he's going to do it again? Free from, free from it all, he will explain importance of cost of borrow. I'm working. I'm going to tell you the importance of the whole market is against you or the whole market's rolling with you. So you go figure that out. I'm going to make the video today called Diamond Parachute. Okay, remember that. I'm making Diamond Parachute.
I, I write all this, these notes down so later on when I do make them, people know it's coming. Um, I mean, you, you want to hear the funny shit? Like, the last thing I ever wanted to do was start making YouTube videos, and I have, and they're crude because I'm not a technical guy, and I don't want my face on camera because right. of what, what I do for a living, and sure. I don't want to be, become part of cancel culture and all that bullshit. Oh, I, I, so, I'm fully aware. Mm. So... So I started putting content out and then I get these idiots that comment on my stuff and say, oh, thanks for confirming that I should just buy more. And I'm just like, you guys are digging your own. You keep thinking the shorts are digging their own grave. The people that are buying more now are fucking digging their own grave. Yeah, I don't know who's buying more. I, I don't even I, know. I think you just say that shit, right? I mean, unless you're boss blunts, <laughs> you're selling more to buy more. I've never heard it in my, in my mind. I remember I used to watch Andrew No Money for GME, and then he started switching up for AMC for obvious scamming reasons. I stopped watching. Always called him out and then never said a thing. Yeah, I, I, I've always called him out, too. He says, uh, why is it your mission? Why is it your mission to type in all caps? The vision. Why is it your mission to prove that AMC is not squeezing? Um, that is not my mission. Um, the vision, I'm convinced that you only watch my update videos and not the live streams. And those videos are there too. But I'll also tell you, AMC is not going to squeeze. It is not possible, and they don't want it to. AMC is not your friend. AMC is owned by distressed credit investors. Not retail. Not you. I am very matter of a fact about this, can I, and I have been for two years. I'm not wrong. There's numerous people who understand the whole picture. I made a video yesterday, and I know whenever I post a video, you're quick to not watch it. You just go straight to the comments and type in hateful messages. I suggest you watch it. I'm the only YouTuber that addresses every single negative comment that comes on my page. I address everyone and everything because I'm a real person. I'm not a shill. I'm a dude that has a camera and a mic. And I talk about the stocks that I study. I study the stock. I don't invest in it. I study it. You might invest in it, but you don't study it. There's no way. There's no way anyone on God's green earth that has all the information that we've been putting out for the last two years that would buy a single share of this. Cali Bear, hi, sir. Would you ever buy another share of AMC stock after knowing what you know? No. Thank you. And I haven't. Yeah, and who would? And who would? That is the craziest part. You I'm trying to figure out a way to get out of it as yeah, fast well, as I, I can without luck. losing money. Yeah, well, I wish you luck. It's going to be tough. And for the guys who are saying those call contracts sell for a cent apiece, that's $4 a contract, okay? So if it's $4 a contract, and I know what he bought his shares for, eventually, and I'm just talking about eventually, he's going to get his money back. And, if, and if, even if they're a penny a contract, whatever the hell you're saying to me, um, he has enough to sell and make enough, well, let's just say a percentage of it back each year by selling contracts all 52 weeks because they're not going to get called. No one's well, going to go ahead and assign them. Well, here's what I did. I sold, I sold my contracts. I, I got about 200 in premium. There you go. I took that money and I bought SPY. Five puts yesterday, and I made I made three times that money back. Yeah, yeah. You can do spy puts every day, but you know what's crazy to me? I'm I'm telling you guys, if you guys don't know, like the guy right here up in the chat, I just read it earlier. It said AMC is not going to zero. Like you guys don't understand. Eventually, it will. Um, and why? And why do they think that MSM is so boastfully talking that AMC is going to a fucking penny for a whole year? Because they know they're they're on the inside. They know what the fucking plan is here. Oh, but, but they can also do it the other way. Sell this stock, don't buy this stock. It's trash. And then everybody goes, "Oh no, that means we got to buy it." The reverse. Um, I just I'm gonna let you guys know. AMC is not meant to go to zero. It's meant to dilute, convert. Reverse stock and dilute split, more. Dilute more. It's a fucking vehicle to drive money out of the market, but to hedge whatever shorts they have. That's their long. And they do it so many ways. It's a hot potato game. And and Terra Credit is and Terra Capital is literally 
licking their fingers. They bought in at 66 cents. Well, that's the FPA. And they have it, they have it at 58 cents. No way. $34 million? Oh. That's it? In hey, and Morantz. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, well, Let's just assume everybody thinks we're going to squeeze because the float's been shorted multiple times over. Mm-hmm. Any conversion and reverse split wipes all that shit out. So if the company does get bought out because everyone's talking, well, if Disney buys it or Amazon buys it, they're oh, going to fucking good. buy it for they're going to buy it for seven or eight dollars a share. That's all you're going to get. Not even that. Not even that. The goodwill's at two point three billion. That's that's the value. That's the buyout value. There's no way. No way. No way. Go read the book again. Go read the definition. When they get evaluated by a third-party auditor, they come out and they give an appraisal for their brand, assets, and value. $2.39497 billion. That's what the company's worth to the insiders. So when they're ready to do a merger, acquisition, m and they do all this bullshit, guess what's going to happen? $3 billion is going to sit on the table and be like, here, take that. And they're going to have to take it because they just sold 20% of their shit for, three, for $25, $250 million. They're ridiculous. They devalued themselves. Nobody understands this. That's why right. I and, he, and he's yeah. out adding more properties again. It's the same shit he was doing before that got him in the boat in the first place. Okay, I love this one. The Vision. The Vision writes, and The Vision, um, I'm happy that you're still writing in all caps. And they gave you a 300-second timeout. Don't worry, that's a badge of honor around here. Everybody gets a 300-second timeout. Um, The Vision writes, I want to say that the only reason GameStop is still in business is the same reason why AMC is. I'm going to tell you something, little man. You really don't watch my videos. GameStop has been a profitable company since 2004, 2005. That's, a, that's as far as back as I could go when I was looking at the, um, the earnings reports. But they've always made a profit. Every year up until 2019. In 2018, they still had a net profit. They had a negative, oh, I'm sorry, 2018, they had a loss of $683, $687 million. But that was because of the impairment charge because the stock got attacked. So they've always made money. Every year, they've always made money. Somebody just decided to attack them because they thought that industry was going to go down. Brick and mortar, video game selling retailer with Amazon and the fact that Fortnite was the number one selling game in the world, they're gone. It didn't happen. It's not going to happen. GameStop's extremely profitable. And you're about to find that out. AMC makes zero dollars. They had nine, I'm sorry, a total of 14 years from 1998 to the next 14 years, 2012. They didn't make a single dollar in profit. A net loss of $551 million in addition to $2.9 billion in debt. 2.9 2.9 or 2.2? Might be 2.2. 2.3 almost. Yeah, 2.292. There it is. That's what I meant, nine. So, <laughs> move forward. The only reason why AMC is still in business is because they're sucking it out of you. Here's my man, Richard. Richard! You're live now? I'm live. Are you re- Can you come on Discord? Yeah, I'll come on right now. Come jump into my Discord. No, yeah. So I did. I sent you a message right now on Discord already. Uh, I'm gonna go on the Discord right. Now. Okay, if you come into my Discord channel, you're gonna go all the way down to the voice chat channel. Okay. And just jump in it. All right, you got it, brother. All right, thank you, brother. Bye. So, so hey, Marantz, you want yes, me to sir. bounce out? No, so you, you can talk to Just hang out. This is my guy. All right. No, this is the ape father. He's a good man. I like the ape, I like the ape father. So a lot of people didn't follow him early on because you know he's a funny guy and he he does some crazy shit on his videos. But when you listen to him talk, you can tell he's a smart guy. Like well, he gets you know, it. He he was in the world of sales, man. He was trying to make it, and, and you know, shit got too real. Let's see where I'm at. I'm I'm waiting for him to jump in. Let's see him, yeah. 
And he's Italian, and I'm part Italian, so I got to like him. Yeah, we'll see. I said he's live. He's going to come in. I have two different. The thing is, I have two ape fathers in my DMs. So I don't know which one's the real one and which one's the fake. That's the problem I have. My, I apologize if you guys can hear my wife doing Peloton in the background. Bro, if she's out there riding a bike, that's on her. <laughs> we live in a loft, and it's it's an open space, and you can hear everything in here. Yeah, I'm trying, trying to find this guy. I'm looking for Richard. You guys seen him? Yeah, Richard, the big strong guy. Eats a lot. I might have to just call him. Let me call him really quick. So Hector G, what do you what do you think is going to happen to AMC? Hold on, sorry guys. He was asking a question in the middle of it. I hung up. I apologize. Let's see if this works. Um, am I connected over here? No, I'm here. Ape father, I'm calling. I'll tell him right now. Let me call him right now. Oh, he didn't pick up. Maybe he's in the channel already. Oh. Ape father, are you there? It says I'm connected. Ape father. No? All right, I hung up again. Let's see if I can get him on, guys. I'm still trying. Oh, where'd he go? I was looking for, um, I, I'm back now, brother. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. I was looking for, um, what's his name? He just came in here. Kevin came in here. Kevin's a good guy. Kevin, what's going on, Kevin? Hey, man. How you doing? You know, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. How you been, man? Good. I wanted to, uh, I text you on Discord a, a couple weeks, uh, a week ago, telling you I wanted to come on and, and tell you my story. Um, just about my, my whole AMC and all that, that shit that happened and just everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so let's start this out. I'm going to give people a background so that they know who you are. Um, is it say what's the name's in here? Ape Father is here. Ape Father. Well, before we do that, Kevin, and I apologize. I have a, That's fine. No I problem. Have a special guest. Um, no problem. Thank you. Yep. The Ape Father is here. Ape, um, my man, Richard, do you want to get on camera? Yeah, how do I do it? Okay, I'm going to do it for you. So okay. we're going to leave this chat. We're going to do it in a different call, okay? I'm going to call right, you probably. direct right now. Sounds good. There, I'm calling him. So there we go. So now I have the real ape father. All right. Did you get there? Did he take the call? Oh, he's got to look at his messages. Does he have me on the screen? Oh, I'll tell him right now. Hey, um, at first, I couldn't stand Richard. them. Hold on, and the Richard. More... Richard, you can hear me, sir? I hear you, but I don't know what's going on okay. as far as I... like the, the yeah, picture of the camera. You. Yeah, no, I'm going to teach you how to do it right now. Okay, so right. what you're going to do is on your on your uh, Discord, there's a place where you can send direct messages. Well, right now I just see a picture of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's another. There's like a site. You got to hit a button. Are you on your phone? Yeah. Okay, good. I got to hit the video button? No, no, you can. Hit the video button for me. Did it turn on? Right. There you go. I got you there. There you go. Okay, so now, um, can you see me or no? No, I just okay, see myself. Good. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my video for you. Um, right here. Turn camera on. There we go. I don't, I don't know if I can because I'm on the other one. Oh, I can't turn on my video. But we have okay, as long as you can see me, I'm good, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make you big, though. I'm gonna make you big because you're already a big guy. All right. <laughs> so this is my guy. This is Richard. He's coming a little grainy. All right. Let me. I'm gonna try to fix it a little bit. So in the chat here, the two guys. They're not gonna talk too much. This is Kevin and, and Calibar, bro. They're my guys. Uh, I've been interviewing AMC uh, investors, and I want to know how they feel about what's going on. You know, everything that's happened in the last couple of weeks, it's been real. It's been it's been crazy. But let me see. Some, I just want to make sure my people can see you. 
Let me see. You know, I jumped at GameStop at 1690. (laughs) You sexy animal. You sexy beast. (laughs) I'm, like, I'm feeling I'm feeling very good about that. Well, you should. You should. You got a long way to go, brother. Let me let me tell oh, you yeah. something. I'm, I'm I'm holding that. I'm not, I'm in this I'm in this for the long term. Listen, right, well, I told people they were laughing at me. Yeah. I said I'm going to make back my AMC losses with GameStop, and everybody says a lunatic. They say it's a dying company. You know, people they download everything. They don't even need to go to GameStop, and now yeah. now they're reading their words. Okay, well check this out. I'm not worried about the stock price. I'm not worried about the price action. So get that out of your head for a minute. Richard, you did a great thing. And I don't want to call you Richard Oldell. I'll call you Ape Father. The Ape Father has done a great thing because fundamentally, GameStop is superior than most investments right now. Um, I feel that way. I'm going to feel that way for a very long time. I feel a dividend is going to come out at some point this year. I'm just letting you know uh, because they're going to turn a profit. And after they do that, I think the S&P 500 announcement will come. And I think that if you're holding this, as long as you've held your Ape and your AMC, you're going to be great. Um, but I want to go on a different question for you. First, give you the proper introduction. Guys, this is the Ape Father. He has been around for a very long time on AMC. He has been a supporter of our channel and the way we hang out here talking about GameStop fundamentals. But I think finally the light turned on as into what the hell is going on at AMC. Uh, let me ask you, brother, just full disclosure. Well, do your intro, man. You got to you gotta yell. You got to do something. Yeah, well, my my, I, I kind of changed it recently because what happens? A lot of people watch me at work. Okay. So when I do that monkey call, I go, what? It's like people literally, they're like my eardrums are about to explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I've been, I've been kind of like changing that, but for you, I'll do it. Okay. The one, the only ape father in the house, baby. What? It's so loud that <laughs> you can't even get it out. I promise you. Hey, oh, I yeah. appreciate you, brother. But let me ask you something, man. Uh, what yeah. happened? What, what changed your mind? Look, if you go back a long, long time ago, like you, because I watched your videos from like a year ago, I actually called out Adam Aaron. They're trying to give that friggin' buffoon Lou credit. Okay. Oh, I yeah. called up Adam. I called out Adam Aaron a year ago. I made a video. You can search for it. It's called AMC is a scam. No, you're now, not gonna you're not gonna get me. You got ten thousand videos, brother. I can't search for it. I just keep no, watching no, the no, next no, one. But it, I'll tell one. you the title of the video. It's okay, yeah, but let yeah, me yeah. just tell you the title. Yes. The title was AMC is a scam. Now I, I lost about a thousand subscribers overnight. It wasn't that I was saying, see, people thought I was turning against my retail brothers and sisters. I'll never turn against retail. Okay, right. but who I was turning against was Adam Aaron and the uh, AMC insiders. I said to myself, why is this guy selling all this stock? He's already a multimillionaire. He doesn't, he's like, oh, it's for my retirement. Get that fatty here with this shit. So right off the bat, something smelled rotten in Denmark, you know? So then I started doing more due diligence. This guy sold a bunch of times. He sold when we were ready to like, you know, friggin' Moaz at, at the top. Then I think he sold at 40, then he sold at 30. He sold a total of like $50 million worth of AMC. So I was like, this guy's this guy's a piece of shit. Then I find out he's making like $19 million a year. Yeah. And what the $19 million a year? So I'm like, this guy is just total. But now here's where it gets like juicy. Okay. Here's where it gets juicy. Like you said, he uses our money to start ape. Okay. And then Antera is shorting this thing down to like the oblivion. Then he gives them that equity exchange, whatever it is, 100 million shares at like 66 cents. What the? I did their short at AMC at the same time. And now this guy comes out, oh, I want to do a 10, one for 10, whatever it's 10 for one reverse stock split. You want to take away 90% of our, our shares? That was it. I, I said, no, nah. I, I completely flipped out. I've been making videos constantly about it. Calling him Adam the Scumbag Aaron. Nah, nah. Hey, you're doing good. You're and doing there's good. still people calling him the Silverback. They're still oh, yeah. calling this guy the Silverback. Go ahead. No, that's crazy. That's crazy. I don't mind you talking, bro. I talk all damn day. I love it. No, no, go ahead. Here, here's the crazy part for me, okay? Like, I know where you're coming from. You know I was disgruntled. But uh, have you watched my latest video? You probably have. You make so many damn videos. You're working, brother. I know you're working, okay? And I commend I watch you. a lot of your stuff. No, but congratulations on 6 million views, man. I saw you. You broke the threshold, and I was so happy for you. Um, Thank you. Because we're Thank all you. we're all You're doing good, too. I'm try, Man, I try. I don't have as much traction, but I do my best. And it's tough when you're suppressed, when you when you give out the real info. People are, you know, I don't I don't have the hype. I'm not doing the hype shit. So, But here's, here's the crazy part. 
uh, I started reading into AMC and the origins of it. Did you read into that? Did you see that video? That particular one I didn't see, okay, but I'll I'm watch it right. You, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you some links. I'll just DM them to you. I'll text you them. Um, you need to watch, man. The first shareholder of AMC movie theaters was Citadel Securities. <laughs> the very first, the day they launched, the day they went public, the day they went public, they they were two point two billion dollars in debt already. They only sold enough shares for three hundred million dollars. They weren't trying to go become positive. What they're trying to do is milk this company for every damn dollar they have. And I show the whole run. I explain it all and how the partnerships work. And as you get through it all, you realize they use this as a vehicle for their short. They knew that they were right. exposed. And now it's the hedge to GameStop. And this is how I've, how I've painted it. But I promise you, you're going to see AMC go up some, right? And people are going to be like, oh, you sold and it went up and look at it. It's up at $9. It's up at $8. It's up at $7. Whatever it gets to. Whatever the reverse stock split gets it to. Whatever they, Because it's a, it's a yes vote, by the way. It's already done. Your, your votes don't matter. It's like the election. If you want, they want more votes, they'll just go make more. They can make synthetic votes at this point. But crazy. I, I, it is crazy. But the players are all the same. There's There are what we call... You know, if you the, the common denominator between everything is distressed credit investors and Adam Aaron. Those, those that's the common denominator for this stock. And so how could I ever invest in a company he's touching? I could never. So when I look at HYMC or I look at this one, I look at that one, you you know damn well, Rich, before we ever started doing videos, before we ever started making anything, you and I we we had an interview, we did a video, and what did we say? What I say? I said all this stuff, but the split hadn't happened and Terra hadn't happened. You know, the, the ape equity hadn't happened. The, the insiders were selling off at the time, but most of the stuff that's happening today hadn't happened yet. And yet you thought it was already, I thought it was already crazy. Then it's even more crazy now. It's more outlandish. How could anybody not understand what's going on? But um, as far as Lou getting the credit, Lou's a piece of shit. Every oh. AMC YouTuber that quits this is why I like that you're here because you actually make the video. You go, hey, Marantz was right. We all need to go over here. And I was like, holy shit. I was surprised, right? I was like, fucking, hey, father. Just See, said I can't. Thing. This is the thing with me. I'm sorry to cut. Like, no, I can't. Okay. I'm not going to sell my AMC. I mean, I'm down like over 90% at this point. It's freaking wow. insane. I'm down a lot of effing money. But you have to understand, look, I'm okay financially. See, people right. don't understand it only represents around 10% of my net worth. Thank God. I'm in a good position. I have a house. I got cash. I got gold. Right. I'm okay. So, yeah. so this was a gamble that I could afford to take, but the, this is the thing. I still believe, and it's the same thing I believe in GameStop, that there are synthetic shares. Like, you know, there's a, a company called Share Intel. Did you, you, you hear of this? Share Intel? No, I'm listening. Supposedly, because Wes, Wes Christian mentioned this, Oh, this God. company that actually has the technology to locate the phantom shares, the synthetic shares. Mm. So I'm pressing every single AMC ape to pressure Adam Aaron. Be like, you mother effing piece of garbage. We got you $2 billion in the vault. You sold $50 million worth of AMC. You friggin' made, I don't know, $19 million. It got a bonus in 2022. It got, it got a big bonus. He's like, now he's saying, freeze my pay. In other words... People, people misunderstood. They thought he didn't want a paycheck. No, he still wants his comp. He still wants his 19 million. But all these AMC executives are getting increases. Can you believe this? They're getting increases. So he was like, no, no, no. I don't want the increase. Fuck you. This guy, excuse my life, was a piece of shit, man. So what I said was, make this mother effer pay. It's not about the money. Look, obviously we could pay it. It's like $50,000 for this share intel. But let him do it. And you know what? If it turns out, let's say that there are synthetics, he's going to be in the clear now. You know what I mean? He's going to be in the clear because he's going to say, you know what? I, I um, hired Share Intel. I cooperated. OK, and now I found this out. I'm in shock, just like everybody else is in shock. But he's not doing that. And the reason why he's not doing that is because I think. He knows there are synthetics. I think that he knows that, that I think he might even be in friggin' cahoots. OK, with all the I mean, like I have to say alleged, obviously, to protect myself legally. But I think he's probably because everything he's doing, as you're saying, is helping the short sellers. 
He's it's like everything he's doing. Hey, I'll just tell you right now. He's connected in the deepest roots of it all, and I'm not going to say allegedly because I've seen it. He has 10 years under Apollo. Apollo was the original private equity owner of AMC movie theaters. They planted him there. Apollo was partnered with um, – God, God, I had it all yesterday. <laughs> what is the bank I'm looking for? The the crooked, most crooked bank of them all. Mer, not Merrill Lynch, the other one. Um yeah, I can't even think right now with a J. <laughs> J.P. Morgan, hello. J.P. Morgan. Yeah, J.P. Morgan, so okay. J. Morgan, Credit Suisse, uh, Bank of America, Apollo, um, oh, Spectrum, all these guys. They were all in on this because they were either the underwriters when they first came out and they were already negative. They had negative earnings for the for the last 25 years. Like, I don't even think people understand that part. So from 1998... To 2012, they did not make one dollar of profit any year, any quarter, nothing. They were already, they were already the vehicle I, to drive. The can I say again. something to you yeah, yeah, without you getting mad at me? Well, I can't get mad. I don't want you to get mad at me. I don't want you because I love you. You know I love you, Barrett. Okay. Yes, sir. This is the. A lot of apes give you a hard time. I'm mean, meaning the AMC apes. And and the reason that they're giving you a hard time, I want you to know I hate them for it, and I'm going to tell you the reason why. None of us came into AMC, just so that you know, for its fundamentals. No one, okay? <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I remember you gave me that analogy. I still, yeah. to this day, use it. Like, That's if you good. go into, like, AC's and, and, and yeah, you yeah. want to get the bonus package, remember? That With the cologne and the creeps. That means I spoke to your heart. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... The thing was, we only went into AMC. We didn't want the bonus package. We only went in for the one thing, for the Moax. Yeah. And what's happening now is that because Adam Aaron, this is what I'm trying to explain to these dumbbells, because they don't listen to me, these people. Because Adam Aaron is obviously not on retail side, and he's doing everything to friggin' deceive us and hurt us, okay, and he's working with these short sellers. I mean, I know you you, you don't, you got balls. I have to say a ledge, but I know it and you know it. But the thing is, He's preventing the effing Moas. He's preventing it. So even if there are synthetics, even if there are synthetics, how are we going to win when the CEO of the company is against us? So like you said, he needs to be fired. He needs to step down. Someone needs to be in that seat who's for retail. That's okay. the thing. And, okay, okay. and and you know what? We need to find out if the synthetics exist. And other than that, you're right. Listen, if you if we're just talking about AMC fundamentally, well, if it sucks. It well, sucks balls. I want you to Leading listen money. To no, okay. but, but this is what you need to listen to. There is a thing, you know, when a company goes public, they release a prospectus. Okay. Right. It tells it tells the public what the company's, you know, the, the fundamentals are. And then it also has like what the rules are. And there's the bylaws, okay? Thing called the bylaws. If you've never seen the bylaws for AMC, you're going to find out the hard way as it's called the anti-takeover rules. They actually have security in place on the anti-takeover portion. It's on page 30 of the prospectus. I, I study this stuff. And it clearly states every move that they're currently doing. That means that the takeover was retail, not shorts. It was retail. And they're doing all of the moves to stop retail from having ownership and, and taking over this company. When he wants to dilute, it's not that he wants to dilute to survive for the benefit of shareholders. They want to dilute for the benefit of the shorts and the insiders. They don't care about shareholders because AMC is actually listed as a company and I might even read this to you, Richard, because you need to know this stuff. I know you say you're invested for all the right reasons, like for the squeeze, but this is why it'll never happen, right? And um, and you're still here. Don't worry. You might Your picture might not be up, but you're still here. I want to show people this because this is like, it rocked my world, dude. Um, we're going to go to it. And it, what, it, what it says, and I don't want to paraphrase, so I want to get it correctly. Am I on the right one? Am I an AMC? Am I an AMC? I'm an AMC, right? Okay, cool. It's usually all lit up for me already. Um, they filed in 2013, 2013. It's going to be perspective. I got to find it real quick. Here it is. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. So when we go here, I'm going to read a quote to you that's going to rock your world. Um, and we're going to go down. We're going to go down. We're going to go down. And you're going to find out that this company, it's, on the, it's under risk. It's right over here at 20. So risk factors. 
Okay. And check out this definition. Well, first, as of September 30th, yes, we knew they were 2.2 billion. But there is a, a, a uh, phrase that I had never heard before. Okay. And I want you to know it because when you invest the next time and the next time and the next time, I want you to see it. I think it's on 27 or 28, page 28. It says, our controlling shareholders. Here we go. We have elected to take advantage of the controlled company exemption to the corporate governance rules for publicly listed companies. Now, the way this works is that means that common A stock shareholders are less attractive to some investors and otherwise harm the stock price. They will do nothing for the benefit of common A stockholders. So when he says that they work for you, I work for you. I work for common A stockholders. It is not true. Our controlling shareholders' interests may not be aligned with our public shareholders' interests. So it's all about who controls the majority of this business. They're a controlled company. And I quote, okay, um, to better qualify to uh, control company under the corporate governance rules for publicly listed companies, we are not required to have a majority of our board of directors be independent, nor are we required to have a compensation committee or an independent nomination function. So what does that mean? That means that Adam Aaron today can name whoever he wants to the board of directors. They can implement these rules that are called the anti-takeover rules, anti-takeover protections, and the anti-takeover protections are, re are restated bylaws, and the corporate governance of it is this. They can assign anyone they want to the board at any time. They can remove and or limit the removal of directors. They can go ahead and dilute. And the ability for our board of directors to designate one or more series of preferred stock and issued shares of preferred stock without shareholder approval. I want to read that because here's why. That's what APE was. You're doing a vote right now. Everyone's talking about the vote. Yes or no? Yes or no? Are we going to convert? What they don't understand is that even if you say no, okay, he can still dilute ape. He can just go get more votes. And he's going to sell those bad boys off and he'll get the yes vote he's looking for down the road. Does not matter how you do it. It's already done. It wouldn't be up for a vote if they didn't want yes. That was the point. And those rules all still exist to this day. It's in the bylaws and they're called the anti-takeover protections. They're doing them so that no one can take Adam Aaron off the board. So that no one can tell you what to do with this company because it's not your company. It's not the common A stockholders company. When he says, I'm, a, I'm the CEO, I work for you. Bullshit. He works for the common B stockholders. He works for everyone else that has leverage on this company. He works for the bondholders. He is a snake. There, I said my part. How you doing, brother? <laughs> no, I agree with you 100%. The thing, I, I'm at a point, you have to just try to understand where I'm at right yes, now. I and I, and I kind of understand to a certain degree where I would say majority of the ABC apes are at, but I'm not, see, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of them are delusional and they're not <laughs> accepting the, the reality. And I think what happened to a lot of them now is they're switching from the short squeeze play that they were once a part of to now fundamentals like Phil for real has a perfect example. Oh, this guy, he, Adam Aaron sat next to him in a the movie theater. He had to excuse himself to go wipe his chin. He had to go to the bathroom and, and the guy's on Adam Aaron's balls. And it's like, that's it. Now, now he's just 100% a like, I like to call this a, a company man. So that's it. Everything now is about Spider-Man. It's going to be the biggest movie next year. This and that. So, <laughs> That's what happened to them. You follow me? They're yeah. now, they're now like what Adam, whatever Adam Aaron tells them to do. Like if Adam Aaron tells them, "Look, I need your friggin' wife." Like kind of like a David Koresh situation. It's like almost like a cult. You know, I need your wife. You can't have sex with your wife anymore. Only I can have sex with your wife. They will agree. I need your dog. I need your house. I need this. I need that. So unfortunately, a lot of apes unfortunately fell into that. I'm not one of them, okay? Right. So I, my eyes are completely wide open what a scumbag piece of garbage trash Adam Aaron is. But what I'm trying to do is figure out some sort of a way to criminally, you know, on a criminal level, get these mother effers, okay? Because that's to me where AMC really is at this point. I feel there's criminal activity and there's got to be something we could do. Again, I have to say alleged. Don't get mad. <laughs> I know you know it, but I got to say. But the thing is, we got to figure out a way 
to prove it. See, see, everything you're saying is great, but you know what? It also sounds like it's legalities, like what you were saying. It's just like, in other words, this was all the bylaws. This was all disclosed. I don't know if that constitutes criminal activity. What would constitute, you know, like that's just we we should have done our due diligence. In other words, we're the idiots that we didn't, you know, do our due diligence. I've been saying that from the beginning. I say all AMC investors are the most ignorant investors I've ever seen in my life because they don't read. Right. And I'm not right, saying you're ignorant. I'm not trying to call you out because you told me why you invested. You told me what happened. You were manipulated. But a lot of people are being manipulated because they don't read. But if you read what Adam Aaron tells you, he literally says it to you. He's like, I'm going to dilute. I'm going to sell. I need to do this or we're going to file for bankruptcy. We're not doing good. He tells people this and then all they see is the popcorn and credit cards and movies. And it's like, what the hell is going on in this world? I wanted to boycott AMC. I, I was I mean, putting I out do. videos telling... Yeah, I was telling everybody there's no reason to put money in this while they have a anymore. Just go, I, I made a video going to Rigo. I should. <laughs> but you see, the thing is, the problem with the AMC apes is, I'm telling you, Morantz, listen to me. You could talk into your blue in your face. I could talk into our blue in my face. It's like a cult now. They, they're just, you want to know what it is. You ever, were you ever in a situation where maybe it's a bad relationship or it was a bad situation? You knew it was bad, but you were so ass deep in it. Like maybe yeah, you just couldn't get out. Yeah, I know all about it. Yeah, I know. I right. know. That's yeah. what's happening. They're just so ass deep in AMC that that's it. You could tell them anything. You could tell them that Adam Aaron had sex with their mother, and they would still be like, "Look, I'm holding. I'm holding." And that's it. <laughs> you understand? There's nothing you could say. So the the only hope that I see at this point is just one thing: we have to figure out a way to find criminal activity. Meaning, okay. if there's like like again, the share and tell. The problem is that. These friggin' apes are not putting pressure on him. See, see, this is what's getting me frustrated. It's like, like the, here's an example: the guy named Marie. He's doing yep. a big protest now on the 27th and the 28th. Hey, calm down with the word big. Calm down with the word <laughs> What was that? He's not doing a big protest. He's doing a right, right, right. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, when I say big, let me, yeah. let me, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. I'm not talking big in the sense of the the amount of people that's going right. to show it. But it might be very few people. But big in that he's at least trying to make some sort of an effort to, in some way, shape, or form, just try to get the criminal activity exposed. And and that's that's all I can do at this point, uh, Morantz, is that, look, look, it's a dying company. Adam Barrett is a scumbag. He's done everything in his power to deceive us, to hurt us, to screw us, to destroy us. So the only thing I have left, because I'm down, I'm down like over 90%. The only thing I have left is I'm trying to push the narrative, expose the criminal activity. Okay. That's it. And I think if somehow that could happen, we might have either some sort. West Christian, I don't know if you know this, Morantz, confirmed he felt that there are. He sent a letter to Adam Aaron, West Christian, the the the, the prestigious Employee. attorney. Yeah, right. Prestigious. He feels he feels that Adam Aaron is lying. He said it in his letter, and he says there are. He, he calls them phantom shares, or referring to synthetics. He feels there was a tremendous amount of phantom shares in AMC. And I'm just saying that that's what we need to do. That, that, that should, you want to know something, Morantz? That should be the only concern of the AMC apes at this point. And I tell them every day, you got to put pressure on Adam Aaron. You got to put pressure on the SEC. You got everybody. But I don't know. You want to know what it is. I think everybody's afraid. You want me to tell you, they think in January 6th, they think of the friggin' the, the capital rights. You know what it is at the end of the day? People are investors. They don't have balls. They don't want to get arrested. They don't want to get shot. You know, they don't want to get hurt. They don't want to go up against the government. They don't want to go up. So, so you know, it's like we live in a world of puppets. See, I, I hate that because I'm I try to one. be a leader. You're a leader. One. Yes. Right. You're a leader and I'm a leader, but but we're filled with puppets. They don't have effing balls. I tell them you got to fight. Now, what the Marine is doing, in my opinion, God bless them. I support them. But I don't like you said, I don't think it's going to make any difference. It's probably 10 people might show up at the end of the day to go out for some beers. They, they may get a couple of hamburgers. Nothing really is going to come. I support him what he's doing, because I think at least it's an effort. But the main thing is you need to establish criminal activity and that's all i got left that's it i'll shut up now that's no, all i got good. left with a you're good so okay. I got uh, nothing else. i'll speak on the marine part here's my thing with the marine okay um the individual is not 
a leader, as in he's not moving. He doesn't move me. Okay. It takes a real alpha male to be out here or someone with much more intellect than I, where I can be like, okay, well, there's there. That's something that makes sense to just go stand out in front of a building that does nothing for me. Um, because there's no point to it. It's like, you're going to show up somewhere. It's like going somewhere without a plan. You ever gone to a restaurant and not have reservations and then you show up, you're outside and you're like, well, we wanted to eat here, but, um, they're not moving the table for me. So, uh, we'll go, we'll go get something else. And that's basically what these guys are going to go do. They're going to go show up and they don't have reservations. They always pull out a table for me. Now I'm just going to go. (laughs) um, And I don't doubt it, but, but the truth is like, for me, I, I fight, I fight every day. I fight the truth. Every day, right here, with with one more guy. So when you say those guys, there's these guys are all idiots. I, I got fifty five hundred people that are smart as fuck, that are great. Excuse my language. I apologize, Ruben. I apologize. One of my moderators, uh, one of my producers, my guy. He runs the whole thing. Uh, I can't cuss right now. So and I, not that I want to cuss anyway, but um, I'm just telling you right now. There's fifty five hundred of us over here looking at people saying, "Why don't you see what we see?" And I will tell you this. Richard, I, I promise you, sir, I will never stop. I will never stop exposing what he does. I will always keep making the videos, keep telling the info, <laughs> because for that one AMC here that you think is in that cult, I've, I've managed to go ahead and tell these guys the truth, and they come over. I've got one in the chat right now named Callie Bear. He's here with us right now talking. There's another one that we're going to interview, Kevin, in a minute. The only reason why I haven't talked to these guys because I'm talking to you, but... I've, I'm talking to AMC investors every day, and they all tell me the same thing. I wish I would have found you earlier. You were right, and they're so wrong. And all I need is those guys to keep happening every day, and it's like dominoes. And eventually, it'll get rolling in the right direction. And eventually, Ape Father, my man, you're going to be on the show with me, and we're going to be here, and we're going to have 40,000 people all rolling in one direction. And they're going to understand what the hell it was. And it's not that I want you to go buy GameStop. It's not that I want you to sell AMC. No. How about you just not get involved where distressed credit investors are begging you to buy their stock? HYMC. AMC. You want to know, you want to know what it is? You want to know what it is, Morant? Maybe you could understand this. Yes, sir. I'm so sick and tired. Now, I understand that maybe I have the impossible dream. But you look at this piece of shit, Ken Griffin. You know, the, the, this guy's taking 10,000 Citadel employees, you know, to Disney World, you know, he's paid every, all expenses paid. He's building the largest building in Manhattan. Um, you know, he made, I think, close to $10 billion in profits for his investors. You know, they, they moved to Miami. He's got the big skyscraper, record-breaking house he just bought on the waterfront. Uh, it, it, the thing is, there's a part of me that just doesn't, I, I can't accept these, mother- I know they're cheating. Yeah. I know they're cheating and I know that they're all part of this circle. It's this circle. It's one percent, you know, that are out to just destroy retail. And the thing is, it's so easy to give up. Like, in other words, I could sell like as I could just sell. I could wipe my chin. I could say I'm out. That's the end of it. But I'm so balls deep into this now. I don't even give a shit if I lose every single dollar of my investment. I'm never going to sell. But the thing is, <laughs> it's not just about holding. It's about we have to go in different direction. And that's what I'm trying to make the apes understand. See, they still have this mentality. All I want to do is buy and hold, buy and hold. No, we're past that shit. We're past, you need to go visit out of there in some way. You understand? You got to pull like a Tony Soprano. No, again, I have to say I'm joking, alleged. But you you got to do something dramatic. You got to do something dramatic now. And that's what the apes are not doing. They're not doing it. They're just a buying and holding, buying and not. It's just, well, I'm going to make so a that's video. Where I'm at. I'm going to make a video. This guy's the best advice if you have to buy Jimmy. Oh, um, the, there's this guy in the chat. He, they're really cool. Callie Bear wants to ask don't you a do question. Don't do them, please. No, no, it's okay. Callie Bear wants to ask you a question, but before I let him ask you a question, I just want to make you aware. I'm going to be making a video after my live stream today called The Diamond Parachute, and I want you to watch that. There you go. I will. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Callie. You got a question? Yeah, so I'm 100% with what a father's saying, like the crime part needs to get exposed. And I think share Intel could do that. But Adam Aaron's not going to do that. Because if he exposes the crime, he exposes himself because he's part of it. So he's not it's not going to happen. Well, then, then we got to go to plan B, which would be the first thing is to boycott AMC, every single AMC a this is what I told them to do, they should make a video Going to a competitor, I don't care what it is, Regal, 
Okay. And they should make a, a video. They bought tickets. They're buying popcorn, concessions, everything. But it can't just be one person who makes this video. It's got to be like a million people. And But see, this is the thing I don't understand. I don't understand why these apes are not enraged. I don't understand why they not why they don't want to do it. And that's what's driving. That's why I want to take them and friggin' strangle them. They're like, I want to slap some friggin' sense into Like, what's a mess with you? It's like, do you like being Marcellus Wallace? Do you like Zed behind you, pounding you? Like, I just don't, it's like, it seems like, like, once again, I don't want to reiterate what I'm saying. It's like, they're, they're afraid. They're scared. They don't want to go up against Adam Aaron. They don't want to go up against the government. They don't want to, they don't want to fight. And I'm trying to get them to fight. So if Adam Aaron doesn't do it, there has to be what's called a consequence now. You follow me? There has to be a consequence. Okay. You, you don't want to do it. You don't want to hire share Intel boycott AMC or something. And if that's not enough, just something, something has to be done. Yeah, but you see, I'm trying to be that voice, but he they checked, don't want to listen. Checkmated us. And I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you guys a quick story. So when I was young in my twenties, I used to work for PepsiCo and I was a Pepsi driver. We were part of the Teamsters union and we wanted a raise. So we told the company we were going to go on strike if we didn't get our raise. And the union, quote unquote, was all behind us and supporting us in our action. And the day we were supposed to vote to strike or not, the union bosses came out in front of everyone and said, just so you guys know, your union pay is only going to be $200 a week and blah, blah, blah. And they're going to bring in scabs to run your trucks. So everyone got scared in that moment and said, you know what? Fuck it. I can't live on 200 bucks a week. Let's go back to work. And when we showed up that morning, because we were supposed to vote before our shift started, we went back to Pepsi to get in our trucks, and they didn't have anybody there to fucking run our trucks. They already knew that we were not going to strike. Yeah. Because yeah, the union moved before you. And the unions are strong. But you know what's crazy? I got something for you, um, Ape Father. And uh, not to make your comment trivial there, Cali Bear, um, I'm just, I'm in a train of thought right now. You know what keeps people in it and what keeps Adam Aaron going? It is the AMC YouTubers that keep pushing out this narrative that, you know, the Phil Go Pulse moving and or changing, you know, going fundamental now. We've always said fundamentals. We've always said dilution is good. Those guys are the ones that keep the hope alive. And I think they're the ones who should be prosecuted. I think they're the ones that should be held at the stake of the knife, not Adam Aaron, because Adam Aaron is literally a criminal doing what criminals do, you know, but it's the individuals that are helping that are pushing them there. So um, I, I think they're just as guilty. There's a lot of AMC YouTubers that I agree with you 100 um, percent, you know, like this boss blood guy is a friggin piece of shit. You know, you got finance news, you got uh, New York Angelo. Like, New York Angelo, it doesn't make a difference. Like, Adam Aaron could be caught in bed with a, with a, with a friggin' horse, okay? And he would still say that AMC is going to have the Boaz. Like, it doesn't matter what happens. Every And then he just keeps playing the, the, the good cop, bad cop. Good cop, bad cop. One minute AMC's got the Boaz, next minute AMC's going bankrupt. And, and, and it's like, I feel like their audience is brainless. Because, like, how do you... How do you listen to someone who's saying one minute it's going bankrupt and say the next minute it's going to go to 20,000 a share, right? So I agree with you 100%. But the thing is, I also believe, this is what I also believe, that, and I believe this with GameStop, not just with AMC, I believe this with GameStop, that I believe, like, look, January 20th, okay, if Robin Hood did not shut off the buy button, I believe GameStop probably could have went to like Pluto. I mean, forget about where it could have went. Okay. So there's always something. There's always a force. This is what I'm trying to make everybody understand. There's a force that's even if there is something real, let's just, I know I, I'm not talking about fundamentally. I'm, not, I'm talking about the right. short sellers potentially doing illegal naked shorting allegedly or doing something to keep these companies down and then they just sit back with their feet up until obviously everybody gives up the company goes bankrupt and then you know the, the, the synthetics disappear they're all good they win but the thing is that's what everybody needs to be focused on right now because we can't win it any other way in my opinion i'm going to say this and i'm the ape father saying this and i don't think we could win because you're right between adam aaron 
Okay, between everything you just said, between the, the government, between everyone's against us, there's no way we could win. It's over. The company will probably just end up in bankruptcy. He's going to dilute and dilute and dilute and dilute until he takes every blood out of us. And we, yes. So, but the thing is, what can I do, Morantz? What can I sell? Like, yeah, what I mean, can I do at this point? You could. I mean, I don't tell at, you at a ninety percent loss. Yeah, but that's already lost. You already lost it all. Do you want to lose it? I mean, you want to go to zero? Is there pride in that? Die, falling on your own sword? I don't. I'm not for. You want to know what it is? I would rather, like, you know, like the movie Titanic, right? I would rather go. I know you're gonna think I'm a psychopath, but I would rather go down with the ship. That's yeah, the thing. I'd rather you guys are rather like, than to save myself. Band. You guys are the band playing the shit. You and the marine, and I don't get right. it. I'm I'm fucking Jack. I'm jumping off that bitch, and I'm going to tell somebody I love you, and I'm going <laughs> to well, give Jack, you a diamond. She said she wasn't going to let Jack go, no, but she no, did. let me tell you something. I'm Jack, because I'm going to give you a diamond. I'm going to tell you, hold on to this shit, and you're going to hold it for the next 80 years, and you're going to think about me every day. You're, you're going to think about me every day. I'm telling you right now, you are, Ape. You're going to tell you. But don't you right think now. they window, Moritz? Moritz, if we sell, let's be. What did we really accomplish? Yeah, and again, I don't want you to get mad at me because I really have the highest respect for you, brother, no, and I, I love you. you. Sir, but, but let me tell you, no, no, yeah. you ask, you ask, and I'm going to tell you. How much money do you have to lose before you learn your lesson? It is called tuition. But when, no, but when you say when you say learn your lesson, see, I think I think what's happening with you, and you're really going to hate me now, okay? No, is that you're mi you're mixing you're mixing up two different worlds. Sure, the I'll first listen. world is, let me tell you what it is. Just hear me out. The first world is AMC as a company fundamentally sucks right out of his balls. Adam Aaron, most corrupt mother effer, doesn't give a shit about retail, wants to delude us to the oblivion. Now there's another world. And that's where the, the gentleman I was just speaking to is what's called the world of corruption, criminal activity. Now that's what's holding me on. That's what's holding me on is because I know that world exists and we have to figure out a way to expose it. And I also feel it's happening in GameStop. Okay. It's not just a. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate on this. Cause I'm going to tell you like, this is what I mean. You can either watch your money go to zero because they're going to file for bankruptcy. They're going to get the hell out of here, or they're going to keep diluting second out of you. You're going to be left with 1% of your investment, or you can walk away with 10 knowing that it cost you 90 the tuition that it costs to understand what the hell it is. Okay. But it's nothing. It's not about the short. It's about the education of investing. You might never touch the market again after this, or you might only go into things that you read about, you do homework on, and that's what it taught you. But to go all the way to zero, the Thelma and Louise, this shit, there's no pride in that. There was no sequel to Thelma and Louise. That movie's over. So I'm just telling you, there are two ways to look at it. And for me personally, I can survive another day and I can come back stronger than ever. I can buy something that I love, something that I did my homework on, due diligence on. But the money that's out there, it's not lost. It's not a lost cause. You mentally might be shook. But I tell you, what's going to really kick your ass, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you might lose everything or you might not. Or you might sell tomorrow and then AMC take off. And then you're like, fuck, I, I, I lost. And I could have got this and I could have made half my money back or whatever. You're still not understanding you're not understanding. Let me ask you, let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Why is it that I'm just curious about this because maybe you could educate me because sure. you're a very small man. When GameStop goes up, AMC follows all the time. This has been yeah. going on for two years. God, you should watch my videos. Okay. <laughs> no, but 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 if, if everything but just I want you to think about this for a second, right? Yeah. If everything you're saying is true, okay, yeah. and AMC has got all this negativity and all this shit. It would have nothing to do with GameStop. In other words, Game, GameStop would go up and AMC would go down and that would be the, that would be all she wrote, right? But I have noticed over two years, every single time GameStop has even a small run, AMC follows. Now, that to me, and I'm going to just give you my opinion and then I can hear your opinion. Sure. My opinion is that's the corruption that's the criminal side of everything happening that's not see because think about it, is it just a coincidence is it just magic like effing david Cop Cop copperfield when he made the friggin uh statue of liberty disappear no it's not magic okay why is it that they go up together because that's the inside track that's something going on that has nothing to do with retail it has nothing to do with buying pressure it has nothing to do with anybody except for the corruption and who knows what's going on with that 
Who knows Richard, what's going on with that? Richard, How do you explain Richard, it otherwise? I, I did earlier today, but um, because I get asked that question a lot. I already explained it on my live stream, but you're here now. So I'm going to explain it again. I love you, brother. You're a very smart man. You've been on this planet a lot longer than other people. That infinitely gives you the experience over other people. But let me explain something to you. If I want something to look like it runs the same, what do I do? I make it run the same. If I wanted you to believe that they move the same, I'm going to make them move the same. No matter the volume, no matter the price action, no matter the suppression, no matter the good news or the bad news, they run the same. And why? Because there are companies out here that I've explained about AMC from the origins of it, from the beginning of time, that distressed credit funds, Citadel, right? 0.72, SAC Capital, other short hedge funds have been in these things from the beginning. And what they are is they're the break in case shit happens. So when shit does happen and you need a vehicle to offset your short, this is your long. And what do you do with your long? You deploy your long onto everybody. You can't see my screen right now. It's just me and you talking. I'm going to tell you something. I have shown the chart. And if you remember the chart, remember it well. When GameStop ran in January, everybody thinks, oh my God, it ran because they stopped the buy button or whatever it may be. No, they stopped everything. They halted everything. They didn't know what the hell to halt. They didn't know what was going on. But the convertible bonds that were exercised by Mudrick that same day on a run-up of what? Up to 15 bucks? That's a MOAS to AMC? No. GameStop and AMC started at the same spot. GameStop and AMC were both $2 at one point in 2020. One is infinitely higher than the other. And here is why. Because in March, March 10th of 2021, GameStop went up to $347 a share. And AMC didn't move a dollar. Do you know why they didn't move a dollar? Because they don't move the same. And when GameStop came crashing down to 171, bounced back up to 266 that day, all on the same day, that told you exactly what you needed to know. They needed to go break the glass. And here it was. They put a media blitz. They put Adam Aaron in front of you on Twitter. He had not tweeted in over a year and a half, and he finally tweeted. And his first tweet out of Twitter jail of a year and a half of nothing was, Hi, guys. I'm going to be on Trade Trades channel. Now you have new YouTubers put in front of you all month long, all the way through, from March all the way through until June. They have new YouTubers, everybody getting crazy views, pushed up through bots. I don't care if it's Chinese bots, local bots, whatever it be. Everybody's getting their channels pushed. And YouTube's trying to figure it out. YouTube's shutting people's channels down. Oh, yeah. TMI got shut down. Ape Andy got shut down. Not Ape Andy. Uh, uh, Adam No Money got shut down. Trey got shut down numerous times. Matt Kors channel got shut down numerous times because bots were infiltrating it and pumping up views. And the reason why they're getting shut down is because they have to pay out money. Google has to pay out money to these damn guys. And they're like, hey, wait a minute. There's bots in there. You're not really getting so they would clear up the mess. No, it's not us. It's not us. You don't know you're in somebody's pocket till you are. So when all these guys show up on the scene, go look at the chart. Go look at the chart. And you're going to see, Richard, that these two stocks took off together in June, not in March. Not in March. And March gave it away. March gave it away because they didn't go up together. One is hedging the other. And when AMC... When it took off, it halted June 2nd. It halted. And when it halted at $64, you saw GameStop was running even, took the fuck, oh, excuse my language, took off, went from 270 all the way up to 330 I mean, instantly, within about an hour or two, whatever it may be. But because it, it halted, GameStop took off. When you don't have the hedge, when you don't have the peg, it's over. And it's going to be over. I don't care how long they stretch this thing out. They have forever because they keep diluting, diluting, diluting. But they convinced the world between cleavage, between all the demos that they attract with every single YouTuber that they have, they have all their bases covered. It is the greatest psyops thing in history. I sound like a conspiracy theorist guy, right? Until I'm not. Until I'm not. Because everything that's happened, I can explain. Everything that has happened, we've predicted. And I'm telling you, GameStop Fundamentals, a GameStop split, a GameStop dividend, a GameStop introduction to S&P 500, and a profitable business. 
That is the truth. And that is why I, I, don't, I don't buy into they run together. They run together because they run together. Let I agree with I agree with like 99% of everything you're saying, okay? I hope. But it's just that I do. But the only thing is there's just there's a small little percentage of what I disagree with. And I, I don't want you to hate me. It's just I don't that hate you, man. I don't hate you. There's a factor, there's a factor that's like the X factor, okay? Sure. And the X the X factor is the hedge funds, the corruption, who's involved in that circle. I know it, it again. I'll say it's alleged, but it could be Adam Barrett, it could be Gary Gensler, it could be the Department of Justice, it could be the media. But I believe there's a little drop more. Look, if you just take away the fact that you say AMC is a terrible fundamental company, you're right about that. Adam Barron doesn't give a shit about us. All the decisions are already made to screw us and, and f us. I'm with you. One, not 100 percent. One uh, uh, infinity. I'm with you. But there's something else going on. And I also believe, I also believe it's going on with GameStop. And I, I'm just, that's it. Look, I'm in a position. Let me just explain it to you. you. I have a house. I have a house. I have gold. I have cash. I have GameStop. I own GameStop. And I'm already making back a lot of my losses. Okay. I'm making back money. So I could afford just me to hold AMC, but I'm not holding, just understand why. I'm not holding it for any other reason except one. I have a determination right now to expose the corruption. I have a determination to, honestly, I want Adam Aaron investigated. I want him fired. I want to see if we can get share intel. I want to see if we can do, that's it. Because look, I can't in good conscience, I understand what you're saying, bro, but I just can't in good conscience just, you know, wipe my chin, sell, take a friggin' loss of 90% of my friggin' capital. And to me, I, I just can't do it. I would I would rather go down with the Titanic, like you said, be the, the musicians, keep playing, but this is the thing. I wanna fight. I wanna fight, but here's what the problem I have is. A lot of the apes, my ape brothers and ape sisters, they're not fighters. They're letting us go down, they're letting us drown. And I, I, I wish if they, let me put it to you this way. If every single one of the apes, whatever it is, four or five million, seven million, 10, 10 million, AMC apes thought the way I thought, we would have won. V for victory. Because everybody would be fighting like a friggin' Comanche. But you know who I feel is worse than Adam Aaron? And you're gonna, you're gonna love this one. You know who I feel is worse than the short sellers? AMC apes. They're the worst ones. They're the worst ones. Even worse than the YouTubers because they don't want to effing fight. They want to sit at home in the comfort of their home, masturbating like the song Captain Jack, Billy Joel, okay? And that's it. They don't want to do anything. They want to do anything. And and ultimately, Morant, you, you, you wind up getting what you're saying. They all sell. You know how many of these apes already sold, brother? Oh. I would say the majority of them. Oh. They're all because the reason, right? That's it. So, so everything you're preaching, bro. People already so people sold this thing at thirty. People sold this thing in the twenties. They all tell me they're laughing because they they, they don't want to go up against the one percent. They don't want to do it, and that's what this effing movement was supposed to be about from the beginning. It was supposed to be us against them, David versus Goliath. Somewhere along the line, everybody forgot that. Everybody gave up. I'm not going to be that person, but, but I'll end with this. I agree with you. You are on target. You are right about every single thing. And like I said, it's just now, it's just, that's it. I'm in a position that's where a I right consider there. this I'm a little. That shit right there. I'm just clipping it. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. I love you too, brother. I agree with everything you say, but I have to continue. I hope you just understand. I can't stop the fight against corruption, brother. All right, I'm going to say one th I know you're leaving the door. I know you got to take off, but um, I'm going to say this to you. Uh, I learned this uh, while I was in the military, okay? Um, they would tell us, you can die with honor or you can survive another day. And well, if you survive, remember why you're alive. That's what I can tell you. If this, it, let me put it to this way. There are some AMC apes that I think should take your advice because just, just let me, let me end with this. I had a guy one time called me up, right? He goes, I need feed my children. 
he goes for like three days because he wouldn't sell his AFC. I actually sent this guy three hundred dollars because I thought he was a psychic. His kids were starving. So, so it, look, right? If AFC apes have literally money that they need to pay bills, they need to survive, they need to feed their children, then I would understand why they would sell. I yes. See, I'm just in a different position. If I lost every dollar that I have at AMC, at the end of the day, I have, you know, a half a million dollar trust set up for my kids. I have a house. I have cash. I have gold. My wife, you know, God bless her. She has stage four breast cancer. She's ex except a bigger uh, settlement is coming in. So I'm OK. You know, if, if I lose it, I lose it. But I, I understand other people if they have every single dollar that they need to pay their bills, survive, feed their children, they should really, really consider maybe getting out. Because, yes, this could be a situation where they lose every single dollar they got. But I would rather let this effort, I know you think I'm a psycho, but I would rather let this thing go to zero, lose all my effort money, but here's the thing, even after I lose my money, I'm never gonna stop fighting. I will friggin' haunt Adam Aaron, I will haunt Gary Gensler for the rest of my effing life on this planet Earth, and that's it. And I'm willing to do that. I am uh, willing I to you. fight the end days. I hear you. Hey, Thelma. I'm just going to call you Thelma from now on. And that's with respect. <laughs> um, you're Thelma, the Marines Louise. And, you know, Callie Bear's the same way as you. Callie, you know, we're a lot of us where if we lost everything in our investment, it's not going to change. Because it becomes principle. Yeah, it no, becomes principle. I hear you. I hear you. Did you ever have a relationship? Let me ask you a question. Did you ever have a bad relationship with a girl who totally friggin' fucked you? Because I have. Um, no, you know, I'm, I'm the one who usually screws it up, but, uh, not in lately, you know, I mean, I've been with my wife 16 years and, um, it, it, I know where you're coming from though. I know the analogy. And for me personally, um, I've learned to value the things around me and my friendships and the youth and the knowledge that I've, that I pick up along the way. If I make mistakes at 40, I say to myself, okay, I'm going to know better by the time I'm 50 and I'll be well off. Um, I'll be better, better for it. So, uh, will I do this? Okay. Hold on. Will I do this again in my life? No, exactly. <laughs> okay. Like, like to answer your question, will I ever do this again? No. Like I said, I'm making very, very smart investments that are very smart, that are very conservative, that are, you know, that are very safe. Marantz, okay. Oh, so GameStop, but, you're just doing GameStop then. Well, well, no, I mean, besides besides the stock market, you understand, oh, I actually, GameStop. I believe, and I tell you what I believe in, and people disagree with me. Sure, I saw ahead. this interview with, with Oprah Winfrey, and she doesn't even invest. She keeps all of her money in cash. And at first, I thought she was like a lunatic. I'm like, this woman's crazy, you know what I mean? But now I realize with everything happening in this crazy friggin' world, cash is king. So I actually have a safe deposit box. I keep a lot of money in cash. I also have, uh, you know, precious metals. I have gold. So I, I have other things besides the stock market. I, yes, as far as the stock market, it's around 10% of my money. I would say right now, between me and you, I'm buying more GameStop. Like I'm, I'm buying GameStop. That's my thing. I bought it, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm green. I'm green on friggin' on GameStop. I'm looking good. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? So you want to hear the worst thing that's going to happen to me, Moretz? Let me tell you. The worst thing You're that's going to happen to me. I know you call, well, you call me Telbo, but it's all right. The worst thing that's going to happen to me is I'll get all of my AMC money back from GameStop because I plan to keep buying GameStop over the course of the next few years. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep increasing my position. So if you're right, right, which I believe you are right, yeah. I'll get my money back from AMC anyway. But I just can't in good conscience sell at these prices i can't hey, i can't do it i don't care i, love it. I don't care what the I case may be i love it just keep buying gamestop um and i'm so happy that's it because uh i think you're doing everything right um you know you're learning from your lesson and you're passing on a good message and i would just ask one last thing of you before you leave um richard answer your goddamn phone when i call holy hell bro <laughs> i call you so much i text you so much and you must be the busiest man in america but uh, I'm happy to get a hold of you, man, every time. Um, I love you. I'm uh, sorry, man. No, I got okay. my wife. I got the kids. I apologize. I don't mean okay. any disrespect. And on top of that, you know how many people text me? I look at my phone. It's yeah. forget about it. Sometimes I can't to, even find your message. You were supposed to save my message. Yeah. And then he goes, you go, you go, Marantz, text me. I go, okay. I text him. And he goes, uh, we're going to go live. And then my cat, you know, unfortunately passed away. And then I end up going live I'm that sorry day. And that. I go, 
No, I ended up going live for like 10 minutes that day. And I go, um, Richard's going to probably think I, I bailed on him. Oh, Abe Foley's going to beat me up, man, when he sees me. And then you don't answer my call the next day. And then I'm like, oh, he's just a, he's more popular than me. Like, I don't I don't ever want to be this guy. Oh, no, I didn't mean any disrespect. I honestly just wanted you to have some time, you know, because I know you yeah. lost your cat. Yeah. Uh, and, and God bless you. And God bless your family for that. Seriously. I didn't mean any disrespect. It's all good, brother. Um, I'm going to call you again. I'll slap you with some more truth after earnings because it's going to be that bad. Um, they're going to fall to pieces. Uh, they came in at around other, under a billion dollars, quarter four. So Avatar and Ape didn't do it. Or Avatar and um, Wakanda didn't do it. And, of course, popcorn and, and merchandise and credit cards are not going to do it. But um, that stock that stock reverse stock split, that's really going to do it. It's really going to gut people. It's going to take all their shares out of them. Um, but that's it. But, hey, I don't want to keep you all night. I know you got to go eat. I know you got to go do your thing with the family. I love you again. And you're welcome back on the channel anytime. You know that. Love you, Ape Father. See you, we're gonna win. We're gonna win one way or the other. Okay, gonna we're gonna win. win one way or the other. I'm gonna. I'm already winning. I'm winning in life. I got to. You know, I got. I, I got to have a friend like you. So I appreciate you, sir. God bless you, brother. Thank you, Marantz, for having me. I'll speak to you soon, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. You got it. All right. Now I have um, Kevin. Kevin, are you here, Kevin? I hope you're still here, Kevin. Yep, okay. I am oh, still here, God, brother. Kevin's yep. here. He's here. All right. So, Kevin. Um, we're going to go ahead and call this out right now. GameStop ended the day down 14 cents, so relatively okay. flat. Uh, AMC came in on the day up 4 cents. What a hell of a day. Um, Battle of 501 was won by AMC. If you looked at the tracker, I showed you guys calls in the money, expiring in the money for GameStop. We were at uh, GameStop in the money, three uh, 21,000. Represents about 2 million shares. And then you have... The other one being, I wasn't even that many more. It was like 40,000, whatever, 4 million shares. And nothing on the floats. No, I said there could be a gamma ramp coming. That's if it was going to go crazy today. It didn't go crazy. It mellowed out. But um, you guys, I'm going to let Kevin talk for a minute. I'm going to go mute for a second. But um, Kevin, tell me about your GameStop story. Or your, you know what it was? Hold on, guys. I want to tell you guys something. So I was going to give you the background on Kevin. So Kevin had the luxury of never seeing me before. Until I interviewed with Tony De Niro and Mass, and they had a GameStop night. By the way, that was a GameStop. I wasn't allowed to talk AMC. That was what they told me when I went in. So um, I didn't rock the boat. I, I preached about GameStop. But I want you to tell me the experience. Like, what's going on with you, Kevin? Appreciate you, brother. Give us your story. Yep. So um, uh, novice investor, uh, when it comes to investing, uh, started started AMC. Um, my brother got me involved in it. He said, Oh, we're doing a giant short squeeze. Poppity boo, poppity pop, get in, get in, get in. Okay, so I get in, it's like eight bucks. It doesn't do anything. I sell. I rebuy by I, I rebought back in. Anyways, um wrote it all the way up, 72. Uh the, you know. Um just he had a ton of shares uh, to begin with, and he, he was convinced that it was going to go higher. And he, you know, th this was before any YouTubers even started. It was just a group of people who found out that it was going to, you know, so-called squeeze. And we got everybody involved. Uh, my mom, uh, myself, uh, my girlfriend, he, she bought 20 shares, even though it was under my account. It just everybody was just pouring money in. And, you know, it, it, it hits 72 and everybody's like, should we sell? Should we? No, man, it's going higher. All, and then that's when all the YouTube people, they started talking, oh, just keep holding, keep holding. And, um, you know, we, 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 we um, unfortunately, it just uh, it didn't pan out the way it did, obviously. But, you know, I did see your channel. Um, when you did that interview with um, Tony and Mass, I, 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 you know, I was I was going to um, get involved in GameStop. Obviously, it was just too expensive, and I had all my money in AMC at the time, and I could I didn't want to take a loss. You know, I was I was down a hundred, I was down five hundred, I was down a thousand. I'm like, yeah, it's going to bounce back, and then it just keeps going lower and lower. But you know. Um, I, I honestly, I hated you at first. I, I did not like you one bit because I was so, I, I was so in tune with AMC 
that anything anybody said w- was dog shit to me, right? So, um, and, and, and the more I listen, uh, the more I watch your show, the more I like you, right? So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, the, that's the story. Um, yeah, I got so, you. Um, let, me, let me ask you something. So, so you watch the channel. You watch me on Antonia Mass. And you can't afford you can't afford to get in as you say, but now that you have seen the the breakdown of the manipulation, do you feel cheated? I do feel cheated because I got in when when a novice investor. If I hold on, Cali Bear, if you don't mute your goddamn mic, brother, I'm gonna go crazy. Oh. I thought I was muted already. No, nah, you're 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 you're, uh, you're doing something. I don't know what you're doing, bro. I'm cooking lunch. Yeah, well, it's I don't know. It's a lot of. Yeah, let me try to mute. No, nah, I got you. I love them, dude. I don't know how to mute them, but I can't. I don't think I can. Um, but it's cool. No, keep going though. I'm listening. Yeah. Like, do you feel cheated? So, I do feel cheated now that I look at the big picture, right? So again, there was a group of 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 like 10 of us that just we some of the guys knew the stock market me i had i had money and i wanted and my my bro was like dude get in it's gonna go you're gonna be so fucking rich right oh that's all i heard okay great so i i poured in and a novice investor doesn't know anything about short selling i didn't realize uh but people want, were betting against the stock. All I thought was, okay, uh, good company. They're going to buy it or they're going to sell it. So when, when I look at the stock, I'm like, yeah, I guess everybody sold off. Uh, movie theater sucks. Um, I didn't know anything about it until, you know, I started digging months later in. I, I learned how the stock market works, right? So novice investor and got another novice investor involved and I I, I I i branched out i started getting more people involved in what i shouldn't have you know oh it's gonna we're gonna be so effing rich that that was the motto right so that's what we were all told buy and hold keep buying as it's going down they're selling behind our backs you know and then and, and and every time that Adam Aaron did something. It was they always had an excuse for him. So like when he sold uh, in the beginning, oh, it's just estate planning, right? Uh, it's all right. We'll we'll eat his shares up, no problem. Okay, right. So I just bought into the story. Then he goes out and buys a gold mine, and I'm like, wow, that seems like a really off the wall thing. But uh, maybe he maybe he's into something right so <laughs> and th- th- that's the story like, and then everybody portrayed it to be wow he's got all this extra money he's gonna buy a gold mine to help amc right it, it, it's just there's always there's always something there's always an excuse to what so, he's doing right so like let me explain that because we can elaborate on that right now um we don't have to beat the gold mine over the head because we understand that to make a to get an ROI, right, return on your investment, it would almost be impossible on the scale of HYMC makes money, right? HYMC makes a profit off of gold or whatever it does. That would be nothing. He would not get those profits. He owns shares. So unless the value of the share goes up, that's the only way he's going to get value for investing into a gold mine. There is nothing to happen at the bottom. You can't take money out of the till. So, and I tell this to people because I want you to think about it on the scale of ideas for business. The only way you make money in a business is if the idea you have generates a profit. So I'll give you the example. Credit cards. When they say, oh, AMC is going to release a co-branded credit card. What is the business model of making a profit off of a credit card? I will tell you what it is, but people don't understand it. Credit cards are made to be used to spend money. The credit card company makes that money. The reason why you do co-branded credit cards is because the company is selling a product that somebody wants, i.e. big electronic items. So Best Buy has a credit card with Citibank. Walmart has a credit card with Capital One. 
Costco has a credit card with Citibank. And they have those because big purchases are made each week, each day, no matter what you buy, whether it be electronics, groceries, or, or moving forward, right? So the partnership is you put your name on it. They give it a credit line. But that company that has the co-branded part has to pay credit card fees if you use a credit card in your establishment. It's not free. The credit card company makes money. But what the company does is they offset the credit card fees with the what they call a bounty. So every time there's an approval, the credit card company gives them a bounty. They give them like a stipend, like a $20 bounty. Mm -hmm. They take the 20 bucks, they put it in a separate stack over here in a pile. And those 20 bucks add up over all the approvals over the years, over the whole year. And every time they get their monthly credit card charge for fees, they go and pay that. That's it. That's the only transaction that happens, guys. There is no, you get a portion of the credit that they gave. None of this stuff is true. But what people do is they give back bonus dollars for whatever they spend. So then I'll give you the example. I want to do a credit card for Sam's Club. And I go, okay, I'm going to give back 5% on gas, 4% on travel, 3% on restaurants, and 2% on whatever they buy in store. Well, if I'm the, the company, Sam's Club, I'm going to have all these people apply for credit cards because I get the actual bounty up front. Then I'm going to encourage them to shop with the credit card. That's the only way I'm going to make money is whatever they spend on the credit card at my establishment. But I still have to pay fees on those credit card transactions. So they offset each other. The only type, the only way you're going to get somebody to spend more money at AMC that they're already not spending is to get a new moviegoer to get the credit card. Because you're still getting those funds with or without the credit card. So it makes zero sense to say that that business model is going to make more money on the bottom line. It does not, you don't have a product. You don't have a product that I need. You have a product, you know what they're going to do? They're going to get approved for a credit card and they're going to go spend it elsewhere. That's the difference. That's why it doesn't matter what credit card they get. Because if they spend those dollars elsewhere, you get nothing as an AMC uh, provider of a co-branded card. That's why no no theater in America has a co-branded credit card. It's absolutely ridiculous business model. It gives you, there's no point. There is no but, point. But, it's like McDonald's giving you a credit card. What's the point? I get a McDonald's credit card. I'm going to go spend it at every other restaurant or every other thing I do with this damn credit card, not on Big Macs. So the, 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 the point what? is, is that the, the, the YouTubers are portraying that as something good, right? Yeah, that's my point. That, that, that's the manipulation with the with yeah. the whole gold mine, and he sold his real estate, and now it's a credit card, and oh, we're yeah. going to make a da da da. It's just they always have an excuse to make it sound sweet. And so, yeah, you know? on, on top of that, on top of that, you go to the next business model: popcorn. The the things that they tell you have no inherent value of the core business that they make money with, you know, to enhance the experience or to change your business model means you've given up on what it is. You will not make a single dollar off of popcorn in retail space. And I'm talking about for three to five years, there is no distribution. There is no production. There is nothing in their name. It's a third party source at this point. And when you do it that way, you're paying extra. There is no profit. There's no, the margin of profit on retail period has to be 13 to 20%. If it's over that, you're not in competition. Everyone will price you out. This is why mom and pop stores don't exist because Walmart has the purchasing power. They, they, they can buy out the whole damn world. There's 10,000 Walmarts. So you better go pay the price to be in a Walmart. And guess what it's going to cost you? Everything. There's no profit to be made. And it's true. Um, I, I, want, I want to touch on something Ape Father was talking about. All these apes. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's that many of them that he even claims because oh no no way the people that I got involved they're not apes right I I really don't consider myself an ape I just didn't want to lose what what I put in right my mom's not an ape my brother obviously not an ape he he sold the people we we first got involved with dude they're all gone I mean they're shorting it for a fucking reason right <laughs> yeah obviously they're shorting it for a reason. GameStop, uh, it, they're it, they're getting better, so they're just stuck, right? AMC, obviously not going to get better. Will it will it go up a little bit? Yeah, sure. 
I still hold a couple of shares. Just God forbid I could get my money back and get out. Right. So I, I, I sold a bunch of them, um, you know, and, and converted over. I, I, it's just, you know, it, it so is what it is. I'm going to do something, right? I'm going to real I'm, shame. It is, but I'm going to talk about a guy in the, in the chat right now. Uh, we have a guy in the chat. He's on a 300 second timeout. His name's Clark Barwick. Clark Barwick is from Tony De Niro. He's from Massalorian. He's from that channel. He's from the idea that AMC and GameStop are together. We're all in this together. Retail, we're all together. We want them both to squeeze. And you're wrong. You're wrong, Clark. If you are in AMC, you're on the wrong side of the table. And I'm sorry to tell you guys this, and it's not that I'm pinning you against me. They did it. The hedge funds, the manipulation, the manufactured outcome that is. That's who did this. Not us. Not me. Not a YouTuber on this side of the table telling you, please do your homework. But they're not the same, and they don't run the same. Um, and they won't. They won't. They might mimic movement, right, on the chart. But the value is come and gone. The value is come and gone. So I just want to put that out there. I know we're going, guys. This guy's still ranting on AMC sucks. Uh, you got anything else? GameStop is garbage, too. Sorry to tell you. You know, Matt, I've been live for four and a half hours today. It's my day off. I, I woke up feeling dangerous. And I think about guys like you. Guys like you that come into the chat and say things like, do you have anything else to talk about? Well, let me ask you. You have AMC grifters out there that have been talking for two years about a MOAS, been talking two years how they can go ahead and make excuses for what the leadership is doing. Are you tired of watching them talk? Because you guys keep watching them, keep sending them super chats. You walked in here. Enjoy the truth while you have it. And then remember me 10 years from now. You know what? I'm going to tell you, Matt. I got something for you. Okay. I'm going to do this for you, Matt, because I'm going to get out of here. Hey, uh, by the way, nice to meet you guys. Uh, finally, Callie and Kevin. I'm gonna yes, sir. My, I'm going to end the stream right now, but I'm going to do right. it in a great parting fashion. But appreciate you guys. You guys are welcome back anytime. You know that. Um, I just keep grinding. But uh, let me go ahead and get this guy out of my way right quick. See you. Peace. All right. I like guys like this. It's called Morant's Rants for a reason. Hey, Goat, how you doing? I know you're here, Goat. I know Matt's here. I know plenty of haters are here. I know you guys are hurt, and you don't want to hear that part because it's a sign of weakness. Like, who am I? Who am I to tell you that you're all wrong and I'm right? When you do your homework... Okay, and you can fill out all the answers and turn it in. Teacher's going to give you a grade. And I'm going to ask you, did you learn anything? Because I can give you all the answers. I can fill out the sheet and paint all the pictures for you. Tell you who the bad guys are. Tell you why your investment's not going to ever take off. But did you learn anything? Or are you willing to lose every dollar you have and just say, you know what? At least I showed up. At least I went to class. At least I was a good citizen. I sat there. I stood up strong. I stood up tall. I did my part. You can do that. Or you can really educate yourself. Either way, you're on the losing side of this. You're asking me, how is GameStop? Or who's talking about GameStop? And you're talking nonsense. If you're not hating, then I'm good with you. But either way, I got lovers and haters, right? Somebody said, how is GameStop doing? They're doing great. They got a game that's sold out right now that nobody can find. And when it comes out in February, well, then you'll know what the bottom line is. I woke up today and I gave the people, what, five hours to watch this live stream? I hope you guys enjoyed five hours. I think we had a good time. But if you listen to what you're being told here, if you read and you write and you do all the things we do, then maybe you would have gotten some truth and some knowledge. Just a little bit. 
just a little. Do the best I can for everyone out there. Morant's with all the answers. Narcissist, you decide. Hey, Ant Card, you hang, out, you hang around with Scott Allen, bro. <laughs> Who are you calling a narcissist? I don't have all the answers. But I surround myself with the very smart people. And they help me as well. This is not a one-man show. I might have one man on the camera and one mic. But I got 5,500 people out there that think the way we all do. It's GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop, GameStop. And you're going to be kicking yourself in the ass, AMC investors. Not me. Hey, Morantz, love your show. Just trying to figure out why I was timed out so it won't happen again. Clark, it'll probably happen again. It'll probably happen right now in about five minutes. Because if you don't know, getting timed out happens all the time here. People give you 300 seconds. I still read what you write. We just play around. We have a good time. What we don't do is we don't kick people forever. We don't ban them off the channel unless they violate one of the very rules that we have, the mafia rules. You don't touch the kids or the family. That's it. Other than that, you, you can have at it. You can come in here and bash me all you want. You can talk about GameStop all you want. But we're just going to keep talking it over and over and over. And apparently nobody's, nobody's mad. And nobody's tired. People still want to hear it. So. I love everybody, guys. I am a boat. I am a boat, and I'm a helicopter. You guys get it. I got to get going. My kids are hungry. I'm hungry. You guys see me right here. I have not eaten anything. I haven't gone to the bathroom once. I haven't done anything. Shout out to Sharon because she cares about my health. Shout out to my wife because she texts every now and then. I love her. Shout out to the ape father for being part of the channel. I got to clip a couple of pieces of this video, but I love you guys so much. What a show. I'm exhausted. Time for a nap. I'm Thomas James. Hey, no, have a great day, guys. I appreciate everybody. Love you guys. Have a safe weekend. Do the right thing when no one's watching. That's Integrity 101. Eat, sleep, and breathe it. Do it. It's GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop, GameStop. I'm going to see you around, millionaires. Peace. I'm just like tired. <laughs>